Talking Heads Horror Movie Podcast. Big episode 196. We are here. Hooray. Would you Hooray. say it's Mr. Big? Oh! <laughs> it's so big, we had to get Mr. How's that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Call me Mr. Yeah, as you know, uh, you know, Watson's been here the last, what is it, three years uh, on the top ten? And this year... I feel like this might be the fourth special. time now. Yeah, so this is year four. Wow. Yeah. Fucking awesome. Well, awesome. He's back again. Especially he had to be here this year. Not like he wouldn't be anyway, but uh, a two-man show wouldn't have been, would just would be no good for the list. We got to have as much yeah. fun as possible on contributions. And who better than, than my homie himself? He's been a while. He's been in the corner, quiet. He hasn't been in the uh, exploding heads. Jacking off. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> Maybe that's why he's not sleeping well. He should jack off more. But anyway. No, you. Yeah, exactly. If you're not, that's the perfect sleep aid. The problem yeah. with it is, and every time after you come, you just want to go to sleep. So you just well, have to make sure you don't. Yeah, you don't Pavlov dog it. yourself into that. No, that's what you got a tissue right next to you. You fucking crumple it up. You put it on your nightstand. You crash. Boom. Anyway, <laughs> let's Tissues. see what Watson. Whoa. Well, what do I you go the more cost-effective route of just letting it dry on me. <laughs> Watson, I guess you can weigh in. Yeah, what a what welcome. What can we give him? <laughs> the man from all kinds of shows, and we'll get into him before we leave, but uh, most of them are with me. But uh, Watson, my man, my brother, how are you? Yeah, no, absolutely, I, I agree. Kanye West has been making some real sense lately. Um, wait, <laughs> well, hold on, hold on. Brandon, I got to go. Uh, I, I'm on exploding heads right now. Okay, I'll see you later, bud. Uh, hey, yes, the jerking off. <laughs> I have so much to say about dicks. Um, no, no, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am quite uh, pleased to join you guys once again for this year-end show. Uh, I'm ecstatic and ready to give the people what they want. Yes, this is year four uh, joining you guys. I, yeah, I think it began in 2019, so here we go. And plus, you know, I was I was talking to C back in November. This is like the only show I can go on where I can talk about the craziest shit, such as dudes who take it upon yeah. themselves to insert small items into their dicks. Ooh, just, stop. Just, He's no. right in there. I mean, Christian, we were talking about this. We had a back and forth. I mm. swear to God, there's yeah. one guy you hear about in, in in high school. Every high school has this guy who shoved pine needles or Tootsie Pop sticks right up there. Every school had that guy, yeah. and I just I think it's time we talk about this. It's 2022. There's a lot going on in the world. This is right up there. <laughs> just like the frozen hot dog girl. Every exactly. School She's in every school, <laughs> and he's yeah. in every school. Christian, oh, even when I asked crazy. you, you were like, yeah, and he was a dick. Yeah, he was. <laughs> a, I did have one, and he was quite literally a dick. Maybe he's a nice guy now, but I remember, you know, he's like hanging out with. The, if do you ever picture yourself like you watch the Jackass movies? If you've ever watched the Jackass movies, yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, this this is a fun time. But I would hate, I would fucking hate to be friends with those guys. Absolutely, yeah. Because <laughs> you know, oh. it's just a bunch of dicks. Like you just, I would hate it. Oh, you'd always be looking over your back like you just fucking left the mob and are witness protection or something like that. You'd be constantly like, "What oh, fuck, are they coming for me? Are they coming the, for me? And this guy was like that, who, who, who in, in question here? The, yeah, the gentleman? No, you... no, no. Oh. I don't know him that well. I just remember him not being like, you know, there's something to be said about a guy that wants to whip his dick out at school. Yeah. Like against a glass in front of like, you know, yeah. like as if he's sitting in an aquarium and everybody has to watch it. I know. Sorry, buddy. I don't want to see your dick. <laughs> well, if it's All really things. big, if it's really big, then you do want to show it off like a trophy. So I get that. I, I can relate. That's the funniest part. I can't re- actually recall okay. if it was a big dick or not. You're like, okay. I well, then it's a okay. fine dick or not. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Tasty looking dick. Elegant. I, know, I can't elegant. remember if it was cut, Mwah. uncut. Mwah. I don't know any of the details. <laughs> the part yeah, can't just be. It can't be a pencil dick. You can't just whip it out. It's long, but there's no girth to it. I mean, because then you're just you're incriminating yourself. If you started jumping rope with it, then yeah, I'd look and be like, hey, look at that. But well, yeah. well, the trick was back in the day, it's like you'd uh you you'd you'd grab a knife and then and then put your like you you get a semi and throw it out into the the cutting board and then you start carving on your dick with the dull end of the knife. That was that would get laughs like crazy. Oh, what school did you go to? This wasn't school. This is in my twenties. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I jumped ahead. It's, it's Ooh, six in the morning here, folks. And let's see, we got all the important issues out of the way. Let's see, I had Kanye West uh, pretend to talk to Brandon, uh, dicks and pe- people shoving <laughs> stuff in dicks. I oh, think that's sure, everything. The Was there anything Yay. else that you wanted me for? 
Yeah, Brandon is yeah, here. No, you could go now. You just just get okay, right, I'll see you guys text. later. <laughs> <laughs> we've got we've got enough of yeah. our quota in. Five yep. minutes in. Yep. Watson uh, out. We got <laughs> we got Dick Cox. We'll, we'll wedge Brandon. we'll wedge the dog stories and shit stories in throughout the show. Well, the guy. But, hold on. The guy who not. you who I knew who would put things up up the up the hole. Uh, oh, he crazy. he would. Uh, it was also famous for allegedly like messing around with his own dog and anytime anybody would sort of make fun about it, he'd just start laughing and nodding like yeah and it was like no no you're not supposed to agree with us pal i never actually said this i just <laughs> saw this stuff happen i wasn't a bully like that i just kind of laughed at things going on around me but anyways exploding heads uh yeah okay kanye welcome Brandon. back yes yes hey, guys it, 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 <laughs> all yeah, that to say the all only show say. Watson can do this. I mean, seriously, we wouldn't be doing it on yeah. Jay of the Dead's new nope. horror movies. We wouldn't nope. be really talking about this on um on Watson. Why not? He wouldn't no, be we, talking we about it on, on you know on horror movie. Um, yeah, damn it. We'd be weekly. Yeah, we weekly. we have to pretend to be smart over on Watson. So you know, I can't talk about people shoving pine needles or tootsie pop sticks up their cocks. Uh, <laughs> Dave, I love how each time that that gets said, you're just like, oh man. I know he's oh, he's just wincing. In his seat. He's like, that's fucks that's me in my up, bottom man. five. Of 2022. I feel like it was closed pins on his balls. I don't know if he actually inserted anything up Whoa. into the old Shafarino, but I think he, like, you know, it was hanging his balls up to dry or something like that. Like, I don't you just know. made me so happy now. That just brought it all around. Because as yeah, soon as you know. said closed pins, yeah, when everything, uh, I, it reminded me of a girl I used to know in Vegas that wore closed pins on her nipples. And that was, to me, that was hot. Because, you know, it, yeah. cause it's fucking hot when a chick does that. But anyway. Yeah. Now, see, now I feel better. <laughs> there we go. Now, we're, okay, I feel we're, better we're now. We're back. Yes. We're, we're going to – how you leave is how you enter. So I don't I don't know what the hell that means, but it's, it's something, something, end of 2022, Anally. end of 2023. Yeah, there, there we go. <laughs> but, yeah, 2022, holy shit. Yeah, what a year. I got to say. Yeah, what do you – okay, I think it was – I think it was a better year than uh, – I think it's been the best year. Since the teens, I think it was better than 20 and 21. What do you guys think? You know, it's funny. Upon just right now off the cuff, yeah, I agree. Nice. And I have now to have to go back and look and just sort of look at my top whatever again. But, yeah, I think when I look at these films, mm-hmm. based on my top 10 alone, I, I think there would be more films that I would revisit on a more consistent basis. How many movies yeah. did you guys each get in? I think I'm at Ooh. 80. I'm at nice. 80 as well, exactly. No Holy way. shit. Look really? at you two. You're just uh, twinsies, eh? Yeah, and guess guys, so. as usual, as usual, a good effort. A good effort. <laughs> uh, I went to 107 when all said and done. Ooh, Hell yeah. I could only log 105 because two of them must be so fucking bad that they're not even on letterbox for me to put into my Oh, queue. dear Lord. Okay. I've watched. The, the bottom feed, the bottom feeders, the bottom dweller yeah. movies. Okay. Which we'll hmm. talk about later. Which oh, we'll talk well, about later. So here's an important number for me and probably me only, only, but of the 80 movies, 85% of them, I would rate seven or higher. So my, I'm back wow. up to where I want to be. So it's, it, for me, it's quality, not quantity. Not me. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see there. There you have, I looked, I, here's, I will check it. I was looking at all the past shows and here's funny. This 2016 and 2017, where I watched like 113 movies and 100 and change, I was like 65%, 70%. Now, those were still stronger years because the top tens, I think, were stronger. And, I, and I, I can't spoil this, but let's just say this. Until right this moment, I and mean, we'll see where we go, but the last two years, I haven't had a 10 out of 10 in, in, in the 2000s, in, in the 2020s at all yet. So where in the teens, I had a couple. I had three or four or five. You know what I mean? So I don't think that... It, it has been as strong as far as that's concerned. So I, I give myself a pass for watching a lot those years because, you know, it was exciting. But, Watson, uh, what are your thoughts about the year, period? Oh, man, uh, strong year. Even the, a lot of the movies that I've seen that I didn't like so much weren't complete garbage. You know, I haven't calculated it, uh, you know, percentage-wise like you seem to have, Dave. But I I feel strong. Like, even when I get down into the, you know, into the, the 60s and 70s, I'm looking at movies I still like. You know what I mean? Nice. Interesting. So, yeah. That's good. How, how about you, about, though, See, did, Were you able to, or, or did you uh, get in a lot of trash as you started hitting the back end of that 107? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, but I would say <laughs> a ship reader. Yeah, the ship readers. 
I would still say, just looking really quickly at my list, that uh, half, half are about like you know that six and a half or up range. Um, mm-hmm. And six and a half is nice. still decent. Yeah. Like I mean, I I, yeah. I, I still um, enjoyed it and, and whatever. But uh, a good chunk of them would be uh, would start coming into the seven range. I guess I don't know the percentile like Dave had, but I'd say over yeah over fifty for sure are definitely at over six point five and up. Cool. Nice. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong. Yeah, I'm I'm yeah. the only sick bastard that does that because I, I um <laughs> sick bastard. Sick bastard. I, I, well, you know, I put the the pressure on. I want to make sure that I don't. I'm not wasting my time. You know what I mean. So it's it's just that's just the way I do. I always want to make sure that I'm not watching any shit breeders. I mean, the one year, man, the winner I was 94. percent I think it was 2018 or something like that. It was crazy, but you know, I don't like to waste my time. I want to make sure that everything I watch is something I can recommend, and uh, you know, I'm happy about it. Sometimes, sometimes I'm an early adopter. Most of the time, I'm not. Like in the sense of I'll find a film, I'm like, I haven't heard anything about this. I'll check it out. Maybe I'll I'll take one for the team. And usually, I'm taking one for the team. It's not usually good, but I'm hoping to be, you know, maybe have that Marco Polo experience once, where you're like, yeah. holy fuck, <laughs> this movie, this movie is like stands out. But usually, usually even like something, especially if you're on a bad run and something just happens to be a little bit better. Yeah. You, you, you have to focus on it. I, I talked about a couple that I would never recommend, but I brought them up on the show because they happen to sort of pop out and be OK. But it, really, that's it. They're just OK. I don't even know why I even gave them a special mention on the show. Like I think Requiem for a Scream was a slasher that is really just average. But I brought it up on the show probably because <laughs> I had watched a couple of ship readers. Yeah. So how the was it for you show. guys uh, coming up with your 22? Because I feel like I had something like yeah. 40 movies that I could have, you know, and I that I did toy around with to fit into that back half of it. You know, my top 10 I felt was pretty solid. Even my top 12 felt about like, all right, I think I, I, I have the movies and these are just going to stay within those top. 10, 11, 12, but that back half, I had like 40 movies that I could have been like, all right, well, maybe this one, no, we'll take this one out, we'll, we'll, we'll move it here, and and I just I just kept playing uh, on letterbox there with what does this look like and how am I feeling? How was it for you guys putting in uh, putting together that 22? Hmm. I, uh, you know, I had like 29 movies compete, competing for, for 22. Maybe cool. the last two I watched, one of them was competing, so ultimately it, it may have been 30 that we're competing, but you know, that's what the rewatches are for. That's why I rewatch everything mm. in, in December. Once again, to, to truly separate the men from the boys. I'm like, okay, let's see here. I really want to know. Uh, I know? didn't get it as many rewatches as I would have liked. Well, you're not, you're, you're a normal person. You, you aren't <laughs> like me. Whoa, 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 the leader to the show would tell you that. Wait, I don't minute. know if normals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was the guy, by the way, that stuck all this stuff in his deck. Oh yeah, that's that was what he me. was forgetting to tell people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he likes to refer to himself in the third person. Uh, I'm more, I'm more with Sorry. Watson on this. I said I, I think at one point when I look at my what my top forty was, that forty spot may have actually been hovering in, at the twenty two, twenty three spot at mm. one point. Mm-hmm. But then I had watched a few more, like watched more movies and. Uh, jungled around my j- uh, jungled jungled around my list jungled jungle boy I guess I yeah. jungled uh, and uh, I think that's it so I'd say yeah 38 to 40 were an option at one point but then I I'm really happy with my top 22 and I pushed out a few that I thought wouldn't, wouldn't make sense and I re-added a couple that I said screw it this is my list and if I had spontaneous on it a few years ago I could put whatever the hell I want on my list because nice. uh, yeah. you know what would probably be watched by the majority of horror fans this year. Hey, so yeah. if it feels like horror to you, then it's horror to you. Then you put it on your list. That's all there is yep. to it. That, that I'm not uptight about it, but I have, I've become a little more discerning and honest with myself. When I watch something, I'm like, well, I really enjoy it. I'm not saying you haven't, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that there was a time where maybe I was putting stuff in there, like not, not intentionally trying to force it. Just like saying, well, you yeah. know what I mean? It might have been like 
what's the word I'm looking for? Subconsciously, I was doing it. And I, I believe I, I'm a little more discerning on it. And I launch and I'm like, well, to me, this was a horror and this was not. And I'm, I'm more clear cut about it now without being a jerk. I mean, some people can be jerk. I'm not trying to be jerky. Whatever you like, you like. You know what no, I mean? No, you, you've never been jerky about that. And you've, you've, you'll you've state your cases as to why you think it is horror or why you don't. And we'll, we'll maybe poke fun at it at a show. But I don't think we've ever been assholes about it, even if. Even if we're like, you know, digging in and, and, and just <laughs> making fun in the past, like which we've done. Um, but I, I will say we brought it up on the show before in what a combo year. Like usually there's a definitive winner. I think this is a great year, although my list probably yes. actually represents more mainstream horror than mm. usual. It was mainstream, foreign, as Dave mentioned on another show, and yeah. indie. I think it was a nice representation yes. of all the, the categories, really. Yep. Yeah, and definitely. And as for as for the uh, with regards to the clear cut number one, you know, some years do have, have that. And for me, just 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 so we can put it out there, when we get into my top four, all of those look good in my number one spot. Like they nice. really do. I, I I'm gonna stand nice. by what I have. Uh, but like I can, I'm looking at Letterbox right now. I'm seeing these four titles, and I could move this one here, this one there. And the only reason the one that's in fourth place is in fourth place is because I didn't get the rewatch. So that was it. That's what Man. that's what put it to the back of the list. Even though yep. if I did, if somebody's like, hey. Like Hitler comes in, he's like, "Hey, man!" I'm like, "Hey, what's up, dude?" And then we're not that friendly. And then, but he's like, "Hey, <laughs> you have to put the uh, that movie, we'll say, uh, in the number one place." And I'm like, "Okay, fine, I will then." So. <laughs> well, done, done, and done it. Yeah. Uh, the funny part is, you also have to do like three other year end shows, so you could just shuffle those well, around to for, keep it for spicy, home, right? And and every yeah, so see you had suggested uh, Daisy, yeah, uh, see it suggested <laughs> I do a different list for every show, but uh, <laughs> you know, new horror movies. This is kind of more of an exclusive, bigger list than any other show I'm doing. And then for new horror movies, Jay of the Dead's new horror movies, it's just the top ten, and so that's pretty easy. And then for horror movie oh, weekly. Cool. Jay uh, and I are doing a top 10 of 2012. What? <laughs> yeah. Seriously? Or are you bullshitting us? Okay. Wow. No, okay. No bullshit. Oh, well, who knew? You're bullshit. Okay. I was like, wow. Uh, that's a show I'm not listening to. The- <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. So, how is Susie going to put hers out there? Her, well, her Susie is putting, Susie and Shani Dreadful are going to put theirs out. And then we're going to mess around okay. with a different list uh, to get people over to new horror movies. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, okay. that's cool. I, I'm bullshit right. and different. That's that's awesome. That, <laughs> and I I, I kind of wish you still did the different list. I think that would be hilarious. Yeah, it's but. like one time I went on Cut to the Chase and started reviewing some movie I hadn't seen before, and then I just hung up on everybody. But I was pretty drunk that night. But <laughs> I, I I don't know. I could I could. Who's to say what the hell I'll do? But yeah, we'll we'll yeah. pull something. Who's to say? Yeah. Wow. Hey, did you guys end up seeing out of out of curiosity? Did you guys end up seeing um, Final Cut? The remake no. of One Cut of the Dead? What? No. no. No, I don't know if it's been officially released or not. I okay. Saw, okay. I heard about it. It said 2022, no. and I hadn't actually dug any deeper to see if it got like an actual uh, streaming like release yet. But oh. I just I just saw it right before, and I'm like, I can't. Even if it did come out, I won't be able to fit it in. I didn't get to watch A Long Walk or or check out if Final Cut was officially available. But yeah, they did some, I think it's a French remake. I could be wrong of One Cut of the Dead. Because as I was reading the synopsis, yeah. okay, because I was reading it and I'm like, what, this sounds exactly, and then I'm like, it said as a remake, and I'm like, okay, perfect there, <laughs> done and done. Well, Christian, but, that's a good wow. question, though, that you, that you raised that I was wanting to ask, too. So, I'll, you know, kind of on, on the back of that, were there any movies that you didn't see that you feel like, you know, like, were, were, like was a hole in your viewing? Like for I, for instance, I didn't get to see the menu with Anya Taylor Joy and Ray Fiennes, and um, trying to think if there was anything else that I, that was one of them that I had been meaning to see and didn't get to, and I wasn't sure about Flux Gourmet, the Peter Strickland movie, if that was horror, and those are both two it's, foodie related movies. So those were two. It's funny. It is yeah, two foodies. I, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that I didn't get what? to see. Foodie, the foodie? menu and Flux Gourmet. I saw Flux Gourmet because oh, it was both- on Shutter. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's a weird movie, a little too abstract for my likings. It just in the sense of like, yes, there's horror there, uh-huh. but I just didn't find it enough. I I watched it. It took me a few sittings to get through, to be honest. But 
I, I, I don't know because everybody's tastes are so vast and different. Yeah, yeah. I can't tell you if you'd like it or not, but it was just, I think it was like 6.5 for me. Okay. 6 and 6.5. Like, I mean, I enjoyed it. Like, and that's, that's, but I don't that's know if Flux I recommend it. That's Gourmet you're talking about yeah. there. And so, yeah, the other one was the menu. And I have, talking with people, it seems like that's a yeah. list maker type movie. And we don't have to it say if, if it made anybody's list here just yet. But I'm just saying that's what I missed that very well could be and or should be in my top 22. But it's not going to be there because I didn't see it. So were there any like that for you guys? You're like, damn it, I didn't get to see this. Anything? See? Well, I'll, I'll, I can answer first and just say I was really worried because I there was a couple of heavy contenders, but I was able to see the menu this week. Oh, cool. To, to complete what I really was my my one spot that I was concerned I was going to miss. So yeah. I uh, I saw it and I I really enjoyed it. I didn't love it as much as I thought I was going to love it, okay. but it was a totally different movie than what I was expecting it to be. Okay. So okay. that actually was even more. Um, it's surprising, maybe not my biggest surprise of the year uh, ah. that we'll talk about later, but it was <laughs> it was good because it was definitely a more refreshing movie than I thought it was going to be. Like I don't know, I, I guess I was expecting it to go down one avenue, which it didn't. Hmm. Uh, so, but it, it is it is on my list, but it's just uh, that's a, a little teaser for later. That's it. Cool. Okay. I mean, we have 22 movies to talk about, so yeah. I don't think it's yeah. giving anything away. <laughs> um, um, a Long Walk, Dave mentioned it last show. I put it on my possible-to-watch list, just couldn't get to it. So I've, I've heard different – Dave didn't like it, but he said enough people were talking positively about it oh. that maybe I oh, should check minute. it out. I didn't, I didn't say that. I didn't or, like or did it. I, I'm I didn't sorry, say Dave. I didn't like it. I said I couldn't follow it. I was 45 minutes okay. in, and it fucking went over my head, and I got I get confused sometimes, the time travel stuff, and I didn't – it wasn't – I guess sometimes I need things spoon fed to me in, in, in certain movies when they go over my head. Like, remember, like I said, with the whaling, I couldn't fucking get, but not at least the whaling. I was still enjoying what I was seeing and I got the gist of it, but I had questions as far as the long walk. I was questioning yeah, everything, okay. not in a bad way, like when we watched a wounded fawn or something where I'm seeing that we're not, not that type of question, like why and like it's out there shit. I just, I was just a little frustrated. And then when I started looking up reviews, Basically, what people were saying, somebody said something about fucking time travel and this, and I'm like, wait, I didn't see any of this. So after 45 minutes, I lost my patience. I said, I just can't. And it might be a fucking excellent movie, and it's just my bad. It, just, it happened with The Matrix. I tried to watch The Matrix. Uh, when it first came out, I rented it uh, on DVD back in the early 2000s, and I got frustrated after 45 minutes. I never went back to it. I was trying to, you know, figure out, I'm like, wait, but well, if this is this, how can this be this? And how does this work? And this isn't making sense to me. And I got frustrated. So same thing. It's just maybe me being a dumbass and I can accept that sometimes. So what are you going to do? But um, here's what I didn't see that I wish I did now because I was looking at lists literally like an hour ago uh, online just to see what people were saying and what was going on. And a couple people had this movie in their in, in, on their lists and I avoided it. Mostly because Christian told me I probably wouldn't like it. And it, coming from him, uh -oh. it, it, it means something. Because, no, it's the Cronenberg movie, Crimes of the Future. Okay. Dave, that's exactly be, what I'd forgotten what? to say myself, the Cronenberg movie, you Crimes think? of the Future. I didn't see that one either. It made some people's top tens. You know, you know, some big ones. You know, you know people you, that don't really yeah. watch all what we watch. So mm -hmm. I get it. It's like Entertainment Weekly or Variety or whatnot. And it's going to be – so I understand that. And they're also going to have Scream on there, most likely. And they're all going to have Nope. Just I It's just like you very, that. you know. I could what? see that, though. Just like Possessor, the other, you know, Possessor was the sons. That Crimes of the Future has some really good ideas and really good themes. I just wish it was a more entertaining film. Oh, or, or that it okay. moved at a better pace. And that's on me. But, again, uh, I'll, it will be coming up a little bit later Tonight, it's not on my best, it's not on my worst, but it's going to be talked about um, okay. just in, in 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 a category. Cool. I have a feeling I know what that is going to be yeah. already, So, but that's okay. And it, it makes perfect I think I just sense. spoiled it, but that's why. Yeah. That's okay. So best we do score. have our categories. No. Best score. <laughs> yeah, best, score. <laughs> best direction. No, yeah. we, we, we do have our categories. We are going to put them out there as we go, unless it's something that's not on our list, which then we have to wait till the end or whatever. We have our, our movies picked for our other host perspective, part one, top ones, number ones. Jeez, I can't talk today. Um, so I've been 100% – as far as picking my number ones for you two, I've had them for a very long oh. time. 
based on nothing. Well, no, 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 I shouldn't say based on nothing. For Christian, based on nothing except knowing him, and it just seems like this would be a Christian number one movie. I, that's all I can say. It just seems like something he would pick. And Watson was blowing a movie, um, but it was a long <laughs> yeah. time ago. It was early in the year, so I don't know since what else he's blown unless I have recorded with him, but I can't recall him being right. so high <laughs> and anything else. That's why he's here now. Yes. yes so, uh, coming in at we'll number see. one is and the it's Jewish horror form. movie. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mama mia. And yeah, Brandon, it, by the way, he is, he was cranking. He was fucking, he had like seven what more I, movies to go. He had seven more movies to go to finish everything he was going to watch, and that was yesterday. Wow. And he actually tried. He said, if I finish my list, I will come on. I said, if you finish oh. it, come on, or at least submit a list. Uh, Something. Fuck. He should have just come on anyway. I know. Uh, God damns it. It would have been yeah. nice just to have him on the show. Yeah. I think everybody would have loved that. Absolutely. Oh, uh, man. I agree. I didn't know it was that. I, I was gonna ask. I was wondering. I, you know, to be honest, I was prepping. I was getting my coffee this morning. Prepping, <laughs> but get my coffee. Yes, yes. And I'm like, down the prep I'm work, wondering. God. I. <laughs> it's, it's every morning prep. I was like, I am hoping that I've just been left in the dark, and that Dave, Brandon, and Watson know that Brandon's coming on today, and it's like a big surprise or something like that. I was really hoping that that was well, gonna be something that came up. So it's you know, unfortunate he- that you. You tickled my nuts that it was this close to happening, and it didn't. But if yeah. it was going to be a surprise, I wouldn't play coy like that. I would tell you that it's not going to happen, and then it would be a true surprise. Yeah. You know me better than that. I'm not the, when I surprise people, I fucking really. Because he's surprise. an actor. Watson. <laughs> Correct. That's my wife. I surprised the fuck you. I surprised her the other day. So I surprised good. fuck the, everybody. What, well, I bought my wife tickets for Janet Jackson concert. Because she never gets to see a concert she wants. Janet Jackson's oh. coming to Toronto. Toronto, by the way, nice. in May, yeah. right? So she mentioned it a couple of days ago. Yeah, tickets go on sale and blah blah blah. And I, I go, I go. Tickets are fucking so high right now. And I, this, that, the other. Well, thing. they are. But I know they. That's are. a good way. Uh, that's a good head fake. Right. That's awesome. So <laughs> I bought the tickets. Listen to what I did though. I bought two tickets. All right. All right. So I bought the tickets, and then to, to paradise. Two tickets to paradise, <laughs> baby. Yeah, and then I sang it to her. So, and I go, hey, Irene. No. So yeah. I, um, in the morning, we're having a breakfast and this and that. I look at my phone and I go, I go, huh. I said, listen, I got to tell you something. And I go, okay, all right. I go, so, and then she's sitting down. She has her breakfast. She has her coffee. I, I said, um, I got to show you something on my phone, okay? She's like, okay. And um, I stand up. I get up off the couch. She's sitting on the couch. And I get up and I go, I go, I said, <laughs> I said, set your coffee down. She said, okay. She's thinking I'm going to say it's going to be something real serious. This is the other thing. I, I turn it to her. Oh, boom. No. And it's the fucking ticket. Janet Jackson. Aww. These are our seats. Merry so Christmas. happy birthday is what I told her because Christmas presents Aww. are already bought. Her birthday's in January, a part of me, February. Aww. And our and our anniversary is on the thirteenth, but we're, our our presents to each other are just gonna go out to eat, and that's it. And um, so I go, here you go, and it was great. So she was happy. So you know, I played it off like I do. And then listen to what she says. A little side note, which is funny. She's like, did you get one for Frankie too? I said, no, I didn't know she wanted to go. And then so th- listen to what I end up doing. I said, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna let you and Frankie, because I'm smart about Molson Arena, because I was there last year for fish. Now I know. Don't buy the 400 section because they're seated, but it's not covered. So I had to pay the extra to get level 300. Covered. So I got two tickets in, in the covered section, right? Nice. Expensive, of course. So now I'm like, I'm You're like, you know what? Nose, <laughs> no, I'm going to go sit on the lawn. I, got, I just said, fuck it. I spent the $70 and I, I'm, f- I'm fucking sitting on the lawn. I'm going to let them two have the seats and I'm just going to go hang out on the Aww. lawn. So, but I'm happy. I'm happy for them and they're going to have their, you know. Could have just hung out with me. Seats. <laughs> oh, well, you can come too. You want to come? Come on the lawn and hang out with me. See, that'd be great. Oh my yeah, lord! Shove some stuff up your dicks. Yeah. <laughs> no, that that sounds that sounds awesome. awesome, Dave. See, like I like that you surprise uh, surprise the girls. My my whole thing uh, is usually like her going, uh, yeah, you didn't get me anything, and I'm like, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. And then you pull your pants down and say, "It's the gift that keeps on giving." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Like, here, give me that pop. It never stick. works. Let's. Uh, it never up. works. <laughs> no, it, it, yeah, no. But, but uh, you know, <laughs> before, uh, yeah, when, when Dave, you know, kind of what led into this about, you know, uh, uh, you were talking about the top, each other's top movie of the year. 
Uh, I have what I think is yours based on one little piece of information. Cause you keep Dave, you keep things close to the, to the vest, man. You don't say you don't drop anything and see, I have this one. The one that I chose for you, your number one that I have is seriously just a C is probably going to have, this is the number one. I don't fucking know that that's literally my thought process <laughs> there. So very scientific. I did the scientific method. We, we did all the things. Yeah. It, it, so, well, <laughs> Same with you then, because you just said you had four that could go in there. So I took yep. a gamble. And it's yep. funny. It's funny because I have it written down. I took a guess because I'm like, this seems like a Watson movie. And I loved it. It's on my list. But I bet you anything this is his number one. And then ah. what Dave just said made me think, hmm, I could be right. And I think I got Dave's down. And then based on what Dave said about me, I'm a little concerned that he doesn't have mine now. Because I ah. thought he would have worded it differently. If um if he if he had mine, but we'll see. That's oh, okay. interesting. I can't I wait. I know, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling good now. <laughs> I usually swerve you guys. Usually the movie you guys think I'm gonna pick number yep. one. You do. Usually is like my number two or three. It usually, although True. last year, C True. picked my number one. He did. He had the medium, and he, he was right. Yeah. But. But I also told them I was going to pick that at one point in the chat, but they said, <laughs> oh. I literally said, if this baby gets killed, this will be my number one of the year. Because at the time I was so excited and all this other shit happened. Like, when they kill a baby too, boom, I'm going to, this is going to be, and they probably thought I was just joking because I love all that shit. Oh, but yeah, you do. In that case, Party Bus should be your number one for this year. <laughs> all hey, right, I know, right? Party Bus did show up on Letterboxd. So I was able to log that one, just not the two pieces of, like, my two lowest. Which are funny enough, a part one and part two, if you can believe it. There's a spoiler. <laughs> I already brought it up last show. Ooh, anyway, I think I talked about it. But I actually, part two dropped. And I'm like, I got to watch it just based on how fucking horrible part one was. And man, man, oh man, did they not disappoint on how fucking horrible a movie can be. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, speaking of party yeah. bus. I know you guys are aren't are, are usually not active in the chat in the exploding heads chat, but the other day I got one of those uh we got one of those things that are usually posted on the page, but instead he put it in the chat and maybe for this one why not? It, it, but who cares? It's only the patrons. But still, uh, <laughs> I thought it was funny. It's um David Andriana wrote this thing and it says it's a quote of me. It says I want to go further. I want to see a fucking puppy killed, ripped out of the uterus of a dog. How about that? Dave Z, yeah. lover of animals. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> well, even I was like, what the fuck is he talking about? It was when off the top of my head. head. When you, I couldn't help it. <laughs> yeah. said, I don't, Watson, you got to hear that, because he was talking about in Party Bus, somebody ripped out a, a baby, an unborn Walked baby. Walked right up to a pregnant woman, slices her stomach open, and pulls the baby out in front of her, and holds it up to her, and then like, just drops it down. Amazing. I, I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love of course, it. I said, I want to go a step further and fucking let's do it with a dog. Let's fucking people get all pissed off about that. Yeah. How about yeah. a puppy ripped out of the fucking uterus and thrown on the ground? Kill? Man, that'd I, be some shit. Gentlemen, I love what I'm hearing. <laughs> I love what I'm hearing. That's why he's the best. <laughs> uh, I love what I'm hearing. I do. I'm seeing it. Oh, and then you know, like he rips out the, the rips out the the killer rips out the 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 litter from the mother dog and then starts juggling all the the, the, <laughs> the, the dogs and <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> juggling it amazing my god just like juggling Steve Martin did yeah puppy fetuses remember in the jerky does cat juggling he does that fucking thing oh, oh, yeah. I can't believe it I've heard about <laughs> yeah, it but I don't know. Yeah, cat juggling, and the guy takes it out, and he's fucking juggling cats. <laughs> yeah, except these are dog fetuses, freshly torn out of the of, of the. Oh boy, that's Let's extreme. See. Yeah, Tubby Watson. I don't think that's ever been seen in a movie. That's see, that's where no. my mind went. Imagine putting that on film. People would fucking they'd have oh. puppies, dead puppies. <laughs> oh. I don't mean to jump off the topic of dead puppies, but everybody's going to thank me for it. Uh, the, yeah, probably. The, the reality is I rewatched Hellraiser. I gave, I finally was able to rewatch Hellraiser. I said I was going to do it. The one that came out this year, not of obviously 1987, which we all know and love. Um, it was that. <laughs> that does Mike Parker. Wow. <laughs> 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 what a great movie. No. So 2022. I liked it better than my first time. It right. was like, again, the first time. So I, the first time I said I hovered it, I think I've earned a six, six, six point five. I'm up to, I would say I give it a seven now. 
I give it a seven. Okay. So, yeah. See, I was not. I'm not a lover of it yet. Uh, it, it, but I didn't find it as long and, and, and tedious as I did the first time. But I also was really intrigued at how it started. And I love how they integrated the puzzle way better than any other movie really yep. has done anything with the puzzle box. Yeah. So, I mean, that was always my pluses. It was just getting over that sister, uh, the, the main character, yeah. and, and, and just her beginnings and the brother element and everything. I just, I didn't like it. I, I just didn't like it. So my investment was only was not really there, but I let it go. I rewatched it, and enjoyment level definitely went up. Good. That's cool, cool man. That, that, that's really cool. And, and uh, I'll just say that uh, over on Jay the Dead's new horror movies, Dr. Walking Dead had the same experience where he gave it a really rough review, and then the more he thought about it, he was like, you know what? I, I take that back. I think I like this a little more than I thought. So, uh, yeah, yeah, upon further reflection, he was like, yeah, I think I think he had some of the same problems with uh, characters. And at first he was even like, I don't know about I mean, I'm sure, you know, I, I'm pretty sure Hellraiser will get brought up here at some point uh, so we can go further into that. Uh, you know, so uh, anyways, I, I didn't want to blow my load all, all over the popsicle stick, uh, shoot it out. But <laughs> <laughs> well, my only my only problem with it is I rewatched it yesterday to give it a fair chance. So I could I could either say, ah. nope, hasn't changed or yes. I enjoyed it more. It was my last, it was my rewatch and the last one I really wanted to rewatch. And so I did Scream last week and Scream didn't really change. I just, there's, I have, I still have way too many problems with it. I, I will give, yeah. I saw, I saw the teaser for six. I think it dropped yesterday. Um, and, Again, I don't know, man. When you leave Woodsboro, I'm kind of happy to try something different. But you know, oh. your your Jason takes Manhattan territory here. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. Oh. Plus, if Sam doesn't fucking die in the opening scene, as I mentioned last week, Dave, our last episode, I am not happy. I cannot stand that actress. Sorry, I I don't know. Maybe you're better in other things, but she took my enjoyment away from Scream both times. I just don't like her. The the sister, who I think is going to be the main actress, Jenna, she's great. I hope she yeah. dies for real. Not 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 the actress. <laughs> I, not the actress. Not the actress. I, no, he not hates Jennifer. Jennifer. I, hate, I don't I don't he know this bitch. Uh, I, I I just meant uh yeah in, you in wish the intro you did. that but but yeah the Sam yeah I don't, I'm just not yeah Scream Five is or yeah or or I, I think that Scream Six should be called Scream Two. They should just keep You're the right. bit alive. They should just right, yeah, yeah just have it called Scream Two 2023. That would be fucking I, hilarious. I will say the marketing yeah. behind the title. Is genius. I yeah, love when they the, do something good and using the M as yep. the V and V1, one for yeah. the six. Beautiful. I love that ah, shit. See, I've yeah. seen nothing. I didn't know. I I heard the other day about New York as Alex put a picture up somewhere, and I thought it was a joke because they showed a picture of New York and the Twin Towers are there. So first of all, I'm thinking, well, this has to be from the past. This is something somebody just made up as a fucking joke to say that Scream's gonna go to New York. And then someone said something, and I said, oh, they're not really doing that, are they? And then someone said, oh. yeah, it's good. I'm like, are you fucking – I go, well, not that I was all interested before because I wasn't, but now I'm, I'm, I've am i lost so much more interest. Never go – never take out of your fucking place. Never fucking do it. It doesn't work. Stay where the fuck you are. Don't put fucking Victor Crowley <laughs> in fucking <laughs> China. Seven's in space. <laughs> Don't, Seven in space. <laughs> Don't go to Seven. fucking space. <laughs> Don't go to fucking China. <laughs> don't go to New York. Don't fucking go. Just oh, don't yeah. gravity room stab scenes. Uh, see, that's oh. what they haven't done in a horror movie. If you're gonna take it to space, at least do something like that. Like, uh oh, or an anti gravity, and there's like a floating chase scene. They did. I Jason. Agree. Jason was anti. Jason was well, anti gravity. Remember at the end when then he got. Oh yeah. He was I'm floating. When he flew in. at the guy. <laughs> Yeah, it was still it was still anti gravity. Jason doing his thing, but no. I, I won't lie. If every Jason. single franchise just had an entry in the hood, I'm fine with that. Yes, I am fine hood. with that. So that's, <sighs> that's where Jason needs to go. Anyway, back. yeah. <laughs> I guess I guess project. We'll do projections later because that's going to be a 2023. I do give them credit. I love the old old. 80s mentality of rush that sequel out. I will give them credit for that. They're <laughs> churning that out, and it's coming out one year later. Love it's it. Not in New York. I, I just think uh, I'm. I don't know. This last scream lost me. I think I'm just. I, I, I hear you. I may watch. I may watch it just just to watch it. But yeah, I don't know. I guess it's sort of that that uh, you know completest thing in a, that you know a lot of us Same. have. Where it's like, well, why the fuck not? I guess I saw the others and. 
here we are, you know, and, and maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised. You know, it's not like anything I'm looking forward to, like an Evil Dead Rise, where like I'm I'm literally yes. trying to jerk myself mm. off to sleep. <laughs> See, I'm concerned. They're they're taking it out of the fucking would. woods. They're putting it in a fucking apartment. I don't like the idea. I just yeah, I, no, I, I like. I, 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 I think I hear the reason though. I'm cool with it is because the show sort of expanded the scope oh. of the of the of the franchise a bit, and so this does feel okay. like it could be more grounded. But maybe not. We'll see. You know, only. only yeah. Uh, hey. I, no, no. I hope that. that and I'm that with you I'm on Scream wrong. too. Well, yeah. oh, yeah. the thing about Scream is this: even though I wasn't over the moon with it, you know, I, it still felt like a Scream movie. So yeah. it, it was still nice to. So if the next, if they continue to have that same feel, I'm okay to watch them because it's it's a little bit of nostalgia. I still enjoy it. It feels like home to me. I mean, not the way a Friday the 13th would, but it's still something that I'm used to seeing. It isn't like another franchise where it doesn't have an authentic feel after, like, the first couple. You know what I mean? They go, like, yeah. you know, there's there's no feel to the fucking Hellraiser sequels after the fucking third <laughs> or anything. No. Like, there, there's just – there's none of that atmosphere. They just, they just go anywhere they want. Scream, they tried to preserve the same atmosphere, so I'll give them credit for True. at least getting that right in, in Scream 5. So hopefully Agreed. if they continue that Agreed. in 6, it's worth it to me. But yeah, hey, well said, I, whatever. We'll see. I want to be wrong. I really do. I, I hope Scream Six is fucking amazing, like the oh, best yeah. since the original. Imagine if it was. It, it could be. Who knows? I don't know. Anyway, I doubt it, but you never know. I doubt it too. But I'm just trying to say, hey, let's be positive. You never know. Even though it's in New York, I I may say the shit that I say, but I want to be proven wrong. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I I don't like when they go to New York. I don't like Evil Dead going to apartments. I don't like any of this shit. But I mean, I, I, I love ask, being proven wrong. <laughs> this is this is the one thing that makes me laugh, because this does. It's funny because Scream Six, or Scream Five, excuse me, is very much like a bad '80s slasher sequel. If you if I drill down, so I should really love it. <laughs> and I'll tell you one of my what do I think? It's like why is it that Sam remembers her dad as Billy Loomis, the killer from Scream, the original oh. movie? <laughs> <laughs> A white T-shirt and blood on him. I guess they had to like say, well, no one's gonna recognize him, Skeeter, yeah. right now. So we gotta put him in a white T-shirt and blood on him. Why is that her memory of him? Because <laughs> the only picture she, those... she saw. It's fuck. He was in the paper. <laughs> Christian, you ever watch those uh, on YouTube? It's that Ryan George guy. He does the pitch meetings. And... Oh no, that sounds like right up my alley. That's oh, amazing. you would like this guy. He he does he he'll do like pitch meetings. He's he's both characters. He's the guy pitching the movie, and he's the executive who's uh going to approve the movie. And he always has this joke where <laughs> you know the like he'd be like, and then she's got to remember her father, who's Billy Loomis, in the white T-shirt and the blood. And then he might go, and then the other him will go, well, why would he do that? And he'll go, I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's exactly it. I was like, what the fuck? Anyway, that's one of many little irks of that movie, but that's okay. It's not on my list. And I did say, funny Same. enough, it's not one of my disappointments, but I guess it could should be because yeah. of how much I'm talking about it right now. Um, it's funny, and I'll just say the Merkins, is that their name? They released another oh. uh, Slice Slice Baby. If you haven't checked it out, Ooh, it's cool. fucking genius. It's genius. I'll actually throw a, a shit out to Alex. Alex, again, he's got a couple of shout outs already this show. Uh, Alex posted it um, on his Skeleton Crew page. And I, I saw it and I'm like, yeah, just yesterday, I think. Maybe okay. maybe I'm wrong, maybe a few days ago. And I saw it and I'm like, this is fucking amazing. And they, they're the ones that have done a couple of those parody videos with the slasher favorites. Yeah. Slice Slice Baby may be their best. And they do, oh. it's kind of like that, they, they insert, although it's funny because it's, it's Michael Myers with vanilla ice hair which is fucking gold unto itself. Uh, the lyrics are great. The lyrics are fucking amazing. And they have B-roll footage. You know, we always talked about making the movie B-roll where you see Pamela like trying to string up Steve Christie in the tree and all this shit and, and all that mm -hmm. stuff. They have like two guys bringing Judith Myers tombstone into the back of like the car that Michael Myers has for before he kills them. I just thought that was kind of funny because you're like, a, why did he go back to Haddonfield to steal Judith Myers? <laughs> why did they do it? Yeah, why? <laughs> why did they do it? <laughs> but, but if he did, I mean, that takes some strength and a lot of time, too. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Anyway, I, I thought that was a nice little add-on in the, Merc the, the video, too. Worth checking out. Cool. Fucking hilarious. I'll check it and out. And whenever yeah, something... Definitely. Whenever someone w wedges in the speed kills reference, I'm... Uh, I'm all ears. 
<laughs> yes. I hate a guy with a car and no sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it too because he's like he's like a kilometer away, two kilometers away. <laughs> yeah. She's like, hey, buddy, speed kills. Speed kills. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, what? <laughs> I'd love to see what his what his what it was like in the car when he's like, what the <laughs> fuck, you bitch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she called me a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're gonna die in this very car. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, her car. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I thought it was. Yeah, I, I actually thought it was that too for a second. Wow. But anyway. That's why he fixated but, on her. Now it makes sense. Yep. Wow. Should have just Gee. shut up. <laughs> Telling you. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. She could have lived. She had to open her big mouth. Yeah. I'm gonna pass that information over to the, the people I live with here. <laughs> You know, keep your mouth shut. They had neighborhood yep. watch. You might not get killed. Anyway, right. true. Yeah, we gotta we gotta do our uh, our we rapid start players. in here. We gotta get okay. on. Yeah, we, we uh the we, order is different like it is every year. This year, Watson first, me second, Christian third. So we're gonna be twenty two okay. to eleven is gonna be somewhat rapid fire. We each take our turns. Twenty two this little little, little twenty one this. But you know. Like we do. Because last year, I think we went round robin on everything. and ended up being a six-hour show. Can't do that this year. Sorry. No. So we're going back to the way we were doing it before. But we're, no need to rush. We're just going to do our thing and whatever. If we go over, we go over. And we'll probably end up saving the freaking other stuff, our forecast for 2023, to the next show like we did last year, too. Remember we had a part two? And Watson came back for that. Mm-hmm. So. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We did no do need a part to. Two, did we? Yeah, we did a part two. So we had a sequel. So we, uh, no need to rush. We're just gonna do our thing and say what we gotta say, and I think we'll be okay. Of course, we're probably gonna have some repeats, but yeah. So um, Watson, if you want to have a preamble for your entire list before you do it, and then run off your twenty-two to your eleven, All you're right, up, my no. man. Man, no, no preamble here. I feel like we've uh, had a really good and fun discussion about the year as it is and about our rankings and our lists and things like that. So let's just jump in here. Coming in at number 22, I've got Moloch. <laughs> Moloch. Uh, this is a folk horror movie out of the Netherlands that deals with generational curses and ancient evil. It's the film that I'd hoped this year's The Twin would be, the Teresa Palmer movie, but The Twin was too busy jerking off over that shitty, useless ending to care about story, whereas this movie (laughs) packs a lot of punch, and its major strength is how it leans into unique regional folklore, and I felt it did so to great effect. And there were things about the story that seemed contradictory to me at first, but then once everything is out in the light, it, it... you realize that there's a lot going on here and it all makes sense. So that's, that's Moloch, 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 however you want to say it. Coming in at number 21. <laughs> Moloch. Moloch. Yeah. Mal- Malach. You fucking Moloch. Uh, yeah. You, you Moloch. <laughs> you, you, you Malach. Um, so coming in at number 21, I have Smile. Uh, this film has a compelling premise in a chilling way by which the evil manifests itself. Just a simple smile and a dash of, you know, just a little old, the old reality altering shenanigans. And for a while, the story's reliance on forcing the lead to make stupid decisions was bothering me. Uh, we got a psychologist on our hands here, and I was hoping for more discipline from the script in this regard. Like, let's have her just be doing nothing but smart shit. But once we hit that third act and actually come face to face with our antagonist, I was sold. I wasn't expecting there to be a physical evil actually in the movie. And then we suddenly get into eldritch horror territory, something the Salmons would like. And I was like, okay, much appreciated. I was digging the hell out of that. And I'm digging what Kyle Garner, uh, Kyle Gallner is up to these days. Like he's kind of grown into his look. He used to look like a, when he was younger, sort of a guy who looks like he's always crying or about to cry. Now he just kind of looks like <laughs> a badass. I dig him. That smile. And number 20, I've got You Won't Be Alone. This movie made me think of Dave Z. Uh, it's a period piece film out of Macedonia, and it does a tremendous job showing us what it's like to be a witch, which is why I thought of you, Dave. Uh, the story's loaded with some fascinating witch mythology that's either, you know, and I'm not sure I didn't look into it, but it's either unique to that region of the world or else unique to this movie. But whatever the case, it's done extraordinarily well. The body swapping ability that these witches have is really interesting. Uh, the notion of assuming someone else's identity, very cool stuff. And the only reason this isn't in my top 10 proper it, it isn't merely because this is such a strong year, which it is. I just needed more horror from this movie. It's drama first, which is fine. I just, uh, you know, this is a horror list. So I'm like, I, I want that horror, despite the amazingness of You Won't Be Alone. 
Number 19, we've got Orphan First Kill. I didn't think a prequel to the 2009 original would be any good, considering the fact that they're bringing back Isabel Furman, who was 10 <laughs> when they filmed the OG and is now in her mid-20s, right? But somehow, some way, they made this shit work. And what's better is that they didn't make the same movie over again. The narrative goes in some fun, creative directions that kept this film feeling fresh the whole way through. And I think Esther is a great example of a female horror antagonist done correctly. Like, she's tiny, so she's not going to be able to rely on physicality like Michael Myers or Jason Voorhees. Instead, she has to be cleverer than everyone else around her to make the kills and do what she's going to do. And it's really fun to watch that in action. We're talking orphan first kill. At 18, I have Speak No Evil, which is about a Danish family vacationing in Italy in Tuscany who meet this Dutch family, you know, same difference to me, am I right? Uh, they're all Swedes, uh, but uh, yeah, and, and, you know, they hit it off to the point where months later, they're all just gonna meet up for a long weekend together at the Dutch family's house. Well, the operational word here is uncomfortable <laughs> because this movie doesn't want you feeling at ease at any moment. And that's because the story, it's an examination of social boundaries and precisely just how necessary it is to establish such things when you're interacting with others. Like there have been studies that show what criminals look for in a victim. And that's applicable here for certain, you know, basically what we have is a cautionary tale on not allowing yourself to be too agreeable, you know, to a fault. You know, we will say it may be the best thing in the world to put your foot down and just fucking say no to people, be they new friends you're trying to make or to your own little daughter wanting to go back for a stuffed animal. We'll just, put it like that uh fathers in particular should watch this and add a little strength of character to your parenting techniques that's what i say so uh and that <laughs> ending that ending holy shit so speak no evil yeah. at number 18 so at number 17 talking the exorcism of god this is a strange one uh, at times it's pulpy exploitation midnight movie but then at other times it'll veer into the the profound you know there's a worthwhile meditation here on the the the, the nature of forgiveness and the way the film handles this kind of blew me away. I was like, I wasn't expecting what we're dealing with here thematically just after that cold open uh, with the sexy possessed chick. Uh, you know, fans of the exorcism possession horror subgenre will have some fun with this, but it'll also get you all existential. And furthermore, I got to put it out there that I love it when demons shit talk. I believe that if you were a, <laughs> I do, I, I believe that if you yeah. were Dave, you, you loved a Reagan for that same reason. Uh, yeah. I believe that if you were a demonic entity yeah. inhabiting a vessel of some person, you know, so they're, you're having, having the body, uh, then ex exorcist shows up. Why not talk some shit, say some fucked up things, super entertaining, oddly philosophical. That's the exorcism of God here at number 16. I have hatching. This is a Finnish language creature feature that revolves around a 12 year old gymnast girl who's dealing with, uh, I don't know, just an indescribable family dynamic, right? It's perfect on the surface, but dark and authoritarian underneath it all. And anyway, she discovers this otherworldly egg out in the woods, and what hatches from this thing is a mixture of horror and Jungian psychology at its finest. There's an investigation here of the shadow self versus the persona. That's our inner person versus performative bullshit. It truly beautiful stuff here, and this is coming from someone who cannot stand coming-of-age movies. Never liked them even when I was a teenager, but this one, we follow this lovable main character, and I think everyone needs to see Hatching. Here at number 15, Hellbender. I have nothing but love for this family of filmmakers, the Adams family, they're called. Father, mother, daughter team. And they're back with this mother-daughter witch film. Uh, and much like You Won't Be Alone that I mentioned earlier out of Macedonia, we're dealing with witches who are basically their own unique type of monster that has its own mythology. And this movie shows us things witches can do, the powers they have, the things they desire, the things they fear. And at the heart of it all is this mother-daughter relationship that seems fun and friendly at first glance, but as the story goes and as our daughter character comes into her own power, the dynamic changes. The tech industry, uh, particularly phones and Apple, has what they call planned obsolescence. So maybe when the new generation replaces the older one, it's not necessarily planned, but inevitable, right? And so beautiful movie, that's Hellbender at number 14. I hope I'm good on time here, guys. Am I uh, cruising through uh, well enough here? Ooh, okay. Absolutely. Yeah. You're good. Okay, sweet. Here at number 14, we've got Deadstream. Uh, I've heard people say nice. this is Evil Dead meets faux doc found footage. 
And that's not inaccurate. That's that's what this is. And I had a blast with this movie about a disgraced social media influencer who his whole shtick is he does things that frighten him. So he's trying to get himself uncanceled. So he goes to this haunted location to stay the night. And naturally, hilarity ensues. These filmmakers uh, also did a short in the new VHS movie, VHS 1999. And theirs was the best in the bunch, in my estimation. Now, I will say that I was doubting the film at first. It felt like it was chicken with head cut off. And I was like, okay, I mean, it's funny, but is this going to pick up? And it does. Uh, it goes for broke there in the latter half of the movie. And <laughs> my favorite scene, maybe the funniest scene of the year to me, was when our main man is giving one of those cringy YouTuber apologies. And to make everything right with his audience, to tell them what they want to hear, uh, he goes, and, and I wrote this down, he goes, I've been racially and culturally insensitive, but I've learned and I've grown. In fact, <laughs> I'd like to dedicate this broadcast to the blacks and Mexicans. This is for you. <laughs> I was crying laughing when that when he yeah. said that. I was I had to pause. I was like, this is what I came here for. Yeah. Yeah. Loved it. It's, <laughs> it's just awesome. it's just, yeah, I, I love it. I wow. see, yeah, you so funniest scene of the year for me. Everyone check out Dead, Dead Stream. Yeah, <laughs> I love it too. I just love the blacks and Mexicans. It's like, yeah. <laughs> all right, yeah, man. That, that, good apology there. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, at number 13, <laughs> I've got a movie that'd make for a good double feature with Dead Stream, and that's Dash Cam. Now, before this came out, I was hearing buzz that this was horrible and offensive, and sure, that's fine. I just assessed who I was hearing that from, and I was like, I think I'm going to like this, and I sure enough, I did. Uh, I don't know if and or when we'll get a lead quite like this in a movie again anytime soon, but she was cracking me the hell up with just about every chaotic thing she was doing. And like Deadstream, this is a live stream where our main character <laughs> finds herself in the middle of just some unexplainable horror. And I appreciated how the viewers going through the terror along with her and it just keeps ramping up. Excellent visuals, fun based in red build lead if you're into that. And the end credits sequence where she's rapping about everybody. Oh. Like I was... I was dying, dude. I, I yeah. thought that was some funny shit. That's like what I do when I'm in the car. So, <laughs> <laughs> If you're that good, I'll give you serious props. I'm not man, that because... good, and it's not freestyle stuff, but I just kind of recycle certain lines over and over, and, I, you know, and, and I'll kind of be like, yeah, I got I to gotta stop this because, yeah, if anybody heard me saying this stuff. Uh, so <laughs> that's dash cam. Uh, at number 12, all right, uh, I'm coming in with Hellraiser. David Bruckner is batting, uh, batting 100 right now. Uh, or is it 500? Shit, I don't know. But anyways, this guy, 1,000. That's right, you bat 1,000. That's, That's a good thing. There it is. Uh, 100 and he sucks. No, I don't know. Fuck this guy. No, uh, this guy knows what he's doing as a filmmaker. Uh, and, you know, I think he did a tremendous job with this film. In fact, like Dave, like I, I said earlier, you know, Dr. Bishop had given this a bad review. Kind of, And like C, he thought about it more and came, came, uh, came up on it. And anyway... Uh, there's so much to say about this one. I appreciate how the Lamont configuration, I love 22 shots for that one, by the way. <laughs> Lamont! Uh, <laughs> how it does Yo, what it Lamont. does. <laughs> 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 right? Yes, exactly. Remember the picture we did of that? Yes! yes. Oh, I yeah! Do. Yes, I do. Uh, I think, I'll, re I think I'll about repost that, that if I can find it. Yeah. <laughs> I think about that randomly every few months. I'm not kidding. But uh, <laughs> so yeah, the Le Mans configuration, uh, you know, and I love how it's doing what it's doing as a puzzle. I thoroughly enjoyed this new iteration of Pinhead. And I was fearing at first that in order to ride the current social trends, they were just going to feminize what Doug Bradley did as lead Cenobite, which would come off as trite and cheap and horrible, but they honestly went the high route here and didn't give us, you know, Lady Doug Bradley Pinhead. Like, you know, here the character was like the OG story, mysterious and sexless, not intimidating like he was, but intimidating in a different way. It was a different approach that isn't just trying to recycle, hey, let's be like Doug Bradley every time. No, this was something different. I was like, all right, this is, this is the right way. And uh, I was digging it. So I, and I just love the way the the geometry worked with the the house and the, the 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 configuration itself. Very beautiful stuff. Bruckner rules. I'll be looking out for more Hellraiser for sure. And here we are at number 11. I've got Phil Tippett's Mad God. Um, over on a recent episode of Jay of the Dead's New Horror Movies, Jay and I did a review of this. I had no notes. I was just going off what he was saying. And, and man, it was just a, a, a lot of fun. It's difficult to talk about this film because it's it's – less narrative than just art with a capital art. Uh, in that way, it's an absolute masterpiece about, God, probably about a ton of things, but about the cruel nature of the universe from the giant 
macroscopic to the tiny microscopic death, despair, but life always thriving, thriving through it all. So yeah, watch Mad God on Shutter, and that's my that's my twenty two to eleven boys. Nice. Whew. There's like three that I hadn't even seen. Mm. Really? There's Exorcism one. Exorcism of God. Exorcism of God. Um, Oh fuck! I can't even remember the other. I'm two gonna now. guess. Sorry. I'm gonna yeah. guess for you. I'm gonna guess for C. You didn't see. You won't be alone. Yes. And you did. Okay. And you didn't see. Ah, uh, hatching. But maybe man. Yes. Died. No, ah. it's hatching. Yeah. There you go. See, oh, geez, I know Dave. this guy. <laughs> I'm good. I, I know my co-host. I'm telling you. Yeah. But you do. And, and speaking of hatching, to me that was a B movie, 100. percent If that is not in B's top 10, I would be shocked. That seems 100. Oh. percent like him. You yeah, know? absolutely. And we did a great review of it over on uh, New Horror Movies at some point. It was Jay Macula and me. Joel, I mean, Joel might have been there. Were you? No, you were you there, Dave? No, no I was not. You weren't was there yet. I don't think you were. I don't think you right. were. But yeah, we did a great review over there, and I went into Jungian psychology. Yeah, hatching is definitely one people want to get into. And uh, but yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, with this 22 to 11 and uh, they're like mad. God is one that, you know, I was like, God, I want this in my top 10. It's art like to a T, but it's, I don't know if I'll ever watch it again, but it was so fucking good. I don't know. So uh, t- great list. I'm happy with all these movies. I could just, I-, I could live here and be happy with my list, let alone getting into the awesome top 10. So I can't wait to hear what you guys have in at uh, 22 Man. to 11. And it is a solid year. In these movies here, I did see them all except except one, Exorcism of God. And I also mm. know that Jason Lloyd also was high on it, but he was the yep. only person I knew that was high. I didn't hear a word from you about it. But in my yeah. defense, I don't know if Jay's doing this on purpose on Jay the Dead's new horror movies, but typically what he always has done in the past is he timestamps the movies and then he tells you the rating in the, in the description. So. Yeah. He's not doing that on this show. I don't know if you realize that or, at, at all, but well, he doesn't. On the he still does not. Yeah. No, on not even website. on the site. I looked because I was trying to cheat. I was trying to look at all of your freaking ratings oh, okay. for every movie that, that you talked cheat. about on new horror movies. Well, not cheat, but see all Research. of Watson's ratings quickly. Research, yeah. And I couldn't pull them up. I could pull them up on the other show. I oh. could pull them up on um weekly, but oh, yeah, he doesn't do it yeah. on this one. And oh, I was like, okay. son of a bitch. So I didn't know. Yeah. So, but Exorcism of God, I didn't know that you liked it. Like I said, yeah. Jason Lloyd said he liked it. Other than that, there were he's two. He's why I watched it, Dave. Really? Yeah, he's See, why I oh, watched it. I saw his, because, uh, you know, oh. even though I'm like, I'm, I never post on Facebook, I will lurk every few, like every like uh, once a week I'll hop on and uh, just kind of lurk. And yeah, Jason Lloyd had yeah. said uh, that he liked it. And I was like, all right, let's give this a try. You know, and uh, I was uh, I was pleasantly surprised at what I was getting here. Damn, I almost did it, and I held back for two reasons. Number one, the title sounded too ridiculous to me. It is. And number two, the fucking cover, the box art. Yeah. It looked, it looked, it looked like shitty, like fucking like the type of stuff that I, we usually talk shit about. So, I yep. mean, well, I was like, Dave, how can this movie be good? But Dave, I, Dave, I might be— You'll, you'll appreciate in, in the there's a cold open exorcism, and uh, the exorcist— uh, so we, we, we got our, our person who's possessed and, uh, she kind of breaks herself loose out of her, out of her chains, out of her restraints. And then he throws the holy water on her. And I was just sitting there like, uh, and the way she reacts to the holy water hitting her as her shirts open, I was like, wait a second. She thinks it's come, come, oh, come. Amazing. So, <laughs> that's amazing. how she was treating it. I was like, oh man, this is a naughty movie. And then it gets all serious, but I'm not trying to hype that movie up. It's just, it's just good. It's good. Yeah. Right. No, that's cool. No, that, that, and, in these movies, uh, some of them I'll, I'll be talking about and, and, and they will come up. It, it, this is what's funny before I was going to say something before I did my list at the big, but before we, any of us did our list and I was going to say, I may as well say it now that I think that this year, a lot of the movies that I have in, in, in my top 10, are would are more likely to be in other people's bottom parts, not bottom of the fucking year, but like a, like a twenty two to eleven, like in the teens or something like that, yeah. and and vice versa, where a lot a lot of movies that other people have in there, I could see are gonna end up in in like my my top ten. I just think feel that it's that kind of gonna be that kind of year for me, and cool. I also feel that uh, I'm very happy with my list this year. Because there have been times where I haven't been. I think I've even said, ah, I hate my list or it sucks or something. This year, it's, it's been it's been a very good blend 
uh, of everything for me. Where in the past, I was critical of it because I'm like, man, it's too Hollywood. I think I've had a couple that were all too fucking too Hollywoody or something <laughs> else. And just I, I've sometimes not been pleased with my list. This list, I feel almost takes me back to the days of, of 2016 and 17 when I was really thrilled. Not quite, because I don't think it's that strong a year, but it's a nice mix for me. So I am happy about it this year, and, and I'm I'm sticking to that, what I said, that you know my top-heavy stuff might be other, other people's like towards the end, but cool. we're getting there. So I'll I'm try to be... Top, I'm cool. topping up my coffee. Okay. I can hear you guys still, so I just didn't want you to think I was being totally rude. So cool, buddy. sorry, Dave, but I'm, I'll be two, two seconds. So... No so, worries. Dave, this is the point where we can talk shit about C, and he can't say anything, you <sighs> motherfucking <sighs> Canuck piece of shit, motherfucker, <laughs> you piece of trash fucking – no, I'm just kidding. I love you, buddy. <laughs> please, please, Dave, I'm sorry. Oh, man. Oh, that's great. That's great. Oh, I'm not... – <laughs> I'm going to yell that at random intervals. <laughs> I love it. Holy shit. I'm in a mood. Wow, good. Good. Stay in that mood. Oh, so – Okay, I'm going to try to be quick, but I, I won't be, because that's just me. Um, I'll, I'll go to my 22, oh, can't and wait, man. Can't wait. check this. Number 22, I almost didn't watch it, because I didn't think it was horror, based on uh, the mixed reactions and the people in it, and just some other things. I almost didn't watch it, and JP, a couple weeks ago, basically said, I consider it horror. And some people, some friends, I trust enough to say, okay. That's fine. So I watched the movie, and I dug the movie. And that movie is called Don't Worry, Darling. Uh, you would think that I would kind of run to it because uh, Florence Pugh and Midsommar and how much I love her. and But I didn't. I held off. But I'm, I'm so glad I did. This movie, I don't want to spoil anything. I think you're better off going in blind because there's some really cool things that happen later on. I want to even compare it to... Um, it's almost like an episode of a certain show, but if I tell you the show, it's going to, in a way, in a roundabout way, give away something in the movie. All oh, I'm going to okay. say is that Florence Pugh is great in it. She's uh, put into a situation where it looks like she has an idyllic life with a perfect husband, and he has a great job, and everywhere they live, everybody's making money. All the husbands are making lots of money, and all the wives are just free to not have to work. You know, and, and, and set in, like, what looks to be, like, a, a time period of, like, the... Uh, the, the late 60s or early 70s type stuff, but very like, you know, I don't want to say Norman Rockwell, but I'm trying to think of like the, that time period of like when you see commercials of uh, like like black and white TVs, and like those big TVs with the small tubes in them. And hey, try this housewives and we're cleaning and this and that, like whatever, whatever era that is and whatever, uh, there's got to be a word for it, like an Americana. The good old days. <laughs> <laughs> well, come we just got canceled. <laughs> this is a great thing about having a guest do all those jokes is we can yes. just say, oh, that fucking Watson. Yeah, that, that yeah. guy. <laughs> yep. Well, I, here's I, the funny thing. I wish I could be there. West piece of shit. Sorry, I had to fit that in. <laughs> oh, of that hey. nut crack earlier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. But I wish I could be that lifestyle. I wish I could fucking just stay home, raise the kids, fucking clean the tub, and Bro. cook the, and not have to go to work and deal Same. with anything. And not even to me, that would be a dream. And have my wife just fucking make all the money. To me, Dude. sign me up. I'm not gonna complain. I don't give a fuck. You can emasculate me all you want. I just don't want to leave the fucking house. How's that? <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and I, I want to have a good life. I'm not because uh, these people have good lives. They don't. She, does, she doesn't have to good work. Man. Yeah, they get about they got a good community. It's all cool. It's not. It's a very nice place to live. Anyway, there's a guy named Frank that runs the whole show, and they all work for the same type company, and it's quite interesting. You don't even know what they're doing, but it's something involving like, uh, um, you know what? I don't really want to say anything else. All, all I want to say is that some of, some of my favorite visuals of the year are in this movie. Um, you know that there's obviously something beneath the surface in the in the narrative here. What's going on? There's some things that happen. It's got a great soundtrack. The music that's being played. It's got a great score as well. Really got. It might be one of the best scores of the year. I I, I like to sit down and listen to it. And uh, yeah, there's a, like I said, a really cool reveal. There was a, a couple things I wish would have been explained a little bit better, but it didn't hurt it enough to leave it off. So it's still an eight out of ten for me. And it's still my number 22. Oh, we never got the ratings from you, Watson. But oh, fuck. Sorry. That's okay. You could save it for the If you know I'm offhand. <laughs> I don't. If you know I'm offhand, well, then don't worry about it. Oh, save shit. It for 10. 
It's okay. I know you have ratings because you do them for everything else, but yeah, it's yeah. okay. Uh, so that's don't worry. Head out. ratings, by the way. We don't want numbers. We want head ratings oh, from you. Mother <laughs> fuck. Do you guys even have that down? Uh, head ratings? No. Yeah. No. The regular <laughs> number. Uh, yeah, I got the I got the ratings more or less. Yeah. I know where I stand. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, darling. Okay, cool. Eight out of ten. I didn't even think this was horror, Dave Z. So cool to hear that. That's uh. That's what this is. Cool. You did? Oh, oh, okay. I thought you saw it and you're not saying. No, it. I, didn't I didn't see it. See it. I avoided yeah. it because I thought it was just a. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I believe it when you'll see it, you'll definitely think it's horror. It's somebody in an effed up situation in a freaking place where bad things are happening to the only one that knows about it. And it, she knows that something bad is happening. It's hard to explain, but it, it felt it definitely felt horror to me. So um, Sounds like a comedy. Yeah, yeah it's hysterical. <laughs> okay, number 21. Here's one I thought it was going to be higher because everybody was blowing it, and I kind of waited towards the end of the year to watch it. And obviously, I still enjoy it. it it's called uh, The Black Phone. Now... I definitely did enjoy the movie. Uh, I liked the uh, Friday the 13th and 1978 at the same time, the opening paper. So a little, a little Halloween and a Friday the 13th tie in there. I like the um, the situation with the father about the visions, how he's, he doesn't want his daughter to have the visions. And you understand why when you learn about the mother and stuff like that. I love the relationship between the brother and the sister. And it's a scary situation for kids being kidnapped by this, by this you know monster, whatever the hell they call him, the grabber. And I quite enjoyed it. Story played out just well. The first time I thought it was a little too kid friendly, but the second time I watched it, I said, no, it's not. I mean, granted, it's not as dark as, as something like it chapter one, but it was, you know, it was dark enough and I dug it. The only, the reason it's here and not higher up is because I thought it was a little too convenient with some of the things. And it kind of felt like a video game. Like if you go to the panel behind the freezer or do this and everyone's giving a different hint, it felt a little too contrived <laughs> in parts. And there was a couple that just so happened to be, and there was a, a, something else that happened, which in a million years would never happen when he was trying to escape and he did this thing and looped it around something. And I was just like, eh, the contrivances kind of brought it down a little bit, but again, I still really enjoyed it. There's a lot of there's good acting. There's a good reveal. There's a great ending, and uh, eight out of ten. That's the black phone. Okay, uh, number twenty. This is a this is what I hope is going to be um, a bit of a hidden gem that because I, I haven't heard anybody talk about it. But this movie comes from Spain. It's called The Passenger, and it takes place uh, basically in its running time. It's really cool. It's not reinventing the wheel or anything like that, but everything is done right. We have a, a guy by the name of Blasco. He is uh, kind of like a, he dressed like a Winnebago type thing, and he's transporting people almost like a like an Uber situation. And he's hired. He's he's transporting um, a couple people. There's a daughter and a mother, and they're kind of a little bit at odds, a young, like a teenage daughter. And there's another woman that's there, and she's kind of like a religious. And this guy is um, who drives this vehicle. Blasco is a little bit. He's not abrasive, but he's talkative and opinionated. And you see him saying things in the beginning, you know, like, well, maybe you should step back a little bit. But he does kind of learn not to. But ultimately, it's he has all this technology conspiracy thoughts because there's weird things going on. I don't want to tell you really too much about what's going on, but I'll say there's just the right amount of character development uh, in their conversations. We have really good practical effects. Um character arc and uh in a, a good relationship develop in the movie and <laughs> the ending when it gets there is really cool and it can be interpreted a couple of different ways i consider it a happy ending uh but not in a conventional way but i it's a simple thing it's something from space it, it has sent something here it's almost like a body snatchers thing but not exactly things are if you touch them it's almost like a combination of the movie um uh, Splinter. I don't know if you've ever seen Splinter when the people are driving, they come across cars mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. maybe like, I mean, I don't want to say Evil Dead, but but it's more like a possession thing where, where it's something like that, but they, they get possessed by something. And again, I haven't heard many people talk about it, so I hope this is going to be one of these sleepers that I'm going to turn some people onto. And it's uh, The Passenger or also known as La Passenjara, maybe? La Passajara, I believe. But if you haven't seen it, check it out. Passajara? Passajara, yeah. Yeah, Passajara of Ragu. Passajara. A jar of pasta. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's the passenger. Number 19, 
a movie I've heard a lot of people not like so much, and I seem to be uh, one of its defenders, and I don't see why people don't like it more, and that is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, I appreciate the tiny nods. They weren't all in your face. I, you know, I, I cared about the uh, the old woman when they go to the house and everything else, and, and you know, it's understandable at some point and, and sad at the same point. We have uh, good kills, gory kills, creative some of them. You know, I, I like the conversation between uh, the gentleman they meet, Richter, and, and the girl, Lila, and, and di- mm-hmm. different people with different, you know, political leanings. But ultimately, and I, I, I think this, this is something that was lost on a lot of people, I think this movie is more about tolerance than anything, uh, being able to come together and cast things aside and say, hey, you know what? We have more, you know, going on than we think, but people are so abrasive and in your face about things. And that's just, I mean, to see that in a slasher, I think it's cool because it doesn't lose its slasher elements. And, and something else that I loved was the way they used Sally Hardesty in this. People complained and this, and I, I don't, ultimately the, what happened to her, I think works out. I kind of prefer it. And I think what they did here is so much, okay, I don't, I don't want to say so much better, but I didn't want to see a regurgitation of Halloween 2018 or the trilogy where she becomes like the main character. I like the fact that she was kind of cast in the background and this was more about the teens. I want my slashers to be about teens and young people. Call me crazy. That's what I like. And I also want my slashers to take place in a small area that's kind of isolated for whatever reason at that moment, and you see kids getting bumped off one by one. Call me nuts. That's what I want in my slasher. That's what I've always been into. Crazy Sorry. <laughs> you know? But I like how they handled the whole, the, the Sally situation, everything that went bare there, uh, went down. I, I, I felt a little bit for Leatherface, which is fine. And again, this is a Leatherface movie. There's none of that family stuff like in the other ones. And, and I enjoy it for it. So I, I know some people have been rather critical, but I I don't understand why. Uh, I think the bus scene was great, and everything that was annoying to some people, I don't seem to. I don't think. I think they missed out on the fact that these people are supposed to be annoying, and that's why they get bumped off, and that's why some of them have like, you know, they come to terms with things later. So it's like when the movie starts. I remember I was showing my brother and my buddy this, and I was like, you know, 15 minutes in, I said, guys, don't get, don't, don't get freaking, not offended because they wouldn't be offended, but don't, don't let the the first 15 minutes fool you. This isn't some type of movie that's going to be preachy the whole time. Just, just stick with it because when you look at the dialogue in the beginning, we're like, oh, are these supposed to be the characters we're relating to because we're spending our time with them because they're, they're really, you know, finger pointing you know, extreme extremist liberals that it's just a little too hard. And I don't want to see extremists on either side, but that's what I saw there. And I was like, just stick with it. You'll don't worry. And they were, they were cool when everything was, was fine, you know, but I really enjoyed that Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie and it's an eight out of 10. So, uh, number 18, we talked about it on the show episode 192. I don't have to get too deep into it. We already know what this movie is. It's pretty damn basic. Terrifier too. Another slasher. A lot of fun with slashers this year. We've talked about it before. Great kills, fun, too much story, which I think was trolling. Stuff, stuff in the freaking stuff, stuff in the story. I think was pushed in there intentionally, and I believe that he maybe you know pushed that button too hard, and as a result, there were some things that were put in there in the narrative that I thought maybe can't really be explained and were a little bit silly, but. I think I would rather have that than than lack of story. So that's fine. But, I mean, you know what you're getting at, and Art the Clown is great. I mean, I just said it last show. The difference between Christmas, Bloody Christmas, and this is that the killer, they both are gory and they both are fun in, in their ways, but the killer in this, in this movie, Art the Clown, is just so great and charismatic. You want to see him on the screen. You enjoy it. It's He's great. So, I mean... There's enough of that. Terrifier 2. Everybody knows what the hell it is. So, 8 out of 10. Now, here's one I don't think everybody got a chance to see, uh, because you can only watch it uh, by purchasing the the DVD. It's the sequel to WNUF Halloween special. It's called the Out There Halloween Megatape. Um, It takes place in the 90s as opposed to the 80s. What I preferred about this one, I'm not saying I preferred the movie, but what I did prefer comparatively to WNUF is that the commercials weren't repeated and that the story itself I thought was a little bit better. And some may argue it got a little sci-fi-ish towards the end as opposed to straight up horror like the first one. But 
They have a formula. They did what they did in the first one, and they did it again here. The only difference is it's 90s, but it's done so damn well, and it's just so enjoyable. There's so much nostalgia there. There's so much 90-isms, and it's what you're going to expect, honestly. Just, just If you like the first one, you're going to like this one too, and um, uh, support these guys because they're great. So that's out there Halloween special, another 8 out of 10. Okay, we talked about this on a podcast. I've talked about this everywhere. Halloween ends. What else am I going to say? Nothing. Everybody knows what it is. I enjoyed it for what it was. I like what they did with the story. It's simple as that. I have a better understanding of the story. Every time I've watched it, I've seen it four times, and I can safely say that I think I can answer 99% of the questions you're going to ask me about it. Do I think it's amazing? No. Do I think it's the best of the uh, of of the three of the three new ones? Yes, yes, I do. Um, but whatever. I like the way they wrapped it up. I think I got what I came to see ultimately at the end with Laurie and Michael. That's really all I wanted to see. I didn't need a half hour battle. I saw enough of that in the freaking first one, and then I didn't like the way it played out in the first one. I got what I wanted here. I understand everything they were doing with Corey. I get the fact that some people don't like it or don't understand it or whatever. And that's fine for me. I got what I wanted to slasher and it was very well made. Uh, I like the way it was shot. I like the sound. And this is predictably, once again, I'm going to give best score to John and Cody Carpenter for this one, a very different score, but also excellent. So every year I've given that one of these movies that come out, they've gotten best score for me. That's just the way it is. But I really dig all the, uh, Everything they did here. And we talked about it on the podcast before, but I don't have to get into it, so I'll, I'll, I'll keep it I'll keep it quick. So another one, 8 out of 10. Number 15, another one that a lot of people are liking more than me, I think. Uh, we talked about this on a show, too. I don't know. I forgot. I didn't write the number down, but it wasn't too long ago. See? Uh, Barbarian. I, wow. Okay. I, I really enjoyed it. Like I said on the show, uh, I just had a little bit of problem with a couple things that went down, and I explained them on the show. Some some contrivances and something that I just wish were handled differently or explained better. But I will say the first half with the mystery is awesome. And the second half is pretty good. And I, I did enjoy my time with it. But when I go to add everything up, it's like, well, why would this happen if he knew this? And why would this? So, again, I'm not picking it apart, but it's an 8 out of 10. I, 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 think, I still think it's great. I just wish... I felt like other people, but I just I, I pointed out the things I didn't like, and I I can only go so high with it. But that's barbarian. Okay, number fourteen. This one I went back and forth on all year, fourteen and thirteen, because they were in my top ten pretty much until like a week or two ago. But uh, this one is men, and I really enjoy everything oh. that this director has done, and he's three for three with me. I think that each of his movies. Ratings wise have gone down a little bit each time, but by by all means, they're still all great. I I, I love the way this movie looks. I, I like the story. It's and it's just this woman going there and after she survives what she survives and, you know, with this man that she endured and, and, and what he did to her at the end. And again, we don't know the whole story. We don't know, so I'm not going to judge. I don't know if she drove him to that or if she turned him into that. The way we see him portrayed as her being the narrative, as the narrator, you know, the unreliable or reliable, depending on where you want to go with it. We don't know what did that and, you know, what caused it. I'm certainly not defending him, but we're seeing her side of the story, and I dig it. But when we get to where we get to, I do kind of have to side on with her. I do kind of believe what she says. I um, I like that one of the lines I said, do you expect things to be uncomfortable or true is is a line that, that's uttered in this movie. I love that one scene when she's having fun with the echoes and stuff and uh, the, the piano player. Um, I'm sorry, my, my mistake. Um, I was reading a the note. Piano player. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, <laughs> I was reading a note like, that I wrote. Yeah. yeah. And, and my mistake, I didn't mean to say the that's piano okay. player. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the uh the guy showing up and everything else and the different the different archetypes uh, one form or another microaggression macroaggression etc all being portrayed by the same man Rory Kinnear who 
there you go. That that's my best actor for the year. Is Rory oh, same. Kinnear. Dave Z, same. Nice. See, yep. in, in all these parts, boy, boy, he executed it well. Man, in the first time I saw it, I didn't realize that it was all him. Um, I, I started hearing that after, and then I noticed it the second time. I go, well, how do you like that? Another something done really well. I love the way this director works. Um, trippy stuff. The score what, what is movie always are we on? What movie are you talking about? Men. Oh, men. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry. I got oh. stuck. I got stuck on something else. Yeah. Yeah, I did know. I, I go, this guy looks like the same guy. So... I right. looked it up, but even IMDb was a little, uh, I think, mysterious on that, if I'm not mistaken. Were they? Maybe, yeah, I didn't look I, I there. Could wrong. I, could I don't wrong. know. I just heard people talking about it, and then I watched a making yeah. of uh, on the Blu-ray, because I bought the Blu-ray. It, it, it was up for like a real cheap, like under $10. So I said, yeah, bet, I'm on that. So I got that. But I just like the director style. And, of course, Jesse Buckley is the lead. Um, Harper. Uh, is great as well. So, I mean, good acting all around, a nice quiet film in some parts, but when it had to get crazy, it did. You get a freaking nasty stabbing. You get some, some cool stuff, uh, stuff, stuff to think about. And, you know, I'm glad the way it was handled. There's another movie later. I'm going to talk about something, a, a topic that ha- comes up a lot, uh, you know, in modern culture and in film. And I like the way it was handled here. It, it wasn't offensive to me as a man or anything like that. So, I dig it, and this, you know, another great film. Would you agree that you you think this uh, leans a little bit into possession territory? Not, I guess, just in the way it's kind of trying to convey messages, especially at the end. Or am I totally mistaken? And this was more on the nose, and possession's a little bit more allegory. But it it it, it it's where it lost me. I'm, I'm not going to say I didn't like the movie. I liked it. I thought the cinematography was great. The the atmosphere felt good. But it, it just where it went, I just started getting a little frustrated with the film. Okay. I love where end. it went, and I know what you're getting at in the climax, and it is a lot going on. And, I mean, I think that stuff is cool as hell. I mean, the CGI is fucking incredible because, obviously, it's CGI. It's not practical, but, man, it's flawless. It looks beautiful. But I could see how what you're saying. The thing is this. At the very end of the movie when her friend shows up, it's like the last shot. We see something. And – I wish they would have given us a little bit more to kind of answer that. Is this something that actually happened? But then you see that there's some type of mess left over. So you're like, wait a minute. This is something actually that did come to fruition in, in the physical. That's what I took out of it. But Yeah. No, and, in front, and I, you know? I correct myself. I thought it looked good and whatever. I didn't end up liking it. I ended up, I ended up the second half or the, at least the third act threw me off and I remember it ended up tanking the movie for me, but I know a lot of people really dug it this year or it seems, well, it seems like a lot of people did. So I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people felt the way you feel too in that, in that climax, the way things went, believe me, I really, I could, I could see somebody not liking it. It's almost like it was, they went, they pushed it too far. Like maybe once or twice it would be cool, but it just kept happening and happening. Me, I like effed up freaking trippy stuff like that. So I don't care, but I could see how that could grow tiresome for somebody. So I, I totally get that. Oh. You know? and, and when you hear my list, I mean, especially the top 10, I might have the most generic list I've ever had. I, I don't know if I usually say that because I I've always find that before. I have other mixes. Like that. I think I feel like I've got probably the most generic list. But again, it's been a weird year. Like my number, my top five, I've seen people absolutely shit upon. So who knows? Like, like you never, you, you never know. That's <laughs> that's fucking the nature of this this uh, genre, it seems. But uh, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to derail you. No, but, it's okay. Uh, We're here cool. to talk about it. I'm, I'm, you know, so it's another eight out of ten for me. Another great flick. Love it. Okay, this is another one. I went back and forth, in and off the top ten, and uh, same thing. These two were there for most of the time. Actually, for, what yeah, number is 14, this? 14, 13, 12, and 11 oh, were sorry. all in the top 10 at one point. Now, I'm in, I'm in 13 now. Okay. Jordan Peele with Nope. I, nice. I've We've heard everything people are going to say about it. I I understood what he was going for, I believe. I, you know, I, 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 I love the characters. I love the brother and sister. Apparently, some people don't like, um, what's her name? And I've... I've loved her since the first time I saw her on Screen Queens, the the TV show, the, the Ryan Murphy show. Jamie Lee Curtis? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Mamma Mia. See, I can't remember anybody's name today, the actor or the actress. Oh, Kiki, I'm going to be the same way, man. I am going to be the same. Yes, Kiki Palmer. Yeah. I love her. I guess some people I have a I don't know why I stay out of it, but I think she's great. I think she's great in this. I think he's great in this. Uh, yeah. All of them. Yeah. Honestly, all the performances are, are right on to me. The story is something that I think has to be seen twice to be appreciated because the first time watching it, I think expectations are one thing, and then what you get is another. And it took me a second view and a discussion that like that we had on uh, new horror movies. Mm. And but I think it, the, the flying stuff is all really cool looking. I like the the morals. Some animals aren't fit to be trained, and looking for the impossible shot and trying to deal with trauma the way you're dealing with it. There are layers here, the way there are in all his movies. I don't think that they were as obvious in this movie. And I think that was part of the problem. I think a lot of people just took it at face value. And then I also think on the other side, some people looked too deeply for things yeah. that weren't there, almost Definitely. like a, a, a see, thank you. Like a room two, three, seven thing. Like, well, this means this just because a guy, you know, a director, of Jordan Peele's stature and what he's done with his first two films, I think a lot That's of what people happens, are, so. it's like the Shyamalan effect. You're yep. looking for the twist and you want to, right. right? So I believe that some people overanalyze it and I believe sure. that on the other end of the fence, people didn't even look into it. Like the first time I saw it, I thought it was more straightforward than anything. And I still do, but Same. I also yeah. can pull things out of it. And it's, you know, I, I, I it's cool with the, the clouds not moving and all that stuff and they notice it and <laughs> the setup and I like the little um <laughs> the little nod to Hills Have Eyes, uh talking about Jupe's kids and all I can think about is Papa Jupiter and, and those are his kids. <laughs> you know what I mean? It is mink coat. You know? <laughs> um the sunglasses that night sequence I think is freaking cool and creepy. Ultimately, I, I it's it's a it's a story that I like. I I, I it's my type of stuff when I like alien stuff. I always have. It's just something that, that that's scary to me. So I, I go to it. And I, I, I do confess that I get a little bit confused in the third act with some other stuff goes on, even though I've seen it like three times. I still can't 100% get into the science of it or what they're trying to do. But that's okay. That's, it just might be dumb me. Dumb me and that's okay. I, I can live with that sometimes. But <laughs> I, love, I love the look of the antagonist and I love the heart of the characters. And... That's what you want in a movie. And where they go within the third act, even though I may not get everything, I appreciate everything that I'm seeing on the screen. And that's good enough for me. So eight out of 10, he's still three for three, but I think that this movie is not on the level of the other two, but that's just fine. Okay. Number 12, the innocence. Okay. Um, such good freaking child acting here. Uh, another foreign film. I forgot where it comes from. Is it, is it Sweden or is it? Um... I, I believe so. I believe okay. it's Sweden. Shit, I was thinking okay. Norway, but yeah, you could you could be right. <laughs> Maybe. So I, I get confused, you know. Uh, I check. think the stuff going on with the children, the the, the sisters and their dynamic, mostly the way uh, you know Anna's getting pinched by her sister, and and then we see her character. She comes in and she's kind of probably jealous of the attention that she gets because you know they have a, a special needs child and and she's not so she kind of you know maybe lacks some attention is what i get out of it which is common in childhood you know she steps on the worm she puts the glasses in her shoes she just kind of has like she you think that she's a little bit of a badass but then you see when she meets somebody else maybe she's not so much of a badass because he's more of a badass and he's going through his things in his home too and all the children that are in this apartment uh, get together and they realize that together they they can have these powers because they have some strength in numbers. And there's a, there's a nice power struggle. I think that Ben is ultimately a piece of shit. And, you mm -hmm. know, it, it, and it happens. <laughs> What's the reason for that? Maybe we're led to, to find out why. Um, you know, it's just really cool. It's just a really cool movie. It's almost like something that you would see like a Stephen King type uh, plot in a way, you know, with, with people and, and powers awakening and stuff, but just, but just done differently. It looks really good. Another one, most of the movies on this list, not every one of them, but most of them technically do it for me. They're, they're shot. Well, you know, they're just, they have that going for them. And this, this one has that in spades. I, I don't want to get too much into the one thing. Cause for me, 
this is when you really find out what a piece of shit he is and how she's like, well, okay, maybe I shouldn't have done that. And, and it, it is the single most, ah, that fucking scene. I've never had a scene affect me that much in my life where I was disturbed. Huh. Then, yeah. Then that scene <laughs> in this movie, it, I, I can't watch it again because of that. I have to mute it and freaking look away for two minutes because of what happens with the, with the, with the kid, Ben and what's her name. And, and you know, what happens with the, uh, the cat, it was just fucking it's horrific because you know, things like this have happened in real life. Of course they have people do shit like that. And it's just fucking, it was the most disturbing people talk about disturbing movies and disturbing scenes that is bar none. The most disturbing thing I've ever seen on film. So that is that. I'll say that about that. But I'm not going to let it hurt the film. It's just that I don't want to look at it again. But but it still impacted me. I was like, oh, my God. It fucking, whew. That was rough to see. So cat lovers, if you haven't seen this, when you see a cat and when you see them walking upstairs, just fucking stop and look away for five minutes, please. Just you'll thank me later. Um, but, yeah, it's really cool. I love the way the dynamic of all the children, how some can feel what the others are feeling, how Aisha can feel the shoe pain that's going on with Anna. And their relationship and what happens later on. And I don't want to give anything away, but a very good movie. This is the kind of movie. And we get dead kids in it, which, come on, got to love dead kids. You know, kids getting killed. So <laughs> Dead kids and dead cats. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, there you go. What yeah. a combo. But uh, <laughs> hey. if you haven't seen it, I think some people may like it more than me. I used to have it rated higher. And on the second watch, it came down a little bit. But still, I still think it's a, a real quality film. And that's Innocence. It's an 8 out of 10. Okay, number 11. I almost didn't watch this because of what C, what C told me, but I think Uh-oh. I have a different take on this one. <laughs> no, no, no. It isn't that you didn't like it. You just didn't consider it necessarily horror, maybe. And I, and, but the way I saw the film, I kind of interpreted it different. And uh, it's called What Josiah Saw. And, man. Oh, man. I, I, I love Dave, it. Be, be, I, this was one I was trying to get to the rewatch and just didn't get to it. And I was so pissed oh. because I saw this early on and I know this is one you have to rewatch, but please. Yeah, go ahead, please. I'll tell you, oh. I love the format. It was just so, off my list too. Sorry, man. I, I'm interrupting too, but no, it, okay. it just missed my top 22. So damn. Davis said a few here that have that should have been in my 22 to 11 and just didn't. And they were there sometimes. But yeah, so right. uh, This is hurts to leave some of them off, you know, but it it just it just speaks on the year, honestly. So that's cool. You know, we have all these choices, but I I love the format of the movie. I love the way it plays out with the different like chapters and, and focusing on the different characters. Robert Patrick is great as always. Uh, <laughs> the stuff we see with the, um, you know, between the father and the son going on there. And then later on with the, the boy at the store when he goes there and the way it's all answered later, the way it all comes together in the freaking third act. I think it's great. At first in the beginning, I think it's going to be like a, a movie, like a frailty, like something like a little, mm. not that frailty is a simple movie, but more of a simple concept like it's been done before and i talked to the mother who's passed away and and and, an angel came to me and said this i'm like hmm where's this gonna go but no it goes someplace else and it isn't something that we haven't seen before but it's the way it's laid out the whole thing with eli the other brother and the gypsies is a great chapter when they go in his backstory it's almost a little bit like a tarantino film in a way just the way some of the the dialogue is and the way some of the stories told and you know, the method of it, everything that's going on with that missing girl is really cool. But I think it's horror all the way through because the, the fortune teller talking about Eli when he goes there and she's like, you're the reason why she burns. And like they go into that other, you know, she sees that there's something going on there. And then where it goes in the freaking third act and everything with Mary and the whole Mary May I thing and going back to see the father and the brothers because they want to sell this house and they haven't been there. And these tragedy things happen. Then things are revealed revealed and it's like um it's it's cool but twisted revelations in the climax and at first i was still guessing and i kind of am a little bit but ultimately i think where the answers that we get are like wait a minute they have a pretty solid story here that this is what happened and the abuse came from here but what they show at the end there's a couple scenes and i'm like wait a minute here this is freaking more evil than i thought now and to me, that's what hit me hard. And I'm just going to leave it at that. It, it, it's another 
you know, I'm going to go back up. It's an eight and a half. I'm going to give it an eight and a half out of 10. I, I was back and forth with that rating. Not that it That's matters true. all that much, but I think it's great talking about it. I want to watch it again. And I think that if you've seen it, uh, maybe watch it a second time. I think it, there's, there's more to it. And it, you might draw different conclusions that are pretty, pretty messed up shit. So that's it. What was I saw eight and a half. And, um, that's that. Excellent. Cool list, Excellent. Less surprises in there that I expected to see a bit higher actually. Yep. So that, that, that's interesting to me. And, and again, if anybody is, uh, like you, you well know that I'm going to breeze through this list, uh, and <laughs> probably faster than my two cohorts, which is fine. I'm notorious for it. I just, what I do. Well, um, see, I so, did that the other year. Yeah. I did that I, I, either last year or the year before where I just named them. And then you guys <laughs> talked about it. I was like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. And you know what though? It, it, it's great the way that you get into them. There's a couple that are on this list that, um, that there's no question that I want them on the list, but I, I don't actually remember everything because me I, I saw it well, i didn't get back to that rewatch but there's no question i wanted on my list as a representation of a film that stood out this year so I'll, I'll explain it when i get to it but i'll start off with uh my number 22 which is halloween ends again i w- i liked it i i didn't love it i i liked what we got i thought it, we've talked about it on the show as dave mentioned earlier uh it's a seven out of ten for me but i wanted to represent it on here because i thought they took some chances and it was what maybe really what I was expecting, but I wasn't offended by it. Um, the score, as Dave mentioned, I thought was great. It, it was a nice carryover. I do think that it felt like a rinse repeat of the other two, which you would expect. It's part of a trilogy. It's by John and Cody. Uh, so I wasn't as high on it as I was the other two, but that's not a bad thing because it's it, it's what you'd expect from Halloween. And I agree with Dave. I didn't need the, the, the massive showdown that everybody was expecting because we had it. And instead what we have is them dumping the body into like a, a, a meat grinder, if you will, but it, it, it's of course a steel grinder. And I thought what a great way Like, if you're not going to decapitate them, which they slit his neck and, and practically have to, they just destroy the body completely. So the only way evil can come back is by a reboot uh, right. and ignoring it or through a, a TV series and ignoring it or truly having evil never dies. And the mask is, of course, the, uh, I, I don't know, it's absorbed the evil, if you will, or whatever it may be, which is not new, but I could see it going that route. The Innocence is that my number 21. Oh, I'll give that to nice. Dave. I actually jump, juggled this around a little bit. Um, it was just off the list uh, probably up till yesterday. It's it's 21 again. Great child acting, Dave. You you said it. The horror. It's a it, it's more of a leisurely paced film, not horribly paced, not boring, but the, it's just about the evil that could come out of finding out that you have these powers when you don't know what to do with them and you're too young. Uh, you're not mature enough. And and again, we've seen it where it's happened where you might be mature and and power, you know, come with great power comes great responsibility and whatnot and just how it could go bad and wrong. And yeah, it's, it's a very, very interesting movie. It's Norwegian. It actually is from a multitude of countries. I think co-produced by Sweden, Norway, et cetera, et cetera. But the actual language spoken is Norwegian. So, cool. um, but yeah, definitely, definitely up there. I totally agree with Dave. And that was a, that, but I, I gave that a, a seven, in a half out of 10. Um, my number 20 is Bones and All. Uh, another nice. watch that I just got to this week. This is going to be torn. I, I can see people absolutely hating this film. And that, hey, that's fine. It's funny. My wife tried to read this book and was just so put off with the fact that they tried to sell the fact. Because, um, again, the way she didn't, she she stopped reading it. But the way it was presented in the book, at least to the point where she was, wasn't that they were, there was any sort of supernatural aspect or anything. They're just cannibals. And she says, well, how can a cannibal, especially a young kid, eat someone whole, as in bones and all? And the, and so it just was annoying to her because I guess they hadn't gotten to an explanation or maybe it was straightforward in the book. I don't know. Didn't read the book. But the way it's presented in the film I thought was something different and I tried to explain it to her. And I think she said, I think they made a little bit more sense with it. Uh, this is the guy that directed Suspiria, uh, the remake. Yeah. 
Um, Guadagino. Yep. So a lot of people thought that, you know, his artistic approach here was not needed or or was just a mask for essentially a, a, a like kind of a drab uh, story. But I liked it. I thought the leads were engaging. I, I liked the kind of um, lighter feeling. It didn't seem so cinematic. Uh, it just felt like kind of grounded. And I was thoroughly nauseated with the idea of them wolfing down on a person that just died. And it's so weird. I've seen so many zombie films that are the dead feasting on the living with very little problem with that. Yet the sequence, which was not even overly explicit, was of living people feasting on the the uh, dead. <laughs> and it, it was nauseating. Right. Wow. <laughs> I, good good, good yeah. observation. Yeah, because it was nauseating. Right, but yeah, why? That yeah. scene, it's solely. And again, the yeah. way they interact, the old, my maybe one quibble I will say is I don't know if they needed, and again, maybe they're following the book and they had to make sure that they, they kept this to, to uh, you know, that quota of what to include in the book so that uh, the readers of the book weren't disappointed, per se. But again, as a movie watcher, I didn't, I don't care about that. Just give me a, a film to, to enjoy. And is reintroducing Sully in that like kind of before the third act, I thought maybe they didn't need that and just have them as a uh, a character that she uh, interacts with at the beginning and you're not too sure of them, only to know that maybe he'll come back in a play, but we don't necessarily know because of the way it's done as a road movie and whatever. And then of course, where it goes at the end. So you don't want to see the progression. Like he comes off well, one way no, in the beginning. The and, progression, and, that one you know scene, what I mean? Uh, the one progression scene where it just seems to show back up that could have been explained at the end. I've been following you the whole time or whatever it may be. I don't know if we actually needed him to show up, but I guess it's another, I think that scene, I, I get it there. You know what I mean? Cause it's kind of like he, he goes from one to 100. Yeah, I, I, you're right. Like you really, you're not sure of him, but that scene cements the fact that he's not quite right, but maybe we don't need that c- cementing of the fact that he's not quite right. Cause the setup was enough to be him creepy enough, but really enjoyed the movie. Looking forward to seeing it again. I, again, I don't think there, there might not be enough answered for enough people here. Cause I do think they, they lean on the fact that these, they almost substitute vampire for cannibal in a sense. I'm not saying they didn't, they, these people can die though. So they're not totally supernatural, but I think the ability of what they can do in, 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 in the terms of feed and, and again, chime in if you've seen it or if you disagree or agree. It, it seems to be a little bit more supernatural because when they do get into the discussion of bones and all, it seems like it's done by someone that's not actually even one of them. Well, and is it true? It, How about that? Yeah. Sure. Does it really exist or does that guy just put that in their heads because he's kind of off himself and he, he almost like he wants to come off threatening. Maybe bones and all can't be done because see how mad she gets at the time. She's like, ah, yeah. you're full of shit. And then she fucking leaves. She doesn't like anything he has to say. So maybe bones and all doesn't truly exist. I think uh, yeah, and you might be right. I thought it was just disgust that this guy, she has to do it because she has to feed to, to live. And it, it, it's right. part of her. Whereas like, he's just a murderer. So I thought she was just disgusted at that fact, but maybe there's more to it. But that's one of the creepiest or haunting, most haunting scenes is when that guy, the other guy, just starts running after them and they're backing, they're trying to escape, and he's just yeah. running towards the car. It's like, holy shit, that was that got me. It, it's definitely more subtle, um, I, I think, anyway. But again, I critically, critically, I think this has been torn in both directions. But I was, I was very happy with it, uh, and. If this is uh, it was seven and a half out of ten. I knew it had well. to be a book. Yeah. Uh, Did you? Yeah. <laughs> it, it seemed like a movie that was yeah a book. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's good to know. Which my wife couldn't get through. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, my number nineteen is Smile. Uh, again, I, I've, I've mentioned it twice now on the show already. Where I watched it, it was way more serious than I was expecting, which I actually was that that was uh, what I think I liked about it, uh, and. Like again, I'm more I'm more intrigued by the fact that this guy made a short film, two short films. One of them was like the catalyst to to be turned into the feature that was Smile, and that's it. I don't know his history if he went to film school or not, but this short film was shown at a uh, a film festival, Southwest Film Festival, and he ended up getting the deal to make Smile from that. And and it was the biggest hit of the year horror wise, if I'm not mistaken. 
if oh, I'm not yeah. mistaken. Okay. I believe so. Financially. I mean, it, wow. it, 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 it killed Halloween ends, wow. I believe. I, I, if I'm not mistaken, it, was over, it made over $150 million. That's cool. So I could assume we're going to get a follow-up to that, which doesn't merit, like, why I like it. I'm just saying it, it's interesting. And I, I actually was, I thought it was going to be more kitty horror and I wasn't too sure. I like the marketing campaign surrounding it, but I just wasn't too sure about the movie. I thought it was going to be quite different from what I got. And I get what Watson said. Watson. Watson. Watson said, holy fuck. Uh, Watson said earlier, where you figure maybe for, for script convenience, they had her do things that you you would have liked to have seen done differently, but again, a minor quibble. It it it, oh. it, it didn't change it like yeah. See, like, I'm I, yeah. I'm with you about that. It is a minor quibble for me too. And I'll tell you what I did like to build off something you said because you know, I don't know if we'll have an opportunity to say this again. Was that this wasn't you said you were, you were thinking this is gonna be like you know kitty teen horror. And I like yeah. that everybody's in their thirties. I'm yeah. sort of just listen. I'm not yeah, at a point yeah. where I really give a fuck about what teenagers are doing, you know, I just do like, so I like to see the evil afflicting, you know, just adults who are set in what they're doing in life and it's affecting them. And we get to see how they would deal rather than just a bunch of fucking kids, you know, who are actually 30 yeah. playing kids, you know, I'm, I, and I thought this. that was what was going to get. I thought that's what we were going to get to be honest, yeah, because same. I, I didn't really know much about it. And so I was, I was pleasantly surprised. And I think that's what helps sell it. Uh, and yeah, I'm, you know there's going to be a sequel. It's inevitable oh, yeah. that we're getting a sequel. And I'm actually would I'm going to be I'm not a, I, against sequels. If anybody knows, I I am totally say cool with it. Re, yeah, or yeah, that and the girl Maybe. that plays yeah. the girl that's on the cover, I believe, and the girl that comes into her office at the beginning is the lead of of the short as well. Oh. And she okay. so check out the short. It's on YouTube. I will. Uh, and and she's great. And and I think we'll see a lot more of her in the future. That visual. See of her uh, and Dave of her smiling oh. in the dark. That like oh. I actually had a dream about that uh, like a week ago, huh. like looking off into the dark in my kitchen from my living room. And I in my dream I saw that and I was like I kind of sprang that up. That image, like, oh, shit. <laughs> the image of her smiling wow. with a slit <laughs> neck is <laughs> haunting. I'm like wow, like they they there's a lot to like here. Yeah. Um, and again, seven and a half out of ten, but I'll probably that that could change over time. Um, and now I get to my number uh, 18, which is Prey. Uh, Prey, I could, took off my list because uh, I'm like, you know, maybe it's more action focused. I'm like, no, fuck this back and forth with the Predator series. It's an alien. It's hunting. There's blood. And and you know what? It It's fucking part of this universe that I think it's still a monster movie. Monster movies could fall in that horror category easily as we've no, as we know, and it's no question the best sequel uh, in the series. I liked I liked what they did with it. It's there's some great great atmosphere and sequences there with with fog and smoke and trees and it's just I thought that they really just took the essence of the Predator Hunter and then just put a good adversary towards it, like where where you saw it like from where Schwarzenegger uh, fought them again, it was, I feel like that was more action oriented because it's Schwarzenegger fighting them. And here they just take a totally different approach. And I think it's the, the way that they went, I, I think actually fits more to horror than the original. Again, I'm sure it's not on either one of your lists. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's not on Dave's. Don't know if it's on Watson's, but a pleasant surprise and definitely the best sequel uh, in the series. I like and it's an eight out of ten. Too. Yeah. Eight out of ten, right on. Eight out of ten. Uh, my number seventeen uh, is Deadstream. Again, uh, it was mentioned by Watson earlier. I, I again, eight out of ten. Great found footage movie, in my opinion. I really liked it. Like this was like, I wasn't expecting anything from it. It popped up on Shutter. I'm like, ah, oh, let me put this on. Uh, and again, immediately, Dave, my first thought I was like, ah, oh, fuck, it's found footage. But the way that they play <laughs> around with it, with yeah. him being. Because again, I, I, that's my mentality. As much as I've come around on it, it's not. If I, I, I'm not excited out of the gate for it. It's got to win me over. And I love the way that this guy was like, kind of like, um, well, he was like a 
like a YouTube influencer or some guy that made these videos and they're stupid kind of jackass. He's stunts and whatever and got a following, did something that was offensive and and got canceled in a sense. And this was his movie to come back or his move to sort of come back. I love it. It's a husband and wife team that made it. Uh, and that I respect as well. Not everything lands, but more. It was just so thoroughly enjoyable to me. And so batshit, and the comments, not just the line that Watson said earlier, and a lot of the dialogue there is it's funny. Uh, the comments that you see from the from the viewers that yeah. are supposed to be like us that pop up on screen are fucking gold. The writing here is top notch, and I don't think it gets enough credit now because a lot of people put it on whether or not they like him. I'm not sure if they his character is a little bit despicable, but whether or not he sells it as an actor, I thought he did fine. Yeah. I thought he did fine. He pretty much has to carry the movie, and it was thoroughly enjoyable for me. Loved it. A standout, um, an, an eight out of ten. So nice. Brings me to sixteen, which is nope. Again, strip back any meanings or 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 like uh, like the deep dive in, in, into nope. Just from an enjoyment stand standpoint, I thought he knocked it out of the park again. I, everybody was shitting on this film, so by the time I saw it, I'm like, I, I try to erase that going in, but you just can't help. When, when you see it online or, or, or you hear things and we put it on and the whole family just enjoyed it. It reminded me, I'm not saying again, I think I brought it up on the show and I, please, I'm not saying it's Jaws, but it reminded me of that sort of whimsical kind of just, it's a monster movie, but there's adventure and action. You, I liked the characters. I, I didn't know anything. I had a problem with Kiki. I don't know what the problem would be, but I, I don't know. Don't care. Everybody was on their A game here, I thought, and it, just from an enjoyment standpoint, it was shit tons of fun. And then you can sit back and rewatch it and pull back the layers and, and read into it how you ever want. Uh, but just from an enjoyment standpoint, I really, uh, it was, it hit all the marks and it was eight out of, eight out of 10. Yeah, I have the same rating, C. This one barely missed my list. It was one of those I just kept toying with it and going, are you on the list? Are you not? It ultimately didn't get there, but I agree with everything you said. I was one of the people that just watched it at face value and enjoyed myself. Great time. Yeah. And I'm not saying you like, again, I think because it's Jordan Peele, everybody's going to, it's their temp peel to away wanna, the layer. <laughs> yeah. Pull back the, the curtain and see what, what's yeah. there. And I think one of the things I really liked about it, well, one thing I found funny was this video uh, came out well, like a big YouTube like a uh, video came out reviewing it before the movie had been officially released. And it used the word, it kept using the word spectacle. And that would have been the first video out and a very popular one that has like, you know, from like, I don't know, Looper or Screen Rant or something like that. Uh, one of the big channels. And then I would hear yeah. all these reviews afterwards that would use the word spectacle. Like they it's, came up with it. I'm like, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Nice. I, Imagine I, I just I saw, said that. I saw the popular video uh, yeah. Just like you did, you're this not fooling It's about me. spectacle. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. uh, you know, I, in my opinion, uh, <laughs> you know, the day after Thanksgiving is the most uh, popular shopping day of the year. And, <laughs> and you know, yeah, it's funny that, that well, I think a lot of people do that anyway. But I also love that they have the filmmaking aspect in, built into the movie, which is always mm -hmm. fun for me too. I, I do like that. And you've got some guy that 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 they've hired on and, and whatever, and just the the. Just even like the build from security cam to to wanting to to get that, I I just thought it added another level and to the yeah. to the film. And it, again, like I thoroughly enjoyed it, and that's just from a straight lace take it as it is standpoint as well. Yeah. Uh, no deep dive, uh, yep. but you can do it. Number fifteen. Uh, I didn't know how this was received. I know this was on a lot of people's. The original was on a lot of people's top ten list, and I liked the original. Something about this, Dave. I know you said it kind of turned you off. It's Satan Slaves Communion or wow. two or whatever it is. Oh, I'm I, surprised. I really enjoy this movie. It's long. The, I again, I don't know how. I guess every movie wants every horror movie. Let's say I think its goal is to scare the viewer. I I, I think what and again how they do it will differ. This. I think one of the things about this movie is how gleefully it wants to scare the viewer. And I'm not offended by it. I, it, it there are <laughs> jump scares, but there's haunting imagery and just the camaraderie. I just love, I love the fact that it was a, a, a high rise or, or uh, yeah. and they're trapped there by the storm and, the, and it's different families and different and whatnot. I thought that added to it. Plus you get some history, uh, how, how we got there. Really surprised by this film. It was just, uh, and again, so giddy about how 
eager it was to try to scare. And I think it was successful in a, in a, in a, lo- in a lot of its uh, images. I didn't dislike so, it. I didn't dislike yeah. it. I just was, I was yeah. very high on the original. I think, yes. Yeah, comparatively, that's all. Yep. Yeah. Same, same. And again, it was an 8 out of 10 for me, and I, I yeah, I, yeah, nothing, nothing else to say other than uh, check it out if you haven't already. Nice. Uh, number 14 is a, a slasher film that really won me over. Uh, I, I, again, wasn't expecting much from it, didn't know what to expect, didn't see anything about it. It's called Sissy. Yes, uh, eight out I of knew 10 you were going to say Sissy. Oh, I didn't yeah. see this. Bad. Oh, you didn't? Yeah, you no. should. It's yeah. good. It's good. And okay. And above all, nice. Great fucking kills. Yes. Great fucking, fucking gory kills. kills. Thank gory you. Gory kills. <laughs> and th- if that's what you're looking for in your slasher movies, which I, I think should be a nice component, yes. then check it out. Um, female killer yeah. again. Love it. Yeah. Female <laughs> killer, which is not giving anything away because they they no. they established that right from the get go. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's on. I can't even remember if it's on Shutter or not. It is. It's out yeah. there. Check it out. It, it's definitely worth seeing. I've already written down. I think I've got five five movies to watch from what you guys have put out already. So there will be a post <laughs> a post 2022 viewing uh, of of some of them. So <laughs> yeah, definitely check it out. It was a really fun slasher. Not my only slasher on the list uh, by any means, but uh, well worth checking out. Number 13. I couldn't believe how much I enjoyed this movie. This probably was at the 10 spot at one point. And it's Orphan orphan First Kill. Like Watson, I am shocked. <laughs> who asked for this movie? And who expected it to be any good? I loved it. I, th- I was just like, <laughs> this is thoroughly entertaining. And the only way you can do a prequel, I thought it lended, yeah, there's, you know, at the end there where they're like, where they're hanging. I, I, I was like, okay, well, yeah, I, I guess it's to be expected. But I wasn't disappointed with it. From beginning to end, and gory kills. And mm-hmm. she's chanting. And it, it, it's just, and it's upsetting. But the twist, I or the twists, yeah. I actually liked. Same. <laughs> oh yeah. I thought I good script right in here. Good script right in here. It could have been lazy, I, right? Oh, they could have been lazy and put her been. yeah in another. Because remember this, they spoke upon it in Orphan that she had done this once before with another guy. They said this. It was it was yeah. revealed. So I thought this was. And again, I'm not going to spoil this movie, but what I pictured this movie being was just okay. Let's put her in this place and let's get the story of her in this house or whoever yep. this person is. And, yeah. and I'm not saying that's not, not what we got, but we got it in a different way. And they were clever in, in the execution and, and yeah. the the twist, if you will. Yeah. And that's yeah, exactly. What you in, a, yeah. in a sequel prequel movie, just a, in general, like. Forget a sequel, prequel, just in a film. And how did how they manage to do this? And who was asking for this? It doesn't matter. Right. We got it, and it was where, thoroughly enjoyable. Where the hell did this come from? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> See, and, yeah. and just 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 to put this out there, just uh, I is, imagine you know you're in the movie, you're one of the characters in the movie, and it's particularly you're Julia Stiles, and your long lost daughter Esther shows up, and you're you're sitting there going, huh. <laughs> That's yeah. all I'll say. Yeah. Huh. yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. It's That's so cool. Yeah. yeah. You know that happened uh, in real life. Yes. Well, well to a degree. There was yeah, no what, murder involved. What but... was that documentary? Yes, the, uh, the imposter. Yes. Okay. It, it's actually I think half documentary, half kind of like dramatization, if I'm if I'm not oh. mistaken. I think yeah. it was pretty Maybe, trash yeah. when I watched that, but yeah, I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, th- yeah, great. I was I was very happy with it. Uh, number twelve again, one time watch. I, it had to be put on here though. I didn't know where to put it on. Maybe it should have been a bit higher because of it, but it's an eight out of ten, and it's the menu. Uh, again, not what I was expecting. I thought it was going to go down one avenue, which it's a big year for cannibals. It seems to be, and I thought that's where we were heading with this movie, uh-huh. and we don't head that way. I'm sorry if that's a spoiler, but it, it it's a totally different piece and i was very happy with where it went the only thing i would say is um the switch from i will i I, i'm going to use just basic terms but it's uh, just to simplify it from possible victim to to hero uh for one of the characters is maybe a little abrupt 
uh, without as much explanation as you want, but it's not a movie that overstays its welcome. In fact, I feel like it, it, in one case, this might have been a movie that could have used a little bit more character development with some of the some of the people there. You get just enough, I guess, to sell the movie, but it's almost like they 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 trimmed it down to the point where you're like, uh, like where Smile could have probably used another round of editing. Uh, the yeah. the menu probably could have used a little bit more expansion. Oh. And not hindered the story. Interesting. Uh, and again, for me to say that, because <laughs> I'm always like, trim it down, come on, meet the t- <laughs> like, get it down there. I wanted a little bit more. And like Jeffrey Fines, is it, it was a runner up for best actor, I would say, uh, oh, cool. in his portrayal here. I, again, I, I don't want to spoil it because I don't know if everybody's been able to check it out, but it was definitely a good ride. I was very happy with, uh, everything I saw there and, and the twist that we were given and the fact that it was a totally different movie than I was even expecting. Oh man, oh, yeah. this is one I was so bummed. I didn't see, we were going to review it. And I think some people did over on new horror movies. Dave, were you part of that? No, I was not. It was oh, too early. Yeah. Yeah. It was one of those situations where I was like, okay, I have just enough time to run to my local theater before, you know, like down the street, see it, jump on the mic, kind of like I did for uh, another movie. I've done that before, uh, you know, with their recording schedule over there. And then I was just so hung over that day. I was like, I'm going to sit this one out and play Dead by Daylight. Fuck this. <laughs> and, so I had, and, then, and then it wasn't in my local theater anymore. And now it's like playing like an hour and a half away. I was like, shit. So this yeah. is the big one of the big uh, holes in my viewing. And I'll be interested in hearing your take on it too. And I don't want to oversell it, uh, oh, sure. but it's I'm definitely zen, man. I'm it zen. Out. And hor- yeah. And horror, it, it's funny because it, it's horror, but I don't know if it's, it's horror enough for some, but I thought like, you, you can't deny that it would fit nicely into the, into the genre. It just probably, um, le- it was less horror than I was expecting it to be even. So put it that way. But I still, yeah, 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed it. Uh, by another 11, total surprise. Popped it on. It was on Netflix. Hey, why not? Checked it out. Loved it. Hell hole. Hell hole. I am happy to hear you say that, man. <laughs> I enjoyed that too. It's not on my list, but good Lord. was That was yeah. cool. Yeah, and again, I believe, I could be wrong here, but I believe it's from Poland. The Polish, like North, like South Korea, we've been yep. dealing with South Korean horror for years now, and it's been beautiful, good to look at, some standout movies. The Polish have been underrated, and they've been going to they, they've been going to the Polish have been underrated, quote for the show. Uh, they're going to <laughs> Netflix for the most part. They have they went probably to the same cinematography school that uh, South Korea went to a few years ago. Fantastic visuals. We had like I think Piggy came from that this year. Uh, you know, there's the nobody fucks in the woods. Those are like maybe a little lesser, but they look good. I think those ones came from both hellhole. Yeah. This one stood out. The fucking atmosphere. This is drenched in. You just feel like you're in dread, and it all builds. But it, I don't think it builds slow. I think it's a nice pace to 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 getting a little further into this investigation of where these these missing women have gone. And we learned pretty quickly what's happened to them. And we learned pretty quickly that the investigator that's been put on the case is not just there by chance. And then when the final few images come on, it is fucking scary and haunting and well worth the wait. And it just leaves you like a movie. You want to leave you with a sense of dread. And this movie leaves you with a sense of dread. I was really impressed by this movie and no, I don't, and again, it's not because no one's talking about, it, but it just seems like nobody's talking about it. So Watson, I'm glad you said it. I think Dave said he liked it as well, yeah, dude. but I really, yeah. really <laughs> enjoyed cool. it again, eight out of 10. And I did talk more than I expected to talk for my, my, <laughs> my top uh, films, good, but there though. you go. Uh, and yeah, check it out. That's on Netflix. So he's easily accessible for everybody. Man, the climax and the ending of Hellhole were freaking oh. top notch, man. Yeah. That yeah. just right. Over yeah, the fuck, over absolutely. the top. Yeah. So did I see all of your movies? I want to see because yeah, I wrote everything down this time because I wanted to be able to weigh in. By because I would I would always forget at the end, and I want to make a comment. I look, yes, yeah, I did see them all. I'm glad you like. I'm glad that yeah. you liked uh, Sissy. That's cool, good stuff. Yeah, but yeah, I did see them all, and I, I'm really I I well, we, we'll get to honorable mentions at the end, but I, I have movies. I'll say this: Orphan didn't make my top ten, but. And not even an official honorable mention because of its rating, but I still gave it a seven or a half. So 
yeah. still quite enjoyed it. You know, that's just it's been that good a year for me that yeah, you know that's that's not bad, right? <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, right. But yeah, it definitely took me by surprise, and I'm glad and, we all like that one. Yeah. And you know what? To be honest, I usually start at the seven range and get maybe the seven and a halfs by the time I get to my ten my ten spot. So when you think about it, I had um, one seven. And then it was two, three sevens and a halfs, and the rest were eights. Yeah, I had which all eights. Not too. really, which is not really. I'm not like I'm not normally that high, but right. when, when you just figure like those eights, like seven and a half to me is like even a seven. I know I'm gonna rewatch it, and I know we're right. gonna talk about honorable missions later, so I won't I won't uh, dive into that or steal anybody's thunder. We'll talk about that after. But I was just very happy with what, what I, what I saw there. And some of those can shuffle. Like, like we say, we have to make these lists because we're recording a show. Uh, and, and some of those can shuffle and, you know, go higher or possibly be bumped Dude, off. But see, at the end I, of the day, see, I was looking at some of the past lists that we we'd had and everything like that, or particularly, you know, my, my top of the years. And uh, it was funny. Cause I, I think it was uh 2019. I was just like, no, this movie's higher. No, this movie wouldn't even be there anymore. I was just looking it over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this is the new number one. I was just laughing about that. It's true. It happens all the time. Like, I had another evil as my number one the, the year it came out. And, yeah, I liked that movie a lot. But, I'm like, there's no – I can't imagine that being a number one. I don't even know if it made – I can't even remember, Dave, if it made my top 100 list. Probably not. Probably not. But anyway. Well, I've, I've had hmm. top – I've had top movies through that didn't make the top hundred list. Cause remember it's all for me, it's all tens and nines. So you know, I have a bunch of nines, you know what I mean? So uh, and I think that was a nine for me. So you're correct. Like saying? that's very easy. Yeah. Easily could have been it. left off, but yeah, yeah, man, here we go. Here's the meat and potatoes of the show. Here we go. Top yeah. 10. All right. All right, guys here at number 10, I've got Wormwood apocalypse uh, back in 2014 when Wormwood Road of the Dead came out. I was an instant fan. And here in 2022, it's it's exactly like C said about Orphan First Kill. I, I didn't know who was asking for this movie, but I, I had no clue that there was even a sequel in the works. I know that they tried back in 2017 or so in Aussie land uh, to make a TV show of Wormwood Road of the Dead, and it just didn't take – and anyway, what a surprise it was to find that this movie exists. All of a sudden, this there it was. Uh, it picks up where the OG leaves off. And what's better is that somehow, all these years later, they managed to keep the spirit of the first film intact for the sequel. Tons of zombie action, tons of blood and gore, good jokes, strong lead, even if it wasn't uh, the expected lead who's center stage here. They kind of did a swerve. And because I was like, wait, aren't you the bad guy from the one before? But they explained that. But I think what I love and what just endeared me to this movie so much was that uh, it, it really is a different beast narratively than most zombie movies. You know, zombie movies tend to have their, you know, ha small handful of reliable story templates. But this one does some truly original stuff, uh, you know, with regards to the purpose of the zombies and what they can do. And even things our, our protagonists can do against the zombies there there's some interesting stuff here and uh i just you don't see that uh in zombie movies like almost almost ever and there was a point where i almost threw middle fingers up and was like oh, screw this movie <laughs> it, it, but <laughs> but there was a point i felt it did two of the main leads from the og a major disservice but then the final scene of the movie writes that wrong and I was just like, okay, I can't wait to see where this next film goes. And I'm down for what it has in store for us. That's Wormwood Apocalypse, 8.5 out of 10. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Wow. Nice. nice. I did Watson, watch it. Put it on my list. You didn't? No. I didn't. Well, Damn this it. is the thing. And Watson never ceases to amaze me. It surprised me. He always <laughs> – this is the thing. I did not watch this either, and I'm going to tell you why. I – damn it. I, I gave the first yeah. one a seven and a half, right? But I've never had an inkling to rewatch it. And I've said it before that I'm burnt out on regular zombie flicks. Regular zombie flicks with hordes of zombies and whatnot. And like I like when we take those those shifts like we have recently, like uh it's Stains of Sands Red or mm. the other one that came out that there's there have been different takes on zombies over the last like five, six, seven years that have you know, not been like regular zombie fare, if you will. And for some reason, I, I can't get over the hump 
of not wanting to see regular type zombie films. And the first Wormwood, like I said, I enjoyed it seven and a half. I haven't had a yearning to go back and rewatch it. And when this one came out, basically what I was hearing was, if you like the first one, you'll like the second. And I yeah. did like the first one, but I didn't think it would be considered a contender just because of that reason. Sense. Wow. Right. So I was like, well, and then here's the thing, because I haven't seen Wormwood, the original in so long. Basically, everyone that I spoke about it said, well, you're going to probably want to watch the first one to catch up yep. before you go here. Back right? to back I, viewings, Dave. See, you oh, I didn't okay. I didn't want to invest that time. So but that's the problem. Though. Shame it, on it, me. It's it's <laughs> it's it's simultaneously a like a a, a, a strength of the film that you, okay, yeah, you, you know, the, the, how true it stays to the original, but then the fact that, well, you know, nobody has seen that original since 2014. So I guess I have to spend another hour and a half on top of the hour and a half here. And so right. there's that, that double edged sword there. Damn it. But still, I like to usually, Damn it. I like to see Damn everything. It. <laughs> it's true. I, I like to have been able to see, I saw everything on people's list. Yeah, and it's just it's just what this – what I loved about this and the original was just, you know, okay, you do get the horde of zombies, you know, you get that action and the comedy, but then there's this whole other subplot uh, that it just comes out of nowhere involving, you know, sort of medical this is and that, and I, I guess you could say zombie fusion. <laughs> that's like – and even psychokinesis, cool. that's like, what? What is going on here? That's why I, I dig this like I do, so. Right on, man. Right. No, that's cool. Shit. Okay, I'm going to have to definitely check it out then. I'm going to have to watch them both because now I'm curious. So do you prefer to the first one? Are the same or what do you ultimately? I think I have them both at an 8.5 and they work so well nice. as just one beast that when you do finally see them, it's like, yeah, even though they made this, you know, eight years later, it it feels like this, the same movie. Wow, nice. Wow. That's, that's high praise, I think, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Right on. Okay. Hey, now. Okay, so my number 10 has been mentioned, and it's uh, Luca Guadagnino's Bones and All. And Ooh, nice. Yeah. Awesome. I went on okay. a journey, actually, with this one. The first time I saw it, I was a little bit underwhelmed. I saw it at the, th at the theater. Now, granted, I gave it an 8 out of 10, so to call an 8 out of 10 underwhelmed is, is a little ridiculous, but... I think I went in with different type of expectations because of my love for uh, the Suspiria remake and everything else. And I knew it was going to be nice to look at and everything else. But my original takeaway was that I was, I felt like I was constantly waiting for something else to happen. And I don't mean that to sound negative. Obviously it's my number 10. So I've come up on it, but my first view of the movie, it's like, I don't want to say it moves slow, but at the same time, I wanted more instances. I wanted more to happen. And the second time I watched it, knowing what I was getting into already and everything else and being appreciative of the performances, everyone's talking about what's his name. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name. I guess he's a star. Timothy uh, Calumet. Is that his name? Calumet? I don't know. Yes, they're both great, the two leads. Oh, and that's what I'm saying. Everyone's yeah. talking about him. Yeah. I think she's great too. Taylor Russell is Marin and Mark Rylance is, is Sully. They're freaking all great, all three yeah. of them, honestly. You know? And a lot of people are talking about it, saying that it's more his movie than hers, as in Lee over over Marin. And I, I disagree. I think the people are I just up on this Timothy guy for some reason. I guess he's made a name doing some other non-genre films or whatever. But I think it's still her story. But ultimately, uh, I'll say this. The trailer park in the beginning, when it opens up and we go to that trailer park, that is the quintessential perfect looking trailer that is how they look in 2022 because i was reading meters in trailer park it, it is a hundred percent if you picture a trailer park that is it it, it is spot on a fr i bet they just went to an, an existing trailer park and took some shots didn't do anything it was supposed to be like 1988 at the time doesn't matter just go there and, and, and pan here's a couple shots of trailers this is the atmosphere boom done because it, it was spot on um I love that early shocker we get because you don't expect that to happen. Oh my see, god! Right? I know. I know exactly what you're talking about, dude. And I was like, whoa! It was jaw dropping. I was in the theater. Hello. Because I, because again, you know me. Hello. Um, yeah. you know me. <laughs> I go in <laughs> in the dark. I don't know what the movie's gonna be about, so I didn't know it had anything yeah. to do with what it has to do with. So I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. Beautiful. So yeah. you know, right? Um. And then you, you had the beginning, you flash forward to 1988. I love the 
she's 18 now and what happens with her father and all that. And it makes sense. And I love the cassette, te- cassette, the cassette tape uh, exposition method. Just yeah. a little bit at a time. And it makes sense that she only wants to listen to yeah, a little gets, at a time. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. She gets yeah. frustrated you know, and, and, and it upsets her. Okay. I'm going to stop. So I love it. it. They, they tie it into the narrative just perfectly. So exposition. Great. Uh, Mary meeting Sully is really cool. At first, you don't know what to think and everything else. And then you discover what you discover. And yes, Sully's off, but seems harmless. And everything that you said before about the uh, chomping down of the, of the, um, the, the recently deceased and how that happens is, is something to remember. And the stuff with that, the hair ties and all that other stuff is like, wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but I, I like the fact that she doesn't, he tells her that she doesn't need to, to eat that much because she doesn't need it the way he does. And she goes, well, cause you're still young. It hasn't developed yet. It seems like it makes sense. Like in something like this, you know, you're younger you don't need it. That happens with lots of things, you know? So I, I kind of dig that. And then I, how she, he, she meets Lee and, and they're the way she meets him in the store and everything and how their friendship develops. And then when they hook up with those other two weirdos, the one guy who's a volunteer and the other guy who, now that I think about it, I think he might be BSing about Bones and all. And he's just messing with them because he's just a little bit touched himself. And I think that's kind of cool. Yeah. I never thought about it till today. So that's actually kind of cool. And everything about her trying to track down her mother. That's what I loved about the first film. About the first, about even the first time I saw it. I didn't care about, you know, other things being maybe a little slow. The thing that always kept me hooked was us as the audience wanting to see what was going to happen if she was going to find her mother and, and how and what was going to happen. You, you're you on the ride as much as she is. You're like, okay, what's going to happen when she gets to it? And then when she does, not going the way I don't think, you know, we, we planned on it going, you know, as the audience. And wow, it just wasn't expected. And then what happens after her leaving one person, Marin I'm talking about, and then running into someone else, That, that I thought that was kind of interesting, the timing of it all. And then she cuts one of those people out. And then, you know, here's something else. That tape deck that she plays, I wasn't sure the first time. I'm positive the second time. I, I 100% you owned? had that freaking tape deck. One of many, I'm sure, in the freaking you're 80s. Like, you're like Vince on this show. Every time we watch a movie, Vince is like, I had that couch. And my dad had that van. <laughs> and we had that lamp. And now you have that fucking tape deck. A hundred percent I had it. The design, the way I do it, I was like, yeah, the second time I, I noticed for sure. So, yeah. Um, hell of a cast, like I said. Um, and a great ending. And oh, the man. way it comes Maybe, about, you know, it's I just want to add on to I'm so sorry. for. I, I am cutting Go ahead, off. Buddy. I, 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 no, I want to add on to it. Like, a great ending, but I do think the cli- it is a rushed climax. I just, I feel it like it could it. Yeah. I, f- I feel like it, but but then when you think about then it go against what I was saying before because with with who shows up and how it's all done it's almost like it almost has to be like that it almost has to be like idyllic life flipped around right. because uh, yeah, honestly how long could they have gone on trying to be normal people as they put it let's just go be yeah. people they said which is cool yeah. How how long could that have lasted? <laughs> they had to feed. <laughs> they did have to feed, so you know something's yeah. going to happen. And why not have what happened happen? It, it works out well. Um, as far as the last shot, I take that as the same thing I take in, in Devil's Rejects, or not even Devil's Rejects. That was obvious in Devil's Rejects. But the end of Lords of Salem, when it's when people are like, oh, so wait, this happened and this, and now she's happy again? I don't take that at all. I take that, what we see as the final frame is, that was just a view of the past. It was just an artistic choice that he wanted to do, and that's what I took. I believe that there is a character no longer with us, and yeah. I fully appreciate absolutely oh, right, yeah. 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 their relationship and how it develops into yeah. a love, and it makes sense. And her, she is fucking true blue, and I love her for it. Like Seriously, she gets mad about freaking certain things. Who shit on me for saying True Blue so much? You say True Blue way more I've than taken I taken it over. <laughs> I took it from you. I did. I made it mine. Uh-huh. <laughs> I made I, it mine. Again, I, I am so sorry for derailing you, but it's just, no, it's, I, I got shit on it, like, I don't know, 10 episodes ago for using True Blue over and you over. You know why? I think I, said it, I, th- well, I think I said it like five times in a row. That's <laughs> why. Like, yeah, five yeah. times like one episode. True Blue. True Blue. He said it more times than Madonna did in that fucking song. <laughs> 
you know? <laughs> yeah. Holy shit, this guy. <laughs> so, but she is true blue. She's a, she's a good person. She's a good person, and she doesn't want to do this. She's a reluctant participant in something that she was cursed with, if you will. She doesn't want to do it. She doesn't have the, the attitude that others do it. And again, he leave and says that when he first meets it, because everybody has their own rules. You know what I mean? But I love the fact that she gets mad about certain things. And then what happens when she meets her mother? And No, I'm making a decision. I don't want to be that. You truly do see her trying to maintain it. But ultimately, you really can't. The one thing that guy said was right. When they met those two weirdos and he tells Lee, he was you're like every other junkie I ever met. You think he got it under control. And you you just can't. If you have that craving... And it's just going to get more and more with age. You you can't control it. It's about managing it. And I almost wish we could see more of what's going to happen with her life. I know we never will. But that that's just the sign of a great movie. You wish you could see where the where, where the character goes. You know, because I, I don't know. Uh, she's a great character. Anyway, ultimately, it's an eight and a half out of ten for me. I loved it. Bones and all. Nice. My number 10 is a movie that I, I really enjoyed. But I think I, I overshadowed my enjoyment of it by comp- saying... It felt like just a total ripoff of the comic Crossed or the graphic novel Crossed. And I didn't. Oh, yeah. But you know what? I still really enjoyed the movie and I rewatched it and it's a shit ton of fun. It's an infected film called The Sadness. And you know what? It's super gory, like to levels that some people like. I think most of the people that listen to our show uh, would like. My wife would hate it. It'd just be too much mm. for her. It just would not be her cup of tea. But again, because of the fact that it, it is a cinematic version of Crossed, which I also loved reading and experiencing. I love that too. See, thanks for yeah. mentioning that, man. I've read yeah. those. Well, Almost all of them. Yeah. yeah. And you said, well, they'll never be able to make this into a movie. Well, this <laughs> is the movie. This is the one. And and although it doesn't go as far as maybe even the comic or graphic novel does. No. <laughs> it, it, does it does at least allude to a, a, a lot of areas that, the, that it did go. Uh, and... Again, just when you think you're done with zombies or infected, another one comes out. I actually didn't mind Virus 32 this year as well. I kind Agreed. of a different take. Yeah, I didn't course, mind yes. that. I, I, yeah. I, that was on my top 22 list for a long time. It just it just kept getting because I think again it was at that seven. I might even had it seven and a half, but I, I guess I think I, I guess seven and I just pushed it off. Um, that reveal but, with the boyfriend thing, such, yeah. I thought was great. Yeah. As soon as that happened, it went into a different stratosphere for me. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. And so, like, I, I it was on my list for the longest time, not top ten, but whatever. But the sadness remains, and it 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 definitely should be seen uh, and experienced. And again, eight out of ten. And that's uh, yeah. There's not a lot more to say because I think we did talk about it on the show already. <laughs> Fair enough. Right on. All right. Excellent. Everybody, we're at number nine, and so for me, my number nine, we we've uh, Dave just discussed it, bones and all. Nice. Uh, You've been movie quiet. stars. Okay. Yeah, man, this movie stars the girl from Escape Room. That's how I knew her. I was like, who the uh, hell is that? That's, yeah, right? Yeah. I skipped those. I told my wife after an end, I said, I know I want to watch it because she's in them because I like her. They're fun. I, didn't see the, I didn't see the second one, uh, but the first one is ridiculous but still fun. Uh, and, of course, yeah. we got Luca Guadagnino here directing, so this is already going to be elevating things. And, yeah, what we have here is something I couldn't have predicted by reading a synopsis alone, and I actually did not read a synopsis when I went to go see this. I went in knowing absolutely nothing, just that it came, just that I knew the director and that it came highly recommended. I didn't even know it was a novel. It makes sense. Feels like one. And what an experience. You know, there are shades of Anne Rice at work here as we get into what makes these eaters who they are. At its heart, this is a romance movie, but it also serves as a world-building story that illustrates what it would look like to be one of these eaters, if you will, traveling the American backcountry, searching for others like you, as well as, you know, for your own identity. And what hit me the hardest about this movie is the fact that the mere existence of our main character comes with a shit ton of moral baggage. Like, how can you eat innocent people in order to satiate yourself and still be good? You know, how can you yeah. move about the world like this and not be literal evil, even if you didn't ask for the for this curse, you know? Uh, because no one's asking to be eaten. So it's like, man, so, you know, sure, you can fall in love. Sure, you can search for a greater meaning. Sure, you can grapple with the creator about the nature of your very existence. But when it all comes down to it, you know, what is being if you deny others the ability to be and this movie confronts that uh, at times, and it's like, wow, it's it's 
It's a beautiful movie, hard to watch at points, and that that ending was uh, something else. I, I I felt that when when she, things happen and you know she's got to do what she's got to do at the behest of uh, Lee. He he makes a request, and I was like, yes. oh no yes. way. And I was the, yeah. Oh, I I that that that's gonna be seared in my freaking mind. And then like you said, there's that final shot, and yeah, it is a it is a a reflection of the idyllic past. And where, you know, things where things when things were the best and where, you know, you you wish you could you could be and where you you wish you could stay. And I have those own moments in my life where I, I, I don't I try not to get, you know, rose tinted about the things in the past and all this stuff. But there are times where, you know, I'm, I'm you know, nearing 40 now, you know, in my late 30s. And I'm, I, there are those times where I have those moments of that. Wind blowing on the hill and. The, and yeah. she's there and I'm there and it's like, whoa, yeah, that's that's not a thing. <laughs> that is not a thing. Uh, yeah. You know, and obviously I'm not, you know, like a, a down person. I'm also not eating people. Uh, but, you know, just like sometimes, you know, your mind goes to these places and I could feel that. And I, I got I got exactly what Luca Guadagnino was getting at, even if I don't know the novel. So I appreciated this movie. Nine out of ten. That's bones and all. I honestly think good good, uh, good review, and that's awesome to hear. I think it sounds like you took liberties. Again, not reading the novel, mm. kind of being uh, dictated the, the story that my wife was saying. Yeah. So it's interesting, but I think she read it because it was highly regarded. And God, she I never read a heard lot of this. novels, and I guess she was just turned off by it and, and whatever. So I think they took a little bit more liberties in a positive way with yeah. how the movie was presented. Um, again, I love how Sully does refer to himself in the third person because yes. that takes a special type of per uh, that adds to his character as well. But what do you think about him showing up for when he gets all belligerent with her, almost like he's showing up to save the day thinking he needs her. Like I, I could see why it's there in the movie, but I almost think that that almost makes it a guarantee like when I saw that scene, I'm like, well, he's coming back at the end. Where yeah, I I had I had wondered if they were going because you know when I read the Anne Rice books and you were right, you used the word vampire earlier, and this yeah. almost does have that feel like this could have been that. Um, but you know they're gonna they're they're probably like, oh, we don't need another vampire novel, so we'll go cannibal with yeah. with, with, a, with a little bit of a mild supernatural twist. But you're right, you know, I was wondering if we were ever going to see Sully again, and I remember thinking to myself, I I, I bet we will. But I almost hope we don't that he she learned what she needed to from him and can now grow with what he imparted into her life at that moment when she when he needed her or when she needed him. And now we go forward just. But, you know, yeah. It, it, well, it's yeah. it, 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 when he came back, it was like, OK, I sure it's fine. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. fine. It is fine. Yeah. But the look, the look when she's driving away and he's just staring at her, you know, yes. he's going to be back. You know, yeah. he's going to be back so that the scene, the scene is only almost to elevate. Like, uh, again, it's not necessary, but it's in the movie. So yeah. what? Yeah. I, again, it's a minor quibble. I don't know why I'm arguing it, but it's it's <laughs> just one of those things that I'm like, ah, if they didn't do it, you almost would have been like, I guess Sully's not coming back. And then it would have been even a bigger sucker punch for him. To creepy Sully with his eight foot long hair stem to, to come back into into their lives but yes anyway. and that reveal of, of oh, what's yeah. on the hair stem oh shit yeah wow. wow and how he finds out and that's when i come to terms with the fact that he's a bad guy and my wife convinced me of that when we we're watching the movie the second time i watched it with her and i said well i think he's this and this but i don't necessarily think he's such a bad guy he disconnected and he's never had that before and i know he doesn't mean to come at her sexually he even says he even says he's like you know, I, I'm with what's his name, you know, just so you know. And he goes, that's not the business I was talking about. He doesn't yeah. have a sexual. It's not a dirty older man thing. No. It's I, you just happen to be. Yeah. Right. It's just a connection. And she just happens to be her age. And he happens to be his age. And he hasn't connected with anyone because he's, he's a bit of an odd fellow. And on top of it, he has, suffers from the same thing that she does. So it's just like I see it. And he gets to the point where, you know, but now. I can't make excuses for him when I, I see what's on that freaking and that yeah. hair thing. I'm like, oh, there, you didn't have to do that. I understand maybe you're mad that, you know, she's with him and what's going on here, everything else. But damn. So and OK, I didn't expect him to come back. I guess that's where we differ when they had that that, that second scene, which I enjoyed. I just thought it was good character stuff for her to say, it's listen, like the C word. 
Well, that part was funny. Tyler turned me on to that, too. He goes, I burst it out laughing when that happened when I saw the movie. He was like, oh, I didn't. But now the second time I watched it, I did. I go, it is funny. <laughs> but to see him do that. But the thing is, I I don't know. When I took that as her, because she had already dismissed Lee at that point in in the story, and then she dismisses him. So I took that at the time of her dismissing everything that has to do with that lifestyle and not wanting to be associated with anyone else that suffers for her. So I didn't mm-hmm. think he was going to come back. I thought it was a character building thing. So I was wrong. But I also thought if there was going to be anything with Sully, I thought there was going to be a reveal about him being somebody's father. And that didn't happen. Oh, mm. Okay. Because there was a discussion earlier about somebody's father and everything else, and we don't get the whole story and everything else, and that's where I it thought was better it. That they didn't go that route; just kept it like the way, the way it was, like drifters and whatever. I mean, again, oh, yeah. it's it's interesting, but uh, cool. It could have been too predictable well, that, if that that were the case. I'm glad. Yeah. It, so it was your ten and your nine. Awesome. And my twenty. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and here's my nine, which is uh, definitely. Wait maybe, a minute! You skipped me. You're last. I thought you just went to nine. Oh. No, Watson what? just talked about bones and all, so I'm next. What didn't we just do tens? No. I'm, I'm what are the we, first what are we doing. We yeah. We're on we, nine. We, we, we did, we did you tens. You literally the first said nine. that's Watson's nine, and then here's my no. nine. No. I, what, oh my God. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. You even said it in the sentence. It was your oh, ten. And you're nine, and now here's mine. For whatever reason, I guess because you just went on a rant again. I just assumed you went, not realized you haven't yet. Sorry. Anyway, did you have a? Did you rate that a number, Watson? Yes, a nine out of ten. Oh, nine, nice, awesome. Okay, <laughs> okay. So um, here's my number nine. Now it's official, and this one is called Master. And I think this is the movie a lot of people slept on this year because I didn't hear a whole lot of people talking it. about. I slept on did it. Did you? But yeah, I didn't see it. Yeah, I'll the one you. that was on the one at the school. Yes. With the black the black lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Cool. I love the way things were portrayed here. Uh, the Lancaster witches and having a new start for for two of the of the, of the, the lead characters and the um, the performances. Regina Hall as um, Gail Bishop, who becomes the new master, and, and Zoe Renee as the new student at this uh, Northeastern University. And what I love about this is this is a movie where I truly see the message executed the correct way instead of being pounded over the head with it and taken from a realistic place. Watson, you're going to love this (laughs) because it's preach. It's not, it's, it's, it's some, you and I can relate to it because things Mm. are going on in it where you see um, I want to say casual racism. It, it, this seems to me more realistic than the way things are talked about by people as, as racism in, in, in community and the way that they're portrayed on film. You're not beat uh. over the head with it. And on top of it, you have characters from both sides of the fence on things, but it's mostly about the, Gail, who has be, just been named the master of the university. And, like I said, um, the girl Jasmine, who has just come into the university, and then we see um, there's a haunted room that Jasmine seems to be taking over, and they talk about, oh, you're going to go in that room? Because I guess there's been murders there before, or a suicide or something, and they say it's haunted. So we have her experience trying to fit in with this with this new crowd, and um, you know, being an African-American female, and then you have three of them. You have another one who is a professor going by the name of Liv and all having different uh, personalities and approaches about things. And now um, Gail is the first black master of the school. She has been named the master and it's never happened before. And, you know, awesome. It's a progressive move and everything else. But the thing is what they talk about here and where it goes, there's so much going on here that I can't get into it. So I'll try not to. This is a movie that I would love to have done. Seriously, I, I would love to do a full review of it because if I start talking, I'm going to sh- I'm going to talk for 20 minutes. So I'm going to 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 keep it basic. Uh, is somebody being singled out or not? Uh, the the one woman lived. The professor is having issues with the new girl, Jasmine, and she there's a line saying, "Well, you you assume 
that I'm not from the suburbs or something like that. There is just even stereotypes involved within their own culture. I'm talking about African American females and everything else are. What would you know about here. that? <laughs> right now, exactly. You see, you're like I'm surrounded by them. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and I had to watch this with my wife. I said, "Listen, what do you think? This is my take on it. What do you think?" You know, she was all, you know, she she agreed with what I was saying. She was, "This is, you know, a better portrayal of stuff." But this is, there's so much going on here. There is a line where they say it's not ghosts, it's not supernatural, it's America. However, yes, it is America, and yes, that line is true. But there are still supernatural things at hand here there is something going on and there is a reason for it and there's different things happening and i i have to kind of keep it low um you have an unsuspecting end for one of our three leads i'll tell you that which took me by surprise yep. and sure. where things are going which i really get and they're having these meetings because okay they're, they're having a meeting because one of the women i'm not even gonna get into it but i'll just say this amongst the staff at the school you have somebody who comes off kind of conservative and another one who comes off kind of liberal. And they're having the discussions about things. And you see all the way, the, the, their, their person. it's like real life. You see personally what they are by the way they talk and the things they reference and, and the, you know, the key words that they use and stuff, what they are going for and everything else without actually having to come out and say it. And I risk, because that's how it is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But then you get to a climax in the movie and – you see our lead, uh, one of our leads, I should say, uh, you know, Regina Gale, the new master, um, having a lot to say about things and saying, you know, I don't agree with this and this and that, and getting angry at the one. And then the other one saying, I'm not uncomfortable with this discussion, you know, and she's like, I don't give a fuck with your, what you're comfortable with. She told her, you know, and this is, I think you somebody, just told me. Yeah, dude. It's I somebody who, rep, who I know you're going <laughs> to like it because the way they, talk about these people which clearly you know one's one's on one side of the fence and one side yeah. is on the other and how ultimately no uh you're really not for you really don't understand you think you understand and you want to do this but you know what you're both fucking annoying and you're both being judgmental and you don't realize it without coming but but watson without coming straight out and saying it yeah, you may yeah. not another person may watch this movie and not take that out of it at all but mm. this is what i love about it it's layered and, and, and there's there's stuff going on you know, with the the curse of what's happening here, the reason for it, and ultimately there's a couple lines which I really love. And one says, she's not going to haunt me for the rest of my life. Another one is, don't worry, I'm not going anywhere, said by a certain character. And there's so much to the, those lines that, um, <laughs> you don't, you don't, you know, there's just a lot going on there that I don't know if everybody got. And then there was another line said by her, and she said, oh, what the hell? Damn it, I didn't write it down. But she's like, I I'm not your master. I'm your – oh, damn it. Bottom line is she's basically saying, I was just put here in a figurehead position to, to look good. Not because you truly want what's best for people oh. of color and everything else. And, and you're marketing yourself as – they have these commercials even. I am whatever the name of the – you know the places and of course they have to show somebody from each each you know different culture and everything else in the commercial to make it look a certain way and the way it's presented when <laughs> in real life that's that's really not it you're just trying to present things a certain way and that's just one aspect of the film and the other stuff is um the horror elements of it which are there and are to be appreciated and it's really good if you haven't seen it go check it out this is how messages should be conveyed when it comes to um cultural divide and and people of color and everything else i think that it's it's really extraordinary the more i talk about it, it's like i'm making myself getting higher on it but ultimately it's an eight it's an eight and a half out of ten and uh i really enjoyed it so you did see it yeah i did okay did yeah. you like it? I wasn't. I wasn't as high. It was. It was good though. I mean, I. It was. I watched it. I. I enjoyed it. It just seems to be the glut. It's in the area because I checked my list while you're talking. It's unfortunately in the area that once it became in the six and a half zone, I kind of didn't recategorize everything. It just sort of falls there. So it's probably not because where it stands right now. I, I. I noticed there's some movies that there's no way 
I like them more than that particular one that are mm-hmm. ahead of it on my letterbox. So there's no point to even give you my ranking. But no, I think no, I, gave no, it a no, six, no. I gave it a six and a half out of ten. Let me ask you this. Did you pull out of it what I pulled out of it at all? Yes. Oh, no. You, you Okay. You, yeah. You, it's all there. I, okay. I, I did think it wore it on the nose a little bit more so, but not Maybe. in an offensive way. But not – it wasn't offensively done because it still was important and they did do things that I wasn't expected, like with one of the leads and everything else. So like it, it was, yeah, it yeah. definitely uh, built on uh, built upon it. I saw a lot of movies that like brought on similar themes, not all the same, but there's a good madam that I think also came out. Um, right. Or and I'm guessing it was more out. on the nose. Like everything yeah. else. There's, there's, mm-hmm. there's a few movies, like there's all, I don't know if, again, there was a bunch of Shudder. And like I said, I was just watching one after another after another. So I never went back and gave it a second watch. But I watched it and it was good. Like I said, six and a half. But again, um, definitely check it out, Watson, because I think you probably would pull more out of it. And game cool. makes me want to rewatch it. <laughs> I, I will. Cool. Cool. That's the, that's the intent. Good. All right. So <laughs> um, now if we go from that one extreme there to mine, which is number nine. Uh, and it's the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Which is maybe awesome. more, a little bit more on the nose than just visceral, good old fashioned horror. But I actually agree with Dave. With I commentary. actually think, yeah, there it's yeah. It, it's it's not. Some people might view this as as saying, "Oh my God, it's it's trying to be woke." And I'm saying no. But it's I, I agree with Dave. Right. It's almost like yep. working against that agenda. Not necessarily working against it, but saying. It can't just be that simple. And we're not like one of the, like their main girl there is a victim of a, a school shooting. And so everything seems to be anti gun, anti gun. But at one point, I think she actually goes in to chase a character or get to a character that actually has access to guns. That was my favorite, and, one of my favorite scenes in the yeah. movie, see, where she talks yeah. to this 2A, you know, 2 a lover guy who's definitely on the opposite end of the political spectrum from her. And they have this yeah. human moment. Yes. yes. Beautiful. Yeah. Mwah. And, and I think yes. that's exactly it. So Dave, Dave nailed it there. So there's more to the movie. And I think a lot of people are like, like they're just looking at it. Oh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. First of all, bravo to Texas Chainsaw Massacre for getting A, all these movies out where Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th or whatever, have been dead in the water, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Right. And even Hellraiser up until this point, up until this year, dead in the water for the most part. I mean, because I haven't really given much clout or much views to the more direct video fodder that we had. And Texas Chainsaw kept bringing them out. And I've appreciated all of them, some more than others, even Leatherface. I liked Leatherface. Yeah, and it made my top 20 or whatever it was of that year, top 18 of that year. I think it was like number 18. Whatever. This one, I think a lot of people were like, oh, fuck, here, we're, the new one's going to come directly to Netflix, which has somehow become a bad thing. Yeah, no problem. Which has somehow become a bad thing. I'm like, uh, that's fine by me. You know, like, everybody's now thinking that's like the new director video. I'm like, I never expected the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre to get a theatrical release. And I was very happy when I saw it. In fact, I was so happy. And even with the, the jolty uh, ending which I don't think anybody was expecting. And it just comes out of nowhere to, to, to let you know that there is going to be another one. Uh, and I don't think anybody was shocked by it, but I'm definitely shocked about who dies and how they die and how they end up moving. The movie does not, does, do not hold back on the gore or the kills. And the, and actually has in the series first, an actual massacre. <laughs> to justify the title name. Right. So, I don't know. There's a lot of hits here and, Again, it might be dismissed as like, you know, maybe more lowbrow, but I, you know what? I think people are just undermining it. And I think it, it definitely has more to offer uh, and gory kills, which is all you can ask for from a movie called the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, or at least something, uh, something you'd want to hope that they will deliver upon. And they do here. So I was very happy with it again, eight out of 10 and definitely check it out again, easily accessible on Netflix. Oh yeah, yeah. brother. Hell yeah. All right, eight. Eight. Oh, yes, yes, yes. At number eight, I have got Pearl. Um, I have always been impressed with Mia Goth. Not to the extent that you are, Dave. I think uh, there's something a little, something going on there. But uh, I have always. <laughs> Creepy. <laughs> I, right? I have like always had a. Aww. <laughs> I, I love it when Dave She's does 30, love. you know. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, yeah. No, just, Come on now. But uh, uh, yeah, I've I've always had a lot of love for what she does, 
and this is almost certainly her best work yet. I don't know what's going on with Ty West, uh, but he's killing it right now, firing on all cylinders in a way I don't think he ever has. Even considering House of the Devil and The Innkeepers, which I I love both those movies, this right here is just he's 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 getting better and better, and that's that's amazing. Uh, yep. This Pearl is the story of a woman who desperately wishes that she had that all too elusive X factor, but the hard simple truth of the matter is she just doesn't have it. And that's what lies at the core of the story here. The idea that some people have it, some people don't. The rags to riches story, you know, the American dream is only as alluring as it is because most of the people born in rags stay in rags. The thing that is so special about a person's dreams coming true are all the people whose dreams don't. And in that way, Pearl is a special movie about someone who isn't all that special to the world. Regardless, she's played by someone who in true life does have that X factor, and that makes the story all the more interesting, especially when we get into, you know, the movie X, which, you know, is all about that directly. And, you know, this just this is this is that villain origin story that you watch X and suddenly you're like, I see. I see why you're so fucking pissed and why, you know, you get it now. Uh, you know, I think it was Dr. Shock over on New Horror Movies who pointed out that while X held true to the 1970s film aesthetic uh, that matches the time in which it takes place, Pearl, which takes place in the 19-teens, uh, borrows from the aesthetics of 1930s or 40s Technicolor Hollywood. And I think that was a good choice to go that route. I don't know how palatable, you know, a 1910s <laughs> film aesthetic would be to a modern right. audience as if Ty West decided, mm -hmm. let's make it just like a Charlie Chaplin movie. You know, it'd be like... <laughs> okay, this is cool. You know, I just don't know if this is what we're going for here. Uh, but yes, uh, and, and also I, I do. I guess I have to put it out there. Uh, I missed when I mentioned Mad God. Uh, I I give Phil Tippett best director. I I, oh, I, forgot, oh, nice. I, I, for, I forgot that we do that as we go. Oh shit! Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. And so I, that's only hitting me now because, and the reason I say that. So yes, Phil Tippett, uh, best director for Mad God, and I bring that up now because best actress, hands down, it's Mia Goth for her dual roles here in X and Pearl. Uh, I think a lot of ladies came out strong this year, just like a lot of directors came out strong this year. But uh, for me, in both cases, I think Phil Tippett did something 30 years in the making that nobody else uh, this year or, you know, or that I can think of has done with what he did with Mad God and the stop motion things is pure art there. And what she's doing here is pure art with these dual roles. I think a lot of ladies came out strong. Uh, but Mia Goth was like, no, but I'm the strongest. So there we go. Pearl, nine <laughs> out of 10 fucking loved nice. it. Awesome, man. Very cool. Good old Pearl. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. Dave Z, what, 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 uh, what, what do you got? All right. My number eight. Uh, okay. Here I go into another movie that's completely political. It has nothing to do with why I enjoyed it so much, but it, it does be, but I'm like, wow, dude, when I sat down and watched this the first time, I really dug it, but I didn't think it was going to make my top 10. When I watch it the second time, being along for the ride and experiencing it just as it was, wow, it, it, it was it's very heavy shit. It, it's freaking, it's so what I think I could see this happening in real life. And these are characters that do exist behind closed doors. And this movie is called Soft and Quiet. I didn't oh, see I this didn't one. Even watch this. Yeah. Fuck like another one to add to the list. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm writing it down. I will tell Chase you this, this. Yeah. Yeah. I think All he right. was iffy on it. Wow, I'll tell you, it freaking blew me away. The second time, I liked it the first time, but the second time, what an experience! It takes place in real time. It starts off oh, with. I love a, those. I love yeah, those dude. movies like that. Yeah. I, that's I, a good. That's a good. Good gimmick. I hate using the term gimmick. I like that w method of storytelling. Yep. Right. Uh, it, it's done so well, and it's so frantic. It, I'll tell you, it's, it opens up with a kid uh, at school, and something happens with a with the janitor there, where this teacher just gets out of school, and she says, "You should go tell the janitor that they shouldn't mop the floor until." You have gone for the day. He's waiting for his mother who's, you know, running late to be picked up. And she's like, you should go in there yourself. And it's a young kid. It's an elementary school teacher. You know what I mean? And I didn't think much of it. And then there's a, a pregnancy test taken by the same teacher. And you see that she's not happy with the result. 
still don't know if that means positive or negative, but then you see where this movie goes after that. And, you know, the, the, the teacher is the main character. And then we have a meeting with six women and uh, it takes place in a church, which is kind of funny. Uh, and it's a meeting of these people that are um, pretty conservative folks to say the least, some of them more than others and some of them just coming around, but you see their true nature as the movie unfolds. But um, they, they go to this part of this church, which is like upstairs or something that the Reverend himself or whatever miniature doesn't even realize what's at hand here, but she just happens to be in with the church. So they have these six women and they're having a meeting and you're basically talking about what, what is perceived as the multicultural warfare happening in the world right now. So you have these character shifts going on and them giving their reasons for attending this meeting. And they don't even all know each other. Some are friends of friends and this and that. And they're sitting down to have this discussion. And then you see a pie. And when you see the pie, you're like, hmm, what's going on here? Because there's something up with this pie. And it's so jaunting because... It's the six women sitting down having conversations and taking notes, and this is our first meeting, and we're gonna do this, and we're gonna we're gonna try to turn this into this, and we're the people that um, they're not gonna see coming because we're, we're the soft and quiet type in a way. We're the, oh. the men we know that they are this and this. We're the women. We're the Caucasian women here that they're never gonna see coming, and we're doing this and this. And see, I love female empowerment movies. This sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Anyway, you proceed, Dave. <laughs> so you see, <laughs> oh man, you see the camera moving around the room like in first person. It's like a scatterbrained camera, not like found footage, but there. Ha- it's it's hard for me to explain it a certain way, but it's it's a little bit frantic and it's moving around, following their conversation. When somebody talks, the camera goes to them, and then, but it's all well done. It's not done like amateurish whatsoever. Some of the stuff is intentional, unintentionally funny to me because it's me because some of the ridiculous things they say and, and some of the things that goes on. But they decide to uh, they have to leave this place because there's, there's reasons. But they have to leave, and they're on the way. They're gonna go uh, pick up. They're gonna go to a quick detour to a store to pick up some wine because one of the women owns like this store. And uh, they saw happen to sell wine at the store. And one of the women that's with her is a, one of her recent employees, a new employee with her. And then she invited her to go to this meeting. So they're going to go and they're going to have some wine at the other girl's house. And they stop at this place to get the wine. And as the, the store is closed. So obviously it's, she owns it. She has the key. She goes in there to get some wine. And as they're in there, um, a couple girls show up. Not, not Caucasian girls. And they come in and... They decide that they want to buy some wine. They go, well, sorry, we're closed. And like, well, you're here. And bottom line, a few things, a few words are exchanged and a taunt goes too far and some things are said. And that, next thing you know, there's an argument and that the, the girls get thrown out and then they're getting ready to go on to the, to the next, you know, to the party that they're going to have this little get together and have some wine. And then the girl's husband shows up, one of them, the, the teacher, and you see a little bit of marital manipulation going on here, which is also something that happens regardless of political affiliation or where you lean or anything. It's just something that you see happen sometimes in the way she speaks to her husband, almost making him like emasculating him softly, like saying, OK, well, and quietly, you know, yeah, and but not so well, quietly in, to a degree, but it speaks volumes, but it is loud in yeah, a way. Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah. It's it's true to life relationships like this and the way she's talking to him and almost like saying, well, if you do you, you really want me to look at you like a pussy or something like that? And the guy, you don't know a whole lot about him. Obviously, he's a conservative guy. He's married to her and you got to be because you hear what she says. And he comes in, he has the American flag on his head. No big deal. But he never talks like they do. He just seems to be a guy who happens to be whatever. And so be it. He doesn't seem like he's an asshole or any of that stuff. And he seems like it's almost like he's pushed into certain things. Now – the detour gets a little bit frantic because of some words that are exchanged. And what we see from here is a home invasion. And we see a home invasion because they just want to go there where these girls live because somebody knows where they live. And we just want to go there and prank them. And we're going to put them in their place. We're going to take their, we're going to steal their passports. So just going to go there to fuck around. Well, it turns into a home invasion. Somebody comes home too soon and from a home invasion movie, it turns into a hate crime movie. 
And like I said, it's all done in real time. There are arguments amongst the people. There are some horrible things said and done. And like I said, a, a crime is committed. It's what it is, is it's it gets very uncomfortable at times. And it's just it speaks volumes how easy things like this could happen. And when things do go down, how suddenly and strong can get weak and how roles can reverse. It, it speaks upon the human uh, condition. And when we spoke about a movie on Jay the Dead's new horror movies recently, I believe it was Dr. Walking Dead who said that we were talking about that movie that Jay loves. What's it called again, Watson, where we decided if it was horror or not? No Escape. Right? No Escape, yeah. I okay. so I'm bummed I missed that, that discussion. No well, I'll tell you this. He says something to the effect of the most dangerous infection – uh, is something like political ideologies. Mm. And that's what th that's what to him made No Escape a horror movie because of what was going on and the things that transpired. And that is what I thought of when I saw this movie. Oh, wow. So it's not horror in the regular sense, but it's horrific to see and it's enough horror to, for me because of crime things that are okay. done and everything else and where it goes. But dude, it is, it is uncomfortable. It is frantic. It, it, it puts you in a place, like I said, you're along for the ride in real time with them, seeing things happen and crimes committing and, and normal, and that maybe not normal people, but people that are not used to Bravo committing Bama. crimes. <laughs> <laughs> Put into these situations on both sides of the spectrum uh, as, as as victims and as you know offenders, and it's like, wow, it's so deep. And then where it goes, in the climax and the way it ends, I'm not going to say anything because it, it would almost give something away. But if you haven't seen Soft and Quiet, see it. It's an eight and a half out of ten. It's a strong nice. recommend. Cool. Check it out. I will. I was. I go after Dave every time here. And he's he got these politically motivated, like it seems like a lot to layers. And I'd say mine don't, but I always seem like I've got the fluff then as a follow up. But yeah, I'm going to check that like, out, Dave. Th yeah, see, then yeah. you're like, well, and this movie's about sticking uh, toothpicks in your dick. And uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yet again. <laughs> yes, I'm not going to forget about this. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it just like so happens that I have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't even think about it. Yeah. <laughs> but it just so happens that these movies happen to be political, politically yeah. motivated ways and happen to both be great. I don't usually, you know, some people, you know, you watch a movie and you know that that person, because they're always talking politics and every other word out of their mouth, whether they're saying it generally or it's under our breath in a way. Just because it's this kind of movie, you know it's going to yeah. end up in their top ten. It's just because that's what they that's what they gravitate to. Me, mm. I, I believe that I'm a little bit more layered than that myself, or I have so many varied interests. That's just one thing that I. If the movie, you know, was a seven for me, but I appreciated the message, then it's a seven. These movies just happen yeah. to be great all around for many reasons, including the stuff that's going on there. You know, political. You know, politically. Yeah, but anyway. You're, you're Dave, you're honest like that, you know, like where if the movie's a six, but then it has like a message that, you know, vibes with you, you're still like, it's a six. It doesn't Thank you. like, oh, the message that, <laughs> yeah. that, that, that resonates with me, this is a nine. It's yeah. Right. It's, that's like, come on, come on. Thank you for, Absolutely. for seeing that. Okay. It's gotta right. be, it's yeah, it's gotta be, or we, yeah, we're not right. being true blue. Right. Uh, <laughs> hey, I love, baby, I love you. Yeah, yeah. My number eight is uh black phone or the black phone. Hey, Again, we, we spoke about this earlier. You thought that was my number one, Dave? Just figure like it would be. Yep. Oh, oh wow. I'm shocked that you, I, you thought so, that. So this okay. is the type of phone those ladies that Dave was just talking about wouldn't yeah. like. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I do feel like this is, uh, yeah, it, it's politically and racially motivated. And if it was a white <laughs> phone, it would have been a whole different turnout. No, uh, I awesome. wasn't too sure because I actually saw this preview when we went to see... I can't fucking remember what horror movie, but I remember Brandon saw it and thought it looked horrible. I'm like, well, it's mm -hmm. Scott Derrickson or something like that. I, I believe I got the yep. name right. It he's, is. he's had a decent track record. I love uh, it. Or at least been interesting, like interesting to, yep. to revisit. And so I'm holding out hope and I thought the trailer looked good. It does take, and it was interesting when I watched it, I thoroughly enjoyed it, but I'm like, hmm, I wonder what's going to happen when we watch it as a family. So we watch it as a family. And I said, my wife is very critical about these things. I want to see what her reaction is when they introduce the supernatural element of help coming from past victims and ghost form. She loved it. Didn't have a, one iota of a problem with it. 
Good. And I was, I was like, good, okay, because I was just, I was like, I'm okay with it. And once it's established, I'm totally on board. But it's almost like they just establish it. There's no explanation to it other than this is the scenario. This is the connection. Well, it comes here. from the sister. That's why. Yeah. Well, exactly. But, but you don't really know he's got it. But again, right. they, mm-hmm. they. They play with that, I guess, is, is where I'm going. But I was totally on board. I think it's freaky. I think the mask is freaky. Ethan Hawke gets my nod or my vote for best actor of the year. I think nice. he always gets overlooked. And I think he's fucking Agreed. creepy as shit in this movie. There is a little bit of a, a fuck up at the end. That van is not in the driving driveway when the police go to the wrong house. To Ooh. to find them and pull the old uh, Silence of the Lambs uh, me do <laughs> and really if you notice across the street they show the house and there's no van there yet then when they come at the end the van's there oh. again wow I, I think it it may have just been a continuity issue but mm. it's clearly shown not as a cheat but I think just a mistake but other than that I mean oh, I'm okay. willing to forgive it but I noticed that the first time I watched it so then I I showed you know because I love being that person we watched i didn't bring it up until the, we finished the movie and then i and then i said hey check this out if you did you guys notice that they're like no because usually my son is actually really good at picking that shit out so hey right, the, my daughter too oh, or i whatever. suck at it yeah yeah so uh and usually i don't want to find that stuff i, I just want to enjoy the movie and sure. oh, to make sure there's no mistakes but it just happened to be kind of glaring to me in that regard so it's not flawless but i had a great time i love the characters it is child centric. They make the kids so damn likable, yeah. and um, even the bully kid, and then the victims, and the way they tackle it. You're, I'm on board. I loved everything about it. First and second watch solidified it. Eight and a half out of ten. Black nice. phone. Oh nice. man, right on, dude. I don't know how this movie didn't make my list. It, it should have. It should be there. I don't. I don't know what the hell. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it will the next list. It, it's just, yeah, it's just, it's just this day. Yeah. It's just this damn year, man. Yeah. We, it just, it just, right. uh, it's just this year, dude. It's just, it's so. Your next day at bat. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Coming in at number seven, my friends, um, I've got a movie. Well, and I didn't do this on purpose, actually, now that I'm looking at the order of this, uh, but uh, I've got a movie. Uh, there, there'll be some people in the, uh, the listenership who get this, uh, a movie with the same title as an amazing song by the singer Poppy. And it's called X. Um, <laughs> what a pair X and Pearl are. Uh, boy, I, I didn't mean to put these back to back, by the way. I just, I'm, I'm looking, I'm like, how did I not realize this until now? Um, like I said, I don't know when Ty West decided he was just going to start operating on this high a level, but he's on it. And as much as I love Pearl X is the reason I do. Uh, this is the film that sets the stage and shows us this world. And there's a richness between these two films that I can't get over. It's fascinating to me how we're, Beginning with the second in this trilogy, chronologically speaking, that's that's really cool. And I'm always on the lookout for high, a highbrow slasher. Uh, they don't come our way all that often. And, and listen, sure. I, I don't need that. I, I don't need a highbrow slasher. But when they come, I, I'm I'm gonna I'm going to embrace that. Uh, I'm down. And as A24 goes, this is in my top five of their horror offerings. Pearl is almost certainly a better character study. But this movie has the visceral horror that I crave, which is why it's ranked more favorably of the two in my eyes. Um, I don't know if I'm fully sold on Jenna Ortega yet. Uh, she k- keeps being in things I don't quite like. But, well, but this is the one I love. Well, Studio 666 was a blast, but she's yeah. barely in that, you know. Uh, right. That said, you can't deny her momentum, so good for her. And I'm sure she's going to be great despite the fact that in this movie, she's the one like I wanted to see die most of all. But that's by design. You know, I don't think you're supposed to be like, go yay what you did is super good you're like it's dirty it's cruel and she dies accordingly and and but but west gets the 70s aesthetic right here and once again i've got to praise this guy for continuing to step up his game and mia goth is captivating but we already knew that um i i just I, once again I'm, I'm struck by how pearl informs this movie and i can't wait to watch this again after having watched Pearl, because I, I haven't gotten to do that since, and just see the the way Pearl seeds the villainy uh, of our villain, <laughs> uh, you know, so like just the way he, she's is as somebody who wanted to be special and didn't get to be, looking at somebody who is 
and who, you know, by virtue of Mia Goth is essentially her and what that would do to her psyche and why she snaps the way she does, presumably after all these years. Hell, we don't know what Pearl's been up to since the 19 teens to now. She could still be on it, you know, pulling, you know, murderous shenanigans all this time. I don't know. But uh, it, it, this I, I love the way this is a great pairing. Can't wait for Maxine <laughs> and everything like yes. that. Nine out of ten X. I, I love this movie. Nice. Awesome, man. No, that's nice. Great. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, number seven, a movie called The Righteous. Man. What the fuck? Dave, Dave Z, you you're, keep, you're <laughs> adding to my list of re- to, to watch now. The Righteous. <laughs> man, I'll tell you what. This is a, it's a black down. and white movie. Yeah, oh, I, I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, it's black a black and, and white, white movie I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> with a um, it's about grief and penance and a priest who is second guessing things that have happened to him. This to me plays out a little bit like a like a Twilight Zone, but a long episode of the Twilight Zone. It has those type of uh, themes to it. But man, is it done well. Technically excellent. The performance is a great and just a great story that I'm on board for. From beginning to end, it's basically uh, so the priest, this gentleman left the priesthood to marry a woman. So we had to get up because, you know, that, you know, typically a priest can't get married. So he had left the priesthood. Um, his name is Fred. His wife's name is Ethel. And he left the priesthood to marry her and they live this, this quiet life. However, not so quiet, actually, maybe too quiet now, because in the beginning they have just lost their child now they're a little bit older as a couple and this child ends up being a child that they didn't um create themselves but they have a friend um and i want to say that this young girl who's in her 20s maybe 30s whatever was a friend of her father was a friend of um this former priest fred and she just realized at her young age that she wasn't going to be the best mother and they wanted a child so she basically gave her child to them so sad thing is this the child is killed very young child killed in the beginning and that's that's where this movie begins them burying their child the priest praying in the backyard uh, sorry no not in the backyard <laughs> and um <laughs> at least i don't think so no probably not but <laughs> the priest is going yeah. to see sorry. another person in the priesthood and um, someone that I, he obviously used to work with. And he's basically kind of feeling guilty, almost in a way like I'm being punished for leaving the priesthood. And this is why this child was taking for me. He has to deal with all of this. It's like I said, it's about grief and penance and him, him second guessing his moves. And prior to that, him having issues with other things that have happened with his faith and maybe you know, sending something or sending something along to, to straighten him out. Uh, it's, I'm trying not to, not to give anything away. Now, all of a sudden this Aaron character shows up in their backyard or in their front yard, I should say, out of nowhere, there's this guy walking, he's having issues walking, he hurt himself and he's in between, he's a younger gentleman and Fred comes across him at night and he says, hey, what are you doing? He goes, I'm supposed to meet a friend, this and that. I got hurt. Can you help me? Can you take me in? So they end up taking this guy in. And we find out that Fred actually has these memory lapses and has for a long time. And that that ties into something. And then we see a... He, she doesn't want to bring him, bring him in to help him out at first. She's a little weary. Who's this strange man? Everything else. But Fred, he's trying to be a good person. He's Like I said, you know, he's a brother of the cloth former, you know, and he's like, okay, I want to help him out. So they bring him in. And at first she doesn't want him. Now some time passes a day or two and he's still there and everything else. It's one of these stories where it gets a little uncomfortable because the mother, Ethel, the the woman who just lost her child has a little bit of a bonding with him. And at the same time, we come to find out that this, this um, Aaron character gives a proposition to Fred and he wants him to do something, something which is sinful. And Fred is thinking that one sin that he committed in the past, which we find out later, could be washed out by the other. 
if he does this sin, even though he doesn't want to do it at all. He's very adamant against it. I'm not going to do this for you, Aaron. I'm sorry. I cannot. And there are all kinds of conversations and all kinds of weighing of faith and the reason this happened and who is at hand because he was praying for something to happen. Who actually answered this prayer and showed up at this door? Who is Aaron? Is he a real person? Is he an angel? Is he a devil? What's going on here? And that's what I'm talking about with the Twilight Zone stuff. You're trying to figure this out. And we get um, God's children that aren't possessed by love get possessed by something else is a line in this movie, which I thought is be careful what you wish for, but be certain what you pray for. And oh, then we get I an love ultimatum. That, Dave. Right? Yeah, good I love stuff. That. <laughs> and there's an ultimatum after we learn an awful truth about something else, about the priest's past and what's going on here. It's a great script. It's a great score. It keeps you engaged. And the ending really puts it over the top for me. You may interpret it a different way. You may go the the B explanation. <laughs> if oh, you were on the show, no, okay. <laughs> I take this as literal. And for Thank that, you. I love it even more because I'm like, oh, nope. wow. So, and I can't say anything else, but I, I can't recommend it enough. Go and check out The Righteous if you have not. You will not regret your time with it. It is very cool, and it's another eight and a half out of ten. Oh man, Dave, yeah. I love I love what you where you're coming with this list, dude. You got the you got these 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 picks, man. And yeah, I told I you. The, you, you did you did say that. And this is <laughs> yeah. a Canadian movie I'm seeing, and I, I guess yeah. the reason I, I never came across it is because it looks like you can only see it on or at least rent it right now on Apple TV and I don't have that so I can call in some passwords though so I wait, wait I got people <laughs> it's also funny fun fact of this too is directed its first feature did a bunch of shorts um but he's also an actor he was in uh, ready or not his name's Mark O'Brien what oh cool he played Alex in uh ready or not I liked when you when you hear that because it seems like he's still working on his crap He's creating his own shit, but he, he acts and he's getting mainstream roles that maybe foot the, the the bill or help pay for some of these other movies. So nice. Cool. Awesome. I'm looking forward to checking it out uh, for sure. Uh, again, now that my number seven, funny enough. Oh, what was your, you said eight and a half, Dave? Yep. Yep. Eight and a half. My number seven uh, was my number one earlier this year. Until, of course, you end up seeing more films and whatever. I'm talking probably it's springtime uh, of, of 2022. And that movie I believe is a Netflix flick called Fresh. Just another sort of Hulu. take on Hulu. Was it Hulu? Yep. Then it was Disney, Disney Plus in Canada. Because for whatever reason, oh, huh, a lot of those up. ones that go to Hulu what? get going to <laughs> Disney Plus. I know, weird. weird. Disney Plus, which has um, a subset called Star, and it mm -hmm. then premieres there. So it was on that. And Crazy Canadians. Uh, yeah, Crazy Canadians. Uh, <laughs> I, again, I thought this was quirky enough, uh, fun enough, scary enough, and again, another cannibal film. <laughs> it, it just seems to be a year of this sort of subgenre rearing its head, and, and it was just, again, it's the kind of roller coaster ride, for lack of a better term, that takes you on. It sort of starts one way. Uh, you, you know evil's afoot but then you don't really know where it's going and just the captivity part and the friendship or kinship that's created between some characters and what the characters have to go through uh, of giving a little piece of themselves to the greater cause is, is really cool without going into too much detail. Um, I thought the acting was great all around. There's a little bit of convenience, I think, but nothing yeah. that's offensive, uh, at least not, not to me uh, to get you to that final final actor or, or, or the, um, the climax. Uh, but I also do like the play on, on the secondary characters doing their own little detective work. And, and again, maybe a little too convenient, but being able to help out or, or get there to the end, uh, all around a good time. And I don't know if maybe some horror fans may have booted this off the list. Cause they, they, maybe it, it um, it abandons yeah. maybe the horror. I don't know why you would though. Nah. I think it's, I think the themes and everything I described alone have more than enough horrific elements uh, to, to be part of it. And, and sure. they play around with that cannibalism, but boy, do they give you just enough of a taste for not to be as nauseating, maybe as bones and all, but still to get that icky feeling, mm -hmm. especially what happens to a few, few of the characters. 
So uh, <laughs> nine out of ten for me. Ooh, that's fresh. Yeah, you're nines. Wow. Yeah, cool, man. Cool, cool choice. You know, Very I cool. dig what uh, you know. I'm not really into the. I'm well, I'm just not really into the Marvel movies and the superhero shit anymore. But I like Sebastian Stan and what he does outside of the MCU. You know, when he was uh, in yeah. the Devil all the time. He was in this. Uh, he, you know, I didn't see the Pan and, and Tommy, Tommy thing, yeah. but, but I, yeah. I didn't see that, but I did see the talking dick. Uh, yeah. and Hey, <laughs> that goes, that plays what? right into everything. Uh, oh, yeah. But, yeah. I like That's what he's the doing. Most memorable he's... scene from the fucking talking dick. <laughs> That's all I saw. I brought it up uh, on the movie? show before. No, Wait. in Pan and Tommy in the show. I brought it up on the show. Oh, okay. That, all right. I thought there was a dick. movie called oh. the talking dick. Listen, <laughs> well, we can what? make this. Might as well. Yeah. Dave, will you start? Just don't shove anything in it. Oh, okay. no. <laughs> oh, there. Never mind. Uh, then it yeah. would be horror. Ah. I'm out. Yeah. You know? Uh, <laughs> I like the idea of like the toothpick on one end and one of those like cheese, ah. those little cheeses on the other, a uh, little appetizer. Um, <sighs> all right. Uh, coming in at number six. Uh, remember when I said that I don't need my slashers to be highbrow? Well, <laughs> here <laughs> at number six, I've got Christmas Bloody Christmas. Uh, wow. wow. Really? Okay. Listen, Joe Begus, and that's how you say it, by the way. A lot of people say Begos, it's Begus. Uh, <laughs> oh, be- it like just, Beavis, yeah. Begus yeah, and like Butthead. Be- <laughs> Begus and, yeah. He knows what I like, man. He's got my number, and this movie's no exception to that. In fact, I predict that this movie will make my yearly holiday rotation from now on. That's how much I dig what I saw here, and it's simple as hell. It's a killer robot Santa wreaking havoc oh, yeah. in a small town. Killing and killing and killing. I mean, you know, uh, Begus imbues his films with a punk rock essence that speaks to me. And that's because about 10 years back, the character building parts of this movie in the first act were kind of how I lived my life. Obviously not as, ex- you know, it, this is all exaggerated and filled with more neon there than, than I've ever seen in my life. And, and, and you know, but this was how, this was how shit <laughs> went <laughs> when I was younger and drinking my way through Olympia, Washington with the hipsters. Uh, none of my interactions were quite this caustic and confrontational like he writes his characters, but this is what we did. We drank whiskey, copious amounts of it. We talked obscure music in movies. We went about town in the cold wearing leather jackets. Also, that first date between our lead and her employee, that's the way it goes, homie. Sometimes, you know, uh, yeah. I, I've done all that minus the Coke, just whiskey and going down on the hot blonde. That's it. Nice. Um, nice. You know, th- this, this movie's obnoxious. But some might find that annoying. I understand that. I, I really do. Trust me. Uh, you know, Bliss, I think a lot of people felt the same way. But I have b- become more endeared to Bliss as time's gone on. I think when we did that year together, I had it. I don't even think it made my top 10 or maybe it was at number 10. It'd be in my top five now um, of wow. that year. And it just I, I get this movie. I know where it comes from. And when you add that personal shit to the fact that this Santa Claus – Terminator, uh, <laughs> it's like that this is Santa Claus Terminator, then you can sign me up every year. God bless you, Joe Begus. I- I'm only sorry that I didn't rate Bliss higher when we did it, but you know, it is what it is. These lists change. Um, is there anything complicated and beautifully and intricately thematic here? No, it's just, it just is what it is. And that's really all I need. Uh, once again, we're, we're kind of true to form in this, in this top 10. I'm at a nine out of 10 Christmas, bloody Christmas. Nice. nice. We just reviewed it, so I Dave haven't heard it as high. But... Yeah. <laughs> no, we weren't as high, but can appreciate the kills. Yes. You know. Yeah. yeah. People, people are loving it. I feel like yeah. Dave and I might be the minority, but I also have seen people similar to Dave and I. How saying that first act, ooh, it's tough to get through just because of the, the, as you put it, the caustic nature of of the of the dialogue and the, and, and the characters in, in that yeah. fact. And what I've oh. come to realize is that. I seem to enjoy. What, how'd you say you pronounce his name? Because I do say Bagos. Oh, uh, well, I yeah, I, I, it was it was Bigus. I heard him butthead. say his own name in an interview. I was like, shit, I've been saying it wrong. So yeah. so I tend I like to like his, his movies upon. I I tend to like all of his stuff. Yeah. First watch, I never go back to revisit them, ever. Whether it be Bliss, mm. the oh, yeah. uh, the F W Mind's Eye, Mind's Eye, yeah. Mind's Eye, watch them all yeah. once. Yeah. <laughs> He's four and I've enjoyed four them all. Well, unless he's done yeah. more than that. Those are the four I've seen anyway. But yeah, I, I dig it, man. He has my number with that punk rock, 
You know, it's like, you know, it, 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 the, yeah. the, the background yeah. music is that kind of grungy, obscure, yep. droning uh, distortion. And it's loud, it, like you like confrontational and caustic, like I said. And I, I get that people don't like that. Uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to be offended by that at whatsoever and go. Yeah, oh, but you don't you just yeah. don't get it. No, it's just I've kind of lived it. And I, and like I said, nobody was ever quite like that. Uh, even the worst in the group was right. Like dialed down to like a four, you know, <laughs> right. a little yeah. exaggerated. Right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there was a part where she's naming her best, uh, her favorite horror uh, sequels. And I all had the that worst same, ones, all the worst ones. <laughs> and I had that same conversation where uh, the, 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 basically th this situation is happening. And we had this conversation and I looked at, it, I was like, fuck you. You don't believe a word you're saying. And I was like, yeah, so I guess I was being, but it was all in good fun. It wasn't, uh, but yeah, I was just, I was like, you don't believe a word you're saying. You just want to sound cool to everybody else because you don't, you don't, you want to be contrarian for contrarian's sake. And I see through you and, uh, and later I'll see through your, you know, will you, skirt. will you take so, half a point off mm -hmm. because there's a Spookies poster in it? Like, I, I saw the Spookies poster and started <laughs> busting up. That was some funny, I, I was thinking David James Parker was like, uh, whipped, whipped it out and started uh, yeah. shoving stuff in there. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Christmas, buddy, Christmas. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, from one slasher to another, we've talked about this on a few shows ago. Um, it's been mentioned already tonight. It's the fucking fantastic Mia Goth in X. Yeah. And others. Not just me. Wow. Nice. But yeah. Um, man, so much fun. I, I'm not going to say much, really. I mean, we, we covered it not too long ago. It is what it is. We know what it is. It takes place in the late 70s. Great fucking kills. Great story, uh, you know, interesting because we have uh, the antagonist being who they are is kind of a first. The way it's shot is, is done really well. The characters are written well. Mia fucking knocks it out of the park, as always. Mm -hmm. And really, I like them all. I have no problem with any of the characters. I know you said something about Jenna Ortega. I thought she was just fine here. I didn't, whatever. But yeah. um, I like all the stuff that ultimately lines in this movie see this is where i'm backwards uh what watson said earlier about how x makes pro better for me because pearl was the prequel when i went back and watched pearl not didn't not went back because pearl came out second okay <laughs> yeah, but, when i watched <laughs> pearl after seeing <laughs> x and then went back and saw x there are so many tie-ins from yeah. pearl to x and some lines that are delivered and things that, have that now so much more makes sense in X because of Pearl. If Pearl didn't exist, um, X to me wouldn't be quite, it would still be a great film. I'm not knocking it, but the throwing Pearl into the mix and everything we learn in that movie makes X even that much better. That's Dave, all. Dave, I, I might have misspoke. I agree with what you're saying. I, that's the direction I'm, I'm going in that Pearl makes X better. Wait. Nice. Yeah, cool. that's what I meant. If I, if okay. I misspoke, yeah, I'm agreeing with you here. Yeah. Okay, all right, right on. So, but I'm not going to say anything else. I mean, we, we've already covered it. Yeah, it's nice great. Video, I thought. Yeah, Yeah, we did. We, we went in depth. Go back and find it. Uh, the kills are great. The performances are, are good. It, this is the good old-fashioned type slasher. This is what you want. A little bit of yeah. setup for half an hour, yep. whatever. You get some pretty girls, some of them getting naked, and you get some good kills, and you get a uh, an original story. That's yes. what you want in a slasher, and it's done well. Ty West, freaking... Great job directing, and he mm -hmm. just continues it. And it was, I was so happy to see Mia finally get a starring role. This was yes. the first one. As you remember, I wanted to go to Toronto to meet her. They didn't advertise she was going to be there, and I was so oh. close to going. And then she ended up being there, and I'm so <laughs> mad because this is the first time this 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 woman has been in uh, side roles for too long. And I've always known she had it. She's got a lot going on, but but one of the things she has going on is that I knew she could deliver in lead roles. And of course, in this one, she does two things, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. excellent. But yeah, I'll leave it at that. Eight and a half out of 10. X. You, you nice. know, what's funny, wow. Dave is I, I watched this in the theater and had, and I didn't know until after I got home that she was the, the villain also. Me neither. I, I, I had no I idea. Didn't know. I didn't know. I, can't, was obvious. I like, can't unsee sure. it now or unhear it. Now, okay. now that I know it's her, I hear her and I see her in it all the time. Now it's crazy. I've yeah, seen I'll it. But I was the same with you two. It's awesome. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah. sweet. Yeah. See, yeah, I'll catch it upon rewatch. Of course, I'll be like, of course, yeah, I see that. But yeah, you know, when I got home and someone said, yeah, that's the case, I was like, oh, sure. I are you sure? Hold on. Yeah, right. Yeah, good stuff. Nice. All right. I uh, 
I my number is so we're in another slasher uh, and, and and empty as we've talked about, but fucking enjoyable as all the hell we've talked about on the show is Terrifier two. So that's Ooh, my number nice. six. <laughs> yeah, nice. I'm just shitloads of fun. Who, who when I heard two hours and twenty minutes, I laughed. I said, "There's no way <laughs> that that must be a joke," and and, and it's going to go through. And I think they announced that way back when, when we seemingly thought we were getting this movie two years ago, or at least I did. And it sounded because I I think I remember them talking about that the initial cut came in well over two hours. I'm like, "Well, they're going to have to do some trimming," and they didn't. They kept that like a '70s bush, thick. And full. <laughs> and all I could say is that I, I'm happy for it because, as Dave said, it's almost like they're trolling with the extra story. Not everything makes sense. I think they need a third to help explain some of the shit that mm-hmm. they, they came up with here that is unanswered oh, and just left to kind of your imagination. But just from a thoroughly enjoyable uh, slasher flick, it's I loved it. It's not going to be for everybody because, again... Uh, horror fans seem to be all over the place with what they want and what they like. And I feel sorry for a bunch of them. Just a shit ton of fun. Super gory. Art is great. Nine out of 10. Oh yeah. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. This is, you know, not to knock on Christmas bloody Christmas. Cause I still enjoyed it, but this was, to me, this was the difference in, in this movie in terrifier two, it was two hours and 20 minutes. And I didn't notice the runtime in, in Christmas bloody Christmas. It was like it was less than, for- <laughs> 90 minutes and yeah. i did notice the runtime oh. that was the difference to sum it up but again it's i still enjoy christmas eh? buddy christmas yeah. but that, yeah. that's what separates the two as far as rating you know for in what i told one one's a seven one's an eight so it's yeah. not like you know catastrophic but oh, anyway sure. and, and see something you were saying about you know needing a third terrifier to explain some of the stuff uh damian leone went on this like uh, twitter thread uh just just uh, just uh, extravaganza uh, where he started talking about theories and things to come, and he has the answers. This isn't just him nice. like pulling a lost on us and raising questions that they have no intention of ever answering. This is he he knows what he's doing, or at least it appears so. So I'm very excited to see what uh, what comes of that, which I love hearing, and I'm on board with that. And as my rating and, and ranking dictate, I'm okay with. I could see a lot of people going, well, that's not the movie we got. The answers are not here, and I shouldn't need another movie yep. to mm-hmm. to do that. I, I I get it, but I'm also on board to allow that to evolve. I, I'm totally on board for that to evolve. So that's great to hear. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Right on. Sweet. Right on. Well, top, right. Five. top five. Here we top go. five, brothers. <laughs> All right, at number five, uh, I'm talking uh, – I mean, we're, we're – jeez, what do we got here? We – one, two, the third slasher in a row, my friends. Uh, I'm talking about Ooh. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, wow, awesome. My, nice. Dude, my son and I recently went through the franchise, and after the OG, this is, we both agreed, and I think Jay of the Dead agreed with, with us too, that this is like probably in our second or third spot. Uh, I didn't awesome. want much from this movie. I didn't even, I didn't ask for anything. I just wanted to see our boy Leatherface pop the fuck off, and- right. Here, almost 50 years later, he delivers more death than he ever has. C said it. We get the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It finally <laughs> happens. 2013 teased us, but that's a fucking manipulative ass film. I don't even want to talk about that. Uh, but it, we got it here. Now, should he be this a- a- agile and mobile all these years later? I don't give a shit. I, I just want him killing people with a chainsaw. Some, you know, something this franchise doesn't do as much as you think. It's really that simple, everyone. Are we gonna get, you know, are we gonna get a slash with good kills or no? And the answer is yes, we got it. Uh, I don't think we've ever had this brutal of Leatherface, and I'm down with what they do from here on out. I mean, could we see? My my dream is my secret dream. I is I I want to see Bill Mosley return as an elderly chop top who's in that house waiting for him. Yeah. I, I, wow. I would that not be <laughs> the best move? This new reboot franchise could pull the two of them killing the way through texas together just bro- brothers just doing their thing that's what i want uh i'm not a complicated awesome. man when it comes to leatherface man you give me a bubba who can you know no longer hide behind his family uh you know a gentleman who now has to take center stage in the goriest fashion possible and i'm all about it and dave I mean, we talked about this but i i love dave z what you said uh i love i agree with you regarding what they did with sally hardesty She's off to the Thank side, <laughs> not yeah. as a main character, but present, and she does what she does, and I appreciate that. And I absolutely loved our problematic leads. 
I know you're supposed to dislike them, and I, I know they're pulling, they're sort of pulling a little bit of a, fl a flipping of the script where, you know, yeah. it's usually the, you know, the, the, the teen, the city teens are always the good going out into the threatening country, and oh, goddamn those country bumpkin fuckers, and they pull that, but then you start realizing that, no, no, what you're doing is problematic, and while we are rooting for you to some degree, you aren't right. Uh, all, uh, in a lot of the shit you're doing. In fact, you, you know, but then some of them do come to that personable moment where they have to reckon with the wrongs they've committed to right them. And that's all I ask. I love that when characters do that, even something as, you know, as, as whatever this is, uh, is, you know, uh, the conversation our main character has with the guy in the garage. We talked about this already, an amazing human moment that transcended personal politics uh, won't beat off that dead horse or beat that dead horse. Whoops. Um, <laughs> and uh, I just, I just want to see more of this in movies, people coming together like that. That's the creatively titled Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, at nine out of 10. And I hope the next one is called Texas Chainsaw Massacre too. Uh, I'm not stopping with that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. It's like they anchor us with the idea that we've just seen the Halloween series, like Dave mentioned. Yep. And you're like, Oh, ha ha Sally Harvesty is going to be this new hero yeah, yeah. and it's gonna carry us through and it's almost like they sucker yeah. punch it it's, that's what makes it great it's like here yes. all right well, here's the moment bye-bye <laughs> <laughs> and that opening kill in this movie is still jaw-dropping and good so you get oh. that that leads you into yeah um, and they're all good but then that one is just like whoa holy shit they mean business and then they, they double down on that in that bus massacre just yep. a great great time good stuff yep we Remember also that. Get a moment of suspense in Texas Chainsaw Massacre with that one girl in the cornfield. That that scene after when mm, it, it takes like two or three minutes for her to die after the first person gets killed, and we're we're along with her. I like that. You don't see that yeah, so yeah. much anymore, you know. Indeed. So, yeah, it seems like it's been discredited. Indubitably. Hey, whatever. Yep. <laughs> okay, number five. This is my biggest surprise of the year. Now, due to the marketing, what little I saw, and just what I anticipated. I this was not I did not expect this to be in my top five, but you gotta watch the movie, man. And this is Smile. I nice. loved it. Yeah, dude. Nice. nice. Like I said, took me by total surprise. You know what this is to me? This movie is just like an early two thousands J horror or even a J horror remake for the states. The way it's executed, the Definitely. way the scares are, the way the story unfolds. I mean, yes, I've heard people compare it to It Follows, and I get that, but there's yep. also stuff yep. like The Ring, and there's also stuff like just those type of movies from that time period where you see things unfolding and being chased by something, and it's supernatural and scary, and only you can see it. I think it's a, a an excellent premise. I think that a lot of people... And this actually kind of pissed me off because I heard people call it jump scare the movie and say that it was too heavy in jump scares. I will tell uh, you this. Uh, all of... Almost every jump scare happens in one sequence, and it's very early in after she sees the first kill, and she goes home, and she's tense. So naturally, we – this is what I took it as. We saw like four jump scares in like 10 minutes in, in that sequence, but it was all when she first got home after that and when the curse is first getting on her. Yes. And we are living it along with her. She just had this traumatic event. So that's what I took it. We're supposed to be on edge. We're living it through her eyes. She's the main character, and she's nervous, and all the shit just went down. And that's when the jump scares are hot and heavy. But the rest of the movie is not jump scare central. I don't care. It, it's been misaligned because of that sequence. People are trying to come off and say that it's jump scare after jump scare when 90% of them happen in that one scene, in, in that one freaking scene with, with her there. And I'll stand by that. I just, I don't get that. And people are like, oh, yeah, it's like this. And it's like a, a, a that movie Truth or Dare because he smiles, because they smile in Truth or Dare, a Blumhouse movie. <laughs> and it's got jumps. I'm like, you've missed the boat. You prejudged oh, this yeah. movie. That's yep. what I think people did. And maybe that's why yep. it surprised me. But, but Dave, people did that with the empty man. They're like, that sounds like right. bye bye man. It's like, right. Yeah, it just got grouped in. Good. Here's I think cookie. it got grouped in and it was bad marketing, but I think yeah. you're oh. right. And and then and then now there's a, a whole new life. The empty man seems to have taken on a whole yeah. new life in the last year and change or whatever yes. it's been. Yeah. Which is cool. I don't know if this yeah. movie's ever gonna be appreciated, honestly. It, but it was a huge hit, I'm telling you. It was a huge yeah, fucking it made, hit. It made money. It's very yeah, divided. Yeah. I hear people say I love it, and I hear people say I hate jaded it. Jaded horror just... fans. No, fucking yeah. jaded horror fans, man. I hate yep. to say it, but it, it, that's what it is. I, 
I wish it wasn't. I wish I could, uh, you know, but know. there's just, there's been tons of posts about just the state of horror. We've mentioned it on the show previously, yeah, yeah. and I just don't mm. understand it. I don't get it. They're missing the boat, man. I feel sorry for them yeah. without trying to sound arrogant about it. I'm not. I'm just saying I legit do. Uh, I do. They're I do. missing I the boat. Did. Same you here, know? man. I said it earlier. Yeah. I'll say it again, too. I agree. Yeah. It is what it is. But I think the sound design is great. I love the birthday party meltdown scene. I think it's freaking one oh. of the best scenes of the year. Dude, it's awesome. Yeah. You know, and holy shit, what's going on here? And she is a legit person. You're along the right. She's a legit doctor. She didn't get in it for the money. They say that. They say that at that table with their obnoxious in-laws. Before they even say that, her husband, I already discovered that about her just in the first five minutes of the movie, that she is a legitimate person that cares about her her patients. And I love that they reiterate on it in case you missed that. that, that that's okay. That doesn't bother me. But everything that happened with her mother, the traumatizing event, and just, yes, it, it's an obvious thing about trauma. And, and what happens to people. I get that. It's something that's real easy to see that trauma spreads. And, and this is what happens. And that's what's going on here. Why well, is that bad though? I, I like, I, I, obviously it's not. It's you, not bad. you like it too. I like it too. It's just, why would that be like, it sounds like you were, and I think you were that people are using it against the movie. Like, oh, come on, it's just too obvious and, and whatever. And I think, you know, uh, you know, sometimes you just have to see like, okay, I get it, but, I, it's not necessarily as simple as that. And I think they do. I think I agree with you. They do a great job here. I do agree with you. Not, I don't think See? I agree with you. I do right. agree with you. <laughs> See? And you even have elements of like Final Destination with who's next and what's yeah. going to happen here and following. Them. No one's mentioned that. Everyone says it follows. Yeah. But I see, like I said, I see The Ring. I see Final Destination. I see other J-horror stuff. I like the relationship with that cop, Joel, which we don't know everything about. But we get enough to know that yeah. they had a prior relationship and... We get all we need to know instead of diving. He's underrated too, man. Deep. Must use the Red State guy. He was a Nightmare on Elm Street yeah. reboot. That's yeah, yeah. That's what I was saying. I love what uh, you know. He he like growing up, he kind of when he was younger, kind of looked like a guy who was always on the verge of crying. And he's just really <laughs> coming to a cool look these days. He's you know there and and scream. Uh, you know, the Scream yeah. 1 2022. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I forgot yeah. he was in that one, too. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Another guy that seems to have, like, a rebirth this year or yep. some sort, like, just been in a few other movies. I forgot. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Kyle Gallner. Yeah. He's cool. He $17 cool. million yeah. dollar budget. $17 million dollar estimated budget. It's so far gross. Two hundred and sixteen million and change worldwide. Wow. Jeez. Wow. There's going to be a well, No question. Good. Yeah. I just cool. hope that they they can make it anywhere near as good because I loved it. I, I think even her other characters, the fiance and the therapist and the sister at first is annoying, but when mm. you get to know her, she's not so bad, and you understand why she acts the way she does and lives yeah, her she life comes, the way she does. She makes sense. People, yeah, right? she, yeah, she they, comes to make sense. Yeah, it's it's the way people deal with trauma differently. She yeah. dealt with it the one way, and she dealt with it because she was directly in it, and she had no other choice. But there aren't any real bad characters. I mean, like I said, the, the couple, a little annoying, but I mean, so be it. Um, I thought I knew the answer before. And uh, with the trauma, I 100% thought that it was going to be passed on to another character. And they didn't go that direction. And for that, I, I, I thought it was painfully obvious they were going to go to the other character. And they didn't. And I thought it was cool that they swerved me a couple times. The mm -hmm. the trauma, there was a misdirection, the way, the way it spread. And her... Having, okay, I got to face it and everything out. And the answer, she asked, why your mind is so inviting? And that makes perfect sense. If you have your mind opened to things like that, if you invite trauma, if you invite the effects of trauma into your mind, well, then you're going to get torn apart. If you can face it and be stronger about it, maybe not. There's a lot going on here that I don't think people talk about or just thought it was too basic, but I think there's more than that than, than meets the eye. Um uh, I was actually on board for once for a happy ending at one point in the movie. I said, you know what? I want to see a happy ending. And then when things go crazy towards the end, I like mm. both characters so much, the cop and the lead, that I don't know who I'm rooting for. And that is so hard to do because you see there's one thing on one side of the door. There's one thing on the other. Who's going to bite it? Who's going to get affected? And honestly, I'm like, you know mm. what? I like them both so much that – I don't know what to think here because you got to think about that guy, Joel, and what he had to deal with and how he was still freaking genuine all the way through. I'm like, wow, man, shit. He's freaking, he's a good cat, what, 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 you know? So, but now ultimately what we get to at the end is <laughs> I'm going to just say 
that it's an epic final shot. The way this movie yes. ends is freaking oh. epic. It's it's an ending that I love. It's a kind of ending that I love. Done so damn well. I I don't know why a lot of people um have well, I guess we kind of covered why. Either way, I'm I'm glad that I'm on the on the right cut side. You off. Which yeah. I'm doing now, because I think I said that I I love that you that final shot makes it I love it. Dude. It makes it. It's great. I just but still, I, it's, I see it on the yeah. It's awesome. It, there's misdirections that work, and I'm happy to be yeah cherry on top. Biggest surprise of the year. It's a nine out of ten. I, I love to smile. Sweet. Yep. Awesome. All man. right. Sorry, I just number texted my wife four. something. Number no number five for me. I haven't done my sorry five yet. sorry. See, I didn't mean to skip it. Skip you. <laughs> That's okay. Five. You know, I almost booted this off my list, so it's not going to be any mystery to anybody because I was saying, hey, maybe this isn't as horror as I thought. But I said, fuck it. I love the movie, and it just the way it was shot and everything. It's Watcher. Uh, awesome. From speaking of it, follows the girl that was in it follows is in this. Yeah, and so she. I thought did a great job. We did a whole review on this on the show, so I don't want to be, feel like I'm um, just regurgitating the same shit, but I, I guess I will for for the next 30 seconds or so of saying <laughs> I like the Stranger in the Strange Land premise. I, I love the fact that, uh, you know, we follow her and, and really just her a one person show for the most part in the sense of like we're in her shoes and living her life so when people are speaking uh, Romanian we don't get subtitles because she doesn't get subtitles so we're putting right in her position um, I do like how she's trying to learn the language uh, so that she can surprise her husband and then when she actually pieces together a really bad joke that her husband says in Romanian to his coworkers, she actually figures it out with the, the studying that she did and it's an insulting joke and it really offends her and just that aspect and the fact that pretty much she was right all the way. I was thinking and arguing, could it have used one more swerve or could have things changed? And I'm almost glad in retrospect that it didn't do that. And it just played out the way that it did. Uh, and a little bit more on the nose because it does give that fuck you ending where she said uh, she kind of just looks at her husband like like I told you so without having to have to say it at the end. Thoroughly enjoyable. Definitely leans on the thriller side of things a little bit more so. But that final confrontation in that room is horrific. And you can't deny that. And it's a nine out of ten like totally watchable loved it very hitchcockian in ways of the with the voyeurism and things like that and just can't recommend it uh, an, enough uh if you haven't checked it out please do so it's on shutter i believe watcher nice i'm glad it made the list i know how you felt about it and you were hemming and hawing about how horror it was yeah. and everything so you know <laughs> you love it you yeah. love it what was your yeah. rate again? I'm sorry. Nine? Uh, nine out of 10. I was probably, I, I was even leaning, I think a bit higher, but where I ended up falling was nine out of 10, my number five. Awesome. Oh, sweet. Okay. All right. All right. Here at number four this is where I've basically got something like a four way tie for number one. Any of these I'm yeah. about to name could be the top movie of the year, but uh what movie we're going to get into here is only in fourth place because I didn't have time to rewatch it. So of this final four, I do believe it's the most epic in scope and the biggest of the bunch. And that movie here, number four, is The Cursed. Uh, oh, damn it. That was my prick for your number one. Oh, was it? I mean, you you, you, yeah. are, you kind of aren't wrong. Um, yeah. This is a rich piece of storytelling that takes place in 19th century rural France. Uh, we've got a supernatural beastly freak, as Jay of the Dead calls it. Uh, you know, beastly freak murder mystery fueled by an ancient curse on our hands here. And it amounts to what I believe is I mean, one of the best, if not the best werewolf fish movie we've had in years. There's a sure. meditation here about right. classism and the reality of what placing a curse like this can do to innocence. You know, there's fallout. An eye for an eye makes the whole world blind and such. Uh, excellent blood and gore. Um, Dark Discussions did a great episode on this. And uh, I think co-host Mike over there on that show uh, kind of pointed out some funny things that didn't did, that did, didn't lower my score. But, you know, you've got, uh, you know, you're not supposed to call them gypsies. you got to, you know, you call them the Roma, but that has ties to uh, Romanian ancestry, which I think these people didn't have. So calling them Roma is kind of like calling somebody from Trinidad an African-American. It's like, 
well, we're the same color, but, you know, and I appreciate you for trying. Uh, but then, you know, and then f- furthermore, we've got these people that are supposed to be French, French, who are speaking, you know, British English. And, you know, so there's these weird kind of things here. It's like, you know, but th- those are inconsistencies that don't mean anything to me. Just something funny he pointed out on Dark Discussions. But I, a big movie that has some uh, brutality to it. And it's been, you know, been a while since I've seen a a creature feature that does it for me quite like this one does. So I'm at a 9.5 out of 10. That's the cursed. Awesome. Nice man. Awesome. Well, I, I was wrong on your pick, but awesome. I'm still <laughs> going. I should watch it again. I watched it earlier in the year and a lot of people were way high on it and I watched it and I liked it. I, I gave it a seven and a half. I didn't dislike mm-hmm. it. I just didn't. I don't know. I didn't see mm-hmm. why everyone was so into it. Uh, sure. I, I almost meant to rewatch it and maybe I should have, maybe yeah, I, I didn't have, but... I didn't have time, but it was one of those that it was just, when I, you know, you know, when you, you, you sit down to watch a movie and it, you, you, the film that you watch is just, it's just what you needed that day. I think that's mm-hmm. what this was mm-hmm. for me. And, you know, I'm not saying that this movie is, you know, better or worse for that uh, than it is objectively. But what the hell is objectivity anyway? I just I just really I watched this and it was the period piece I needed with the creature. There's a scarecrow scene that I was like, oh, my goodness, this is beautiful. Scarecrows. Uh, yeah. It's the yeah. So, scarecrow. Yep. <laughs> Good stuff. <Yes>. Awesome. <laughs> OK, my number four. This is the only movie, speaking of seeing things once, that I only saw one time because I didn't get a chance to rewatch it because it was at the theater and it has not been released yet on streaming or anything like that. So that movie is The Menu. Oh, sweet hey, man. man. Nice. God damn it. <laughs> Dude, I had such an experience. I went in blind, not knowing yeah. what the hell. And I haven't been like so enthralled in a movie, like from start, from start to finish where I just couldn't wait to see where the plot was going to take us next in a long time. I may rewatch it and I may come down, but I, I have to stick with where I am. This is the movie that I really want to watch with my family too. I think they'll really appreciate it. The acting is all great. Of course, we've already talked about that. And you know, yep. with Anya Taylor joy, of course, being great. And um, what's the name? Ralph, Ralph finds it's Ralph, right? Yeah. yeah or Ray, or Ray yeah. finds Ray, Ray. Ralph. Yeah. Seems like they okay. joint, go back and forth, but they didn't understand. Right, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, it's, it's, but, it's spelled Ralph, but like I've always heard people say Rafe Fines. And so I'm like, yeah. wait, is his first name Rafe? Spelled Ralph? <laughs> like, I, I think it's two different girl, people. Like Isn't I dated it? this girl one time whose name was spelled like uh, Asia, but it was pronounced Asia, but then her sister's name was gotcha. Asia, spelled A J A. Oh my God. Really? I remember thinking that was and, really funny. And I know a girl that in my our field of work that it spells her name the exact same way as my daughter Alyssa, but it's, it's uh, Alyssa, Alessa for her. Alessa. Uh, Alessa. And I always She's call her Alyssa. Alyssa. She's a lesser yeah, version like, of your daughter, I think. Yeah, yeah, damn right, yeah. <laughs> I'll crack that joke to her. Next time. Yeah, I like yeah, anyway. I like that. Definitely, Alessa. Um, oh, the menu, well, awesome man. to hear this, Dave. Great to hear. Yes. So the menu, yeah, uh, I, I, I guess I won't say too much. I, I, we we know everyone who goes down there. We find out about them. It's a four-hour dinner. Uh, they're eating at, at a special place. It's a nice retreat. Um, it's extremely expensive. Um, there's funny incidents with the bread and the condiments. It's so clever. And so, like, yeah. I love those movies where somebody's put in situations that are uncomfortable and you don't know why, but you have no choice. You have to go with it, you know? Yeah. Oh, did you so, did you agree though? And I don't need you to agree, but I guess um, are you finding that it was a like I know you went in blind. I I think I saw the trailer way back. It was more of a teaser, I think. But were you expecting something totally different, or you, did you not even have an expectation? Like, I had no and expectation. what about Nothing. the character development factor? Do you do you agree that you think it could have been even longer and amped up, or would it have ruined the pacing? I mean, I obviously would have played think, with the pacing, but I, I could have used we, more. I think we got enough just because we we okay. saw the picture where somebody was there once before. So that's all we really needed yeah. to know that that was that. And then, okay. you know, people get angry based upon the position they're put in by someone else. And I guess it's it's a fight or flight situation. And if you're that type of person, you're just going to do what you're going to do. But maybe upon rewatch, because you put it in my head, I'll think differently. I don't know. And something did bother me at one time. Just at one time, I'm like, well, how could this have been here and how did they know that that person was going to go there? And then there was a part when somebody shows up towards the end 
where they're trying to be attempting to be somebody else, but it's revealed that they're in on something. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. How would this person get this person to go along with that? Granted, what their position is in life. So mm-hmm. I was like, well, but then I guess having a lot of money can explain a lot of things. So I kind of just passed it off as that. And I didn't let it bother me. At first, I was like, damn it, the movie was going along so great. And then that. But upon reexamination, I was able to explain it away enough saying money can, you know, everybody's got a price. You know what I mean? So, so be it. But a lot of, lot of cool stuff going on here. It's one thing after another. And man, all part of the menu. <laughs> and oh, it's just so much fun. And then it gets so freaking dark and, and crazy that if you haven't seen it, you got to see it. And even if you have seen it, watch it again when it comes out on, on, on streaming. But I think it's excellent. I think it's a new classic. And I think it's an ex- it was an experience at the theater this year. Probably, maybe I've liked other movies more. But I feel like this was the best movie experience I had when I was there. Like I said, I wish my, my wife and daughter would have been there with me. I think it's one of those movies where that it's a popcorn flick, which kind of sounds negative. But it's not. It's better than a popcorn flick, but it has that enjoyment aspect to it where you're like, oh, wow, what's going to happen next? And it's, it's it was like a rush. And I, I really yeah. dug it. And I love the way it ended. It might have been a little over the top for some people, but I thought it fit in. Oh, that was it was a perfect ending, and that's why I do think I, I think it might go up higher upon rewatches. But it, again, it was like I told you, it's like all pretty much. It was one of the last watches, and I only got to see it the one time. So um, great, huh? Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you one one funny line, <laughs> which I do love, and he goes. Someone says, well, wait a minute, this and this and this. She goes, I shouldn't be here. I did this and I did. She goes, well, wait a minute. He goes, he goes, um, <laughs> something about I went to school and I did this and I did that. And he goes, and he goes, well, he goes, um, did you, did you have student loans? And the way, <laughs> and the way yeah. it was answered, he's like, okay, you deserve to be here. And that was, <laughs> it was fucking great. <laughs> Just because of her financial status. He's like, fuck you too. Anyway, <laughs> I do love that. But anyway, yeah, another nine out of 10, the menu. Awesome. All right, my number four, I'm going to speed it up a little bit, but I think once we get to the top threes, I think there's going to be a lot. Uh, I, I can't imagine there not being a little bit of overlap here. I know there will be for me. So my number four, we haven't spoken about it. I think Dave mentioned it already, Barbarian. Nine out of ten, we talked about it on the show. We did a review on the show. I fucking loved the whole setup. Uh, I loved how it progressed and did the timeline thing where we went back to sort of see maybe the beginnings of, of how this all started, but just a little taste and the final act may be my least favorite, but it was still solid and enjoyable. I think there's one laughable shot in the whole thing where, where the, the creature sort of swan dives off the fucking building to, to save, uh, to save something. And it ends up Mm. kind of changing, um, (laughs) how gravity works, but that's okay because it's a movie and I can let it go. But ultimately from a, a thorough ride, I was on edge and we're, where the fuck are we going with this? And it got right. creepier and creepier and they swerved you with what they did with some of the main, they, they, they did an Alfred Hitchcock psycho, in my opinion, with, with, with one character um, mm. in a sense about based on who that person is and uh, what, your expectations of the movie. Really enjoyable. Tons of rewatchability on Disney Plus in Canada as well Plus, because of that wow. <laughs> connection with with uh, Star <laughs> again. That funny is funny. You know, my that son put great. my son put me at ease uh, with regards to that tower gravity scene because okay. I, I pointed that out and he and he said, "Well, Dad, was she not lower on the tower? And if they dove, if they d- dived at the same time." And her strength propelled her, her superior strength propelled her. Could she might have been able to get there first if she was lower okay. on those stairs? And I was like, you could be right. And I think a, thir- a third watch of this movie will reveal that to me personally. So, okay. I don't know. Maybe. Wow. I'll take it. I'll take yeah. it. <laughs> Here's what's weird that was one of the things I didn't have a problem with. I excused that. And I had three other problems, which I can't get over, which is why it's only an eight. So and I explained them on the show. I thought I did a yep. good job explaining. And yep. when I asked you, you said you couldn't explain. You couldn't give me the answers. So no, I have I, to stay with where I was. But, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. So everyone's complaining yep. about that, and most people aren't even noticing the other shit that I noticed and I questioned, which I find funny. But that's usually me. I usually fucking notice things no one else does, and then don't notice the obvious that everyone else does. But that's the weird part. Is I don't have a problem with the tower thing. I'd, I'd excuse that as movie magic. But the other stuff, 
I can't get well, mine's also the anyway. shot. I think I think they, they did such a good thing that they just actually show the shot, which looks like it's out of a parody almost. Like, whoa! And she's diving <laughs> towards the camera. I'm like, no, that was just, you could have just had her go, and then out of frame, go out of frame, and then like had the old hand or whatever. I, there could have been, again, I'm not the director. It's not my movie. I'm just saying it, it almost takes you out of the movie for a split second to be brought back in. Minor nitpick. Love the rest of it. And that's why it's at my number four. Right on. Sweet. All okay. right. Top All three, right. baby. Top three. We'll speed it along. Here at number three is the movie my son told me is his number one of the year. And that is Terrifier 2. I wow. Wow. Would have had nice. no wow. problem putting in this as my number one, but I kind of organized this final four with a roll of the dice a little bit. Hey, the dice, man. Uh, <laughs> that, that said, Terrifier 2 is literally everything I could possibly want from a slasher. Give me an engaging antagonist. Give me a worthwhile protagonist. Uh, give me blood. Give me death. Give me murder. And that's what this movie does best. It kills her some of the just most brutal I've ever seen. And my hope is that slashers from here on out take notes and do what Damien yeah. Leone is doing here. Art the Clown is an icon in my eyes at this point. In another world where movies are as theatrically viable as they were in the 80s, we'd already have like four more of these and Art the Clown would be all over pop culture. But he's our icon for for us, for us horror fans, and that's okay with me. Um, you know, uh, th look, this $250,000 movie made over $10 million. What the hell do exactly. you want? Exactly. I mean, that's right? amazing. Jeez, amazing. What, what, a, what a success story. And... and <laughs> Maybe we're about to see a new wave of similar indie success stories. Uh, I, I'm, I'm down with that. Uh, of all the movies this year, this is, I think, for me, the most rewatchable. Um, this will be in my yearly Halloween season rotation. My son and I watched it on Halloween day right before we watched Trick or Treat. Um, is it longer than it should be? Maybe. I, I didn't feel it. Um, I have all the confidence in the world that part three will answer the pertinent questions we have here. And then we can either end Art's reign of terror or expand. The sky seems to be the limit at this point. And uh, I just want Art on screen killing motherfuckers. That's Terrifier 2, 9.5 out of 10. Wow. Awesome. Awesome, man. See, I, I said this last week, and I'll say it again. I want to see a movie with the gore that we saw in Christmas Bloody Christmas or Terrifier 2. Mm -hmm. But I want to see that in a genuine old school slasher. Oh. Teens being in a secluded place, getting knocked off. That's what the fuck we need—an '80s type slasher because you know people want them, right? <laughs> and maybe <laughs> knocked up too, like Chris in Part Three, or was it Chris? Whoever the fuck it was. Uh, Chris is, uh, <laughs> uh, oh my, uh, Tracy Savage. What's her? Uh, what's her? Yeah. Think, uh, I can't fucking remember her name. Yeah. Okay. My We're gonna get. Uh, Jamie's gonna be going crazy. <laughs> right? Another one. What the hell? But that's what I want to see. That gore. In, in a simpler, just a fucking slasher with kids that go into, you know what I'm saying? In, in the woods or in suburbia, going house to house. Just, it doesn't have to, it could be so easy to do and just have regular folks. But anyway, somebody listening, please make that movie. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> number three. I don't know if it's been brought up or not. I can't remember. My freaking mind is shot. But this movie actually came up a lot on my second view. The first view, I liked it. The second view, it came up a whole point. So I really got got it more on, on the second view. See, very important. And that is the sadness. Yeah, my number 10. I was, okay. I was thinking as you're saying it. Okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, fucking, I want, if I see something, I want to see something infected. And this is the type of infection, which I have to give a prop that's never been done before. This type of thing, the way yeah. it's done. And I'm not going to get into the depth of it. I'm just going to say that it's something different about things that lie inside of us and us, our, our, our worst character traits coming out, knowingly doing it and not giving a fuck. That is what is amazing. That is sick and sadistic and just out of control. We've never seen something like that. And I would rather see an infected film than a zombie film. And this type of infection, very cool. And there's a lot going on here, talking about the Elven virus and talking about how it's being politicized, discussions like that, which could tie right into COVID. And this is, you know, a foreign film. Where, is this in China? Or, am I right? This had Was it oh, I Taiwan? Yeah. Okay. I, I can't remember. I think you're yeah, correct. I, okay. They're speaking uh, Mandarin, though, either way. So. Right. I'll say this. I love, love that spooky cartoon that they keep showing on the, I want to get my hands on that fucking thing. Yes. It is so bad. And that, that itself could have been a fucking, a 15 minute freaking, a thing that people, horror fans could do. It's evil and spooky. I, I love that. Um, but man, a, a different virus. 
the every the things that are going on and the how it's only affecting 15 to 20 percent and yet what the hell is happening the the great attack on the bus in the beginning the guy in the bus when he's talking and how he gets mad and what that turns into <laughs> and then the baseball beating which was freaking amazing and what that turns into and the victim <laughs> and what he says at the end of that oh. dude so fucking Beautiful. good the, the Beautiful. eye scene amazing that's all i'm gonna say uh, just comical to me but not not in the regular way you know what i mean yeah. funny but no, not like goofy <laughs> i i sick the bloody group sex oh my god that would be me if, th- if this ever happened <laughs> that would tie into my freaking that that would be Fantasy. my deepest darkest thing it's not rape it's consensual but it's fucking evil and everybody's bloody and just fucking going at it and when he's looking in those rooms in the hospital and they're doing like man that would that's what i'd be doing for sure you know but, <laughs> yeah bloody group sex oh <laughs> I thought the one guy would have turned for sure, but instead he gets torn up. That was kind of a surprise to me. I don't know if you guys think, know what character I'm talking about, but the direction he was kind of going in in the hospital, I thought it's just going to be a matter of time before this guy, because I'm a little weary of him now, but it doesn't happen. I thought that was a nice little misdirection. That part with the um, the president or whoever it was, oh. dude. So cool. The freaking, yes. oh my gosh. It, it, it's awesome. And our, our main girl, Kat. Oh, man. Oh, she's great. She's freaking just, you know, very attractive and very relatable and really cool character. You're rooting for her. And then what happens with uh, uh, Jim, I think is his name, and what goes there. Just, I don't want to say it's epic, but I do want to say it, it's one of the, one of the, probably the greatest infected slash zombie type thing to come out since uh train to busan i i think it's it's on that level i think it's going to quickly become a favorite of many people oh, and yeah. it's it's only at a three for mm-hmm. me but i just i'm so high on all three of these movies that it it's, it is what it is but man just violent and depraved <laughs> is, is what goes on here and the stuff that happens at the end the explanation with the guy and the babies and everything else and Whew, so cool. And then just the way it ends. It reminds me of like the ending of like, I don't know, Dawn of the Dead or something. Just, okay, here we go. And anyway, Sadness, 9 out of 10. Excellent movie. Nice. Nice. And uh, again, when I was looking at my list and I saw what my number three was, I'm like, ah, I bet you anything that's Watson's. Now I'm now that uh, he's already blown it and, and uh, I think it was at number four for him. It Mine's the cursed. Was it four or five for you, yep. Mr. Watson? Oh, it was four and I'm yeah. out for you. I thought that this was going to be your number one. Yeah. Yep. I fucking love this. It was my number one. Again, it, like <laughs> I think this overtook the uh, fresh at the time and I... I you you summed it all up. I mean, we we already spoke about it. I'm not going to beat a dead horse. I love the movie. It's a nine and a half out of ten. It's about the atmosphere here. You, the you, you mentioned about the comparisons of the werewolves, the the curse, I and mean, then ultimately it's the wolf man, but just situated in yeah. a different area. It, it, it really is the the wolf man. <laughs> and it's <laughs> awesome how how the creature affects borderline on the thing X, the thing esque is what I mm-hmm. meant, where mm-hmm. there's certain things that they show that you're like, holy fuck, this is really well done. And it's scary, eerie, and things happen that you don't expect. Characters die that you don't expect to die. It's so well done, so well made. I watched it and was so high in it that I was afraid to rewatch it. I said, screw it, I'm going to rewatch it. And I loved it just as much. <laughs> so oh, the curse, wow. nine and a half out of 10, my number three. Wow. That's yeah. that's great, man. Wow, I really yeah. gotta watch this movie again. Maybe it just caught me on an off day. Again, seven and a half. It wasn't like I watched it. I was like, yeah. eh. Oh, yeah. But that's maybe a, but I just happens. it does. Right? That that happens. It, it, and, yeah. And you might not like it as much, but that's who knows. That's what yeah. we're at. But I was again I and I, I just I missed this at the theater, unfortunately. Mm, so same. Yeah. I would have loved to have seen this in the theater because it was a very early release. Yes, it was. Well, yeah, it yeah. was under the name Eight for Silver, which yes. Mark Nato was like the first person to ever talk about it. I, I think remember. he saw it at some. Yeah, remember that? I think he saw it at some yep. festival or something, or saw it through through some means, and that no one else had access to. And I was like, ah, oh, man. But yeah, excellent, excellent. Dang it! I, I really thought because there were French people, or or supposed to, supposedly, <laughs> that this is gonna be yours because you used to be the French extremist. Uh, true. Yeah. Remember? So Dave I'm still alive. That? Okay. He, yeah, yeah, yeah I still, I still I've got I I've got your number, Dave. There's no yeah. question I've got yours. 
So I got Watson I, maybe. I'll find out. Okay. Well, and, and here's the deal. We're in the top two right now. And just <laughs> like last year, I'm I'm I, I'm at this weird thing where I could switch these right now. And then in fact, on Horror Movie Weekly last year and this show, I, I switch know. I did switch them. <laughs> um you did. Yeah. And I think I stand if, if you were to put put a you know once again if Hitler shows up he's like you know <laughs> he's always showing up here. Why uh, Hitler? <laughs> I know, right? Uh, but if, if somebody if, if somebody were to put a gun to my head and be like, all right, which which do, you, which do you stand by? I think I would stand by what I said on this show as my number one last year, uh, as opposed yeah. to Horror Movie Weekly. Even though I'm not lying, I just think that that might be in keeping with where I am a year later. I think there, there's going to be a similar thing here where I just don't know which is one and two. So I'm going to have it like I – I'm going to just read it off like I have it here. So at number two oh, – and there's no reason this shouldn't be number one. I, I My son was even like, really? You're, you're going to put this at two instead of one? And I was like, oh, don't make me doubt myself. But I'm doubting myself. Oh. Let's, we're going. We're going. We got the bloodiest and goriest zombie movie ever made, The Sadness. Dave <laughs> <laughs> Z. Yep. Okay, yep. I, yep. <laughs> that was it. It, it yeah. occurs to me – that this movie and Terrifier 2 have an important element in common. They're both the sort of movie we've all seen before, but they're executed extraordinarily well and with care. Originality is great, but most things are simply execution dependent, and that's why the sadness is as impactful as it is. It's not a new story. We've seen the the lovers trying to find each other through all hell, uh, but this doesn't have to be new. We're given characters we can get yeah. behind who are in the middle of this infected narrative and maybe one of the most demented ever put to screen crossed Garth Ennis's crossed graphic novels. It doesn't quite go that far un unless we do in maybe a future movie, get to see somebody fuck a dolphin's blowhole. I will be there for that. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, is it a cop out to throw buckets of blood at a story to make it better? I don't think so. Uh, not if you are creative and this film presents gory nihilism in the most creative fashion imaginable. It's been a hot minute since I saw a movie where someone does this to an eyeball socket? <laughs> um, uh, the train scene in this movie a rivals the bus. The, yeah, hot minute, never. Uh, yeah, uh, where uh, uh, you know the train scene here and the bus scene in T the new TCM. I want more of that. Give me a familiar yeah. story. Dump gore all over it. I'm not above that at all. And if you write sincere characters, your movie will be better for it. That's what we've got here, my friends. A, an infected movie for the ages. I think this one will go down in history. Uh, the, s the single one of its kind in the modern era to beat, I think. That's the sadness, and I'm at a 10 out of 10. Nice. Holy Ooh. fuck, nice. Wow, man. I don't know where this guy's going now. Yeah, well, uh, and Dave Z, when when, when we get to, mm. when we do our thing on new horror movies, you might hear this in the one oh. place. I, 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 I just, I, I'm going to stand by it here and now as it is. I feel good about it. So you may, I may know now, but you may have already said it. I should have wrote this stuff down. Oh yeah. Damn it. <laughs> Cause I, I, I remember hearing you talk about, oh, either way. Okay. Since you guys know my number one or are so confident on it, I'm going to yeah. ask you to guess my number two. Just want to know. I'm not going to say. Well, I'm, I'm confused. Cause you already, I, I actually thought we may have aligned in one and two this year. I honestly thought we would have. And oh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm perplexed because I think everything. Do you have any <laughs> Watson? Dave shoot, has been throwing me for a, a fucking loop this year. I know uh, what his number one is. I, I yeah, I know I the number you one. If you could, you did you say oh, this doesn't seem? Did you say Mad God at all? I don't even know what you I felt have, about that movie. I no, have not said Mad God. I, I don't know if he would have liked that. I'll say yeah. Fresh. I'll say Dave liked Ooh. Fresh, and we just haven't talked about. It. So I'm gonna say Fresh is his I'll number back two. Back what Christian said, Matt. Yeah, how about that? Okay, you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think anyone was going to get it, and that's yeah. fine. I seem to be uh, on this hill alone. I know other people enjoyed it, <laughs> and I know some other people don't like it at all, but I seem to have been the target audience because I fucking love the movie. I've seen it three times now. First time I was quite buzzed, so I wanted to give it a second chance. <laughs> it happens. And the second... I was not in the third time I was, and I, I love it either way. It, it's it's just got trippy shit going on, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. I loved this movie, and oh, wait a minute, it is that it's not what you think at all. Oh, okay. Titanic too. <laughs> it's none of that. <laughs> tip of the iceberg. Oh, sorry. Um, no, sorry. it it's Hellraiser. Oh shit! How did I forget? Yes, you've been I, talking about it. It hasn't been on your list yet. Fuck. Awesome. I loved it. 
I, I yes. dude, I, I'm telling you, after the first two, it's easily my number three now. I think it's fucking extraordinary. I don't know what everybody isn't seeing that I'm seeing, but I think I was almost sold on the opening shot and the score. A minute into the movie, I said, okay, this is going to be a good movie. And that never left. The Leviathan shape and the way it's mentioned, the thing they talk about it, the freaking, you know, the box being what it is and the different stages of it. It is so fucking cool. The the great dream in the beginning with the freaking chains and the hooks, followed by hooks on the tow truck and being scared off by it. And, and okay, I understand some people may not like the lead character. I had no problem with it. I said it before. She reminds me of a... Um, of Rue, who um, Rue, from a despicable me. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I no I, I oh shit my thing's gonna die. Hold on. Uh oh. I gotta switch. Hold up. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Chair pods. <laughs> oh no. For your four hour life. Yeah. Oh, Let's not get Dave on a despicable me rant either. <laughs> Wait a second. Oh dang! I was gonna say he can't. If he could, he, he could still hear us, but couldn't he reply. Hear some, I'd start. I can't insult. I Dave, can now. Though. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say I can't. You're I good. can't insult Dave yeah. like I, I can with you and B. I don't know what it is. <laughs> so um, I'm too sweet. Um, so <laughs> so Rue, who dude. um, is the character in Euphoria, that show I talk a lot about. Oh, she okay. reminds me of. Oh, it's amazing. She reminds me of a Rue type character, someone who's a drug addict but trying to get over, but is genuinely a good person. I don't think that the people in this movie are bad people or annoying no, people. I just, just don't. Other people, I've heard that complaint, and I I just don't get it. Uh, I she see grew on she, me. Yeah, okay, she grew good. on Yeah. I thought she was cool. I think she had a good heart. And, you know, she, she meets the kid, and, you know, she's a smart. He's, he's smart because, at least I think he's smart at first because of what's going on here, and I don't want to get too into the whole narrative of it, but he believes her when she tells her things, and no one else does. I mean, we find out more things later, and that's fine. But... I like the fact that they add that there has to be blood too. They add, see, and this is what we say: if you're going to remake a movie, remake it. Now, mm-hmm. would I rather have had an exact replica of the Hellbound Heart? Because that's what I thought was going to happen here. Because they said we already knew where they were going with the Cenobites, or at least Pinhead. We knew that it was going to be true to the book with being androgynous and everything else. Yeah. So I thought that maybe this was going to be the Hellbound Heart in every way. Well, it wasn't, but. That's okay, but I like the fact that they took the idea of the original and they added the freaking, now we have to get a sample of your blood, too, with the thing coming out and poked. So they added to the mythology that we already had. And the freaking Cenobites, amazing. Yes. Just fucking amazing. I love the way they spoke, the way they looked, the stuff they did, everything about any of them being on the screen. Not just freaking lead Cenobite or whatever you want to call her or it or whatever. All of them. I thought were amazing. I love the hallucination uh, that, that was going on here. I liked that they, when they opened up the freaking box and the, the way the box moved and did all its stuff was incredible. How they kept being taken to other places, almost like a Nightmare on Elm Street thing or kind of like what they did with It. When you, when you go someplace else, even though someone's sitting right next to you, it's, I, I just love the way they did it. And the way they did the music, at first it was just like, it sounded like if I was watching a movie, I'd say, man, they're, they're, it sounded like they're ripping off Hellraiser with this music. But if this is what you're going to do, that's what you're going to do. But then eventually the iconic Christopher Young score comes in and it's the freaking theme and they saved it for us and we're waiting on it. And man, the low key familiarity of everything in this movie to part one and part two, this movie is a love letter to part one and part two. And I love those movies and just everything that's going on here. It's just, I don't know. I, there's there's not enough. I, I can't believe how much this movie impressed me. Everything about it, I was really into. I like the fact that we get a freaking um, a, a, a Shinar type character and ultimately where that goes. And then at the end, with the fucking, the way it ends is like a, it's all oh, you can interp- interpret that as a fuck you. Like there's a question at one point and it's like, we made the right decision. Right. But then you see something else that happened to another character. Like, listen, if you mm. would have done it, the Cenobites in this one are demons to some angels to others. And we finally get to see why if you do what's wanted, you're going to get what you want 
or what they think you want. If they find out you want something else, they're going to give that to you because, oh, maybe we underestimated you. It was a line that's happened. So there is a chance for reward. It isn't just play with this puzzle box and get hooked and get fucking tortured. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's more to it, and that's what I, I loved about it. But some of the lines, and I'm not going to get into them, but there's enough. Uh, enough is, is a myth is one of those lines in the movie. And, man, the center by politics that go on, one of them does something wrong, and they let someone get away, and, and what happens there? The Weeper is a new one, and it's a badass fucking Cenobite. Man, I'll just stop. I love the colors, the blues and the reds and the way they do it. But, man, the the way it was shot, David Bruckner, three for three for me. Yep. And just just excellent. I, I love this movie. I'm going to watch it again and again. I wish everybody felt the same way about it. I do. I, I don't understand why they don't. But, anyway, it's a nine out of ten. Um, I'd I love to hear awesome it. To hear. Awesome to hear, and I agree, Watson. I thought a lot of people were divided. I thought it was just as much love as there was hate initially, and I thought I was going to be in the motor, kind of being kind of in the middle, going it was kind of boring and whatever initially. But like I said, it came up, and I'm I and I can't disagree. I don't know. I don't love it as much as you, not yet anyway. But it it's definitely secured itself as I was iffy because I actually do have a soft spot for three and four, shockingly. Yeah. But it's now best the best since the original two. Yeah. Um, nice. Sure. Yep. So I I I can I can meet you there and I will rewatch it again. Um Same. so uh it's awesome. And I can't believe I I forgot you had not that on your list yet. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it my number two? Yep. Hear hear me out, guys. Let's stop at ones and and, and whatever. Maybe we might have to do a part two to this because we have run long. And I'm thinking do our worst and Honorable mentions and everything else on another show wedged in with BS talk and whatever. Yes or no? Yay or nay? I'm fine with that. We're coming I'm up fine. to one thirty here. We're not done yet. Okay, so we're, um, just do uh, number twos, number ones, and then oh, that uh, yeah, and, and okay. then leave everything else for another show. Yeah, I'm done. Okay, that's Sounds cool. Good. All right, my number two uh, is X. We did a thorough review of this, or a uh, well, thorough, maybe, a review of this a couple episodes ago. Love it. Ty West is on a fucking tear. Uh, and, again, you guys have summed it up. It's a slasher with great kills. Uh, unique, in, in a sense. I love the the pornography, pornography edge and the fact that they're there to shoot a porno and and to make some money and, and to, to start anew and the, the, the X Factor part of it and how that all plays into it. And great kills, nine and a half out of ten. The rest of it you can hear on our our, our show, but uh, uh, the whole cast is great. Not just Mia Goth. The whole cast is great yep. in this. Definitely. Sweet. Right on. Awesome. Number okay. ones. Here yes. we are, everybody. The top movies of uh, top horror movie of 2022, and um, my number one is Barbarian. I knew uh, it. Okay, I forgot. Yeah. I, I thought nice. maybe you didn't. That's what I was thinking of. Okay. Yeah, this this might well be the most creatively structured movie I've seen in years. It takes familiar nice. narratives, presents them to us, and then throws all that stuff to the side in order to deliver something else entirely. There's something to be said here about the way the actions of our characters reflect what the narrative is doing in the background, uh, which, which, which is to say that the deeper nice. our characters wander into the mystery of the film, uh, so too do they travel deeper into the very literal depths of the setting, this house. Uh, a door leads to a basement, which leads to a door beyond the basement, the, the basement, which leads to a door that goes deeper down still, which leads to an even more exclusive door behind which lies the man who started it all. I don't think I've ever seen a movie do what this is doing in the way this one does. Uh, it's a movie made for people who try to predict what will come next. And what we get is no simple flip of the script, you know? You'll be watching that intro, that 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 beginning, that first act and going, oh, okay, we got Pennywise here and this girl, okay. Is he going to turn out to be involved in this thing? Or, oh, are they going to flip the script and she's going to be the bad one? This movie's like, yeah. nope, nothing you think is, yeah. is, awesome. is, is going to yeah, happen here at great. all with that. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, you get into act two. Oh, wait, this is Justin Long's house? So that means he know no, he doesn't know shit. Wait, okay, so yeah. what is this doing? And it's just, I, we're all horror movie veterans, and we're jaded sometimes. Uh, you know, not all the time, but we can be. This movie is beautiful because it reminded me of what it's like not to be so familiar and so entrenched. And that's why I can Great say this is my favorite yeah. of the year. It gave that gift to me. and Plays with the I, conventions, right? Yeah. Like, ah. Flips them. Like, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So awesome. that's, yeah, that's. It's Barbarian, 10 out of 10. 
I, I, I was able to show this to my son and, uh, and yeah, we, we had some great, great uh, talks about, he's very interested in writing story and getting into the, 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 the building of story. And so we, we, I had him pay close attention to what this movie was doing. We had a great conversation afterwards about setting things up to, you know, pay them off in some ways or maybe not at all. Um, and how those can be both great things. So yes, Barbarian, 10 out of 10. My my number one of 2022. Dave Z, what have you got, buddy? Well, you guys <laughs> know it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's conspicuously <laughs> absent. This, uh, yeah. yeah. Oyster yeah. of a gal. Yeah, this oyster indeed. Yes, yes. My number one. My number one is Pearl. Man, woo! I mean, we talked about it a couple of shows ago. We did a full review. I'm just so happy that that just what a year for for Ty West and for Mia Goth. Just just incredible. I mean, and, and of course, actress and director of the year right there. Boom, boom. They did it twice. They did it great. And Mia in this movie, just on another awesome. level. With fucking that eight minute monologue, freaking incredible, and the ending shot and everything, and the movie itself being the Technicolor nightmare that it is, and mm. her as a character from and everything she has to go through with her mother and the things that we learn and her father and the things that we learn about her character going on and what her mother fears about her going out into the real world and everything and just boy, so, so I mean we reviewed it. I, I'm not gonna go too much into it. I'm just so happy. You know that that this total package that 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 Mia, just like she says in the movie, one day the world's gonna know my name. And now, not Pearl. Well, yeah, Pearl in the horror. But I mean, Mia Goth and, and how she's transcended finally. And I've been talking about her for freaking for six, seven years now. Now she's a leading lady in these movies, and she just comes and knocks it out of the park in two movies. And her performance here. And now everybody's talking about her. And it's it's so great. I never thought I'd be able to say actress of the year. You know what I mean? But I can convincingly say it. Great stuff. My type of movie. More my type of movie than X. As much as of a slasher guy I am, I love these quiet type films that are character studies too that go the slasher route too with, with good kills. And just it's done well. The gore we get to see is done well. The, the shots, everything. It's just such a great movie. Great characters going on. You feel for the mother. You feel for the father. You feel for the guy that gets killed. You even feel for her cousin. There's so much going on yeah. here. And the way it's filmed and, and the places that it takes you, just such a great job directing overall. Great, great movie. I'll stop now. There's more I want to say, but I'll stop for now. And, um, man, awesome. And I stick with my rating. It, it's a 9 out of 10. I absolutely adore it. Pearl. Well, you you made my job easy because that's my number one as well. We aligned. Oh, Dave, amazing. Uh, Pearl's my number one. Cool. Best actress, Mia Goth. Best director, Ty West, for both the fact that he knocked Pearl and fucking X out in the same year. Amazing. I'll give it the score, too. Why not? I didn't give anybody else a score, so I might as well give oh, that the shit. score. Yeah. Terrifier, uh, too. Tyler yeah, Bates. Yeah. Tyler yeah. Bates. Great. <laughs> so, um, Terrifier like all himself? around. Yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah, okay. For the score. Yeah. What oh, Dave Wiley. said, we did the review, fucking amazing. Ch check it out. I'm a nine and a half out of ten. Uh, it, it literally was a one. It was he. They knocked it out of the park. Two yeah. two fucking great fucking movies in in the same year. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm Incredible. totally happy. I mean, it was it was fantastic. Yeah, Pearl, my number one as oh, well. Dude. You, you got me. See, I, I I knew Dave Z. Or you know, just I had a good feeling. But yeah, you you yeah. I, I don't think I ever get you. <laughs> what did, sir, you had me down for the black phone? The cur cursed. No, the cur cursed. cursed. And Dave yeah. had the black phone, yeah. Yeah. And so we both got Dave with Pearl. Okay. Yeah. So it was a, yeah, that was I, it. It was a tie on that, too. Yeah. <laughs> that was easy. Awesome. Awesome. Whew. Wow. Great stuff. Okay. So what a show. <laughs> now we. I'm, now I'm, we not saying, I'm not saying we can't do the rest because we can fire him off without any great detail, but I'm just saying I didn't know if you wanted to save it. As a part two, I mean, I could give you my biggest surprise disappointment in five I, top or bottom five. You guys are running behind. I, I'm down with a part two uh, just for the excuse to come back and mix it up with you guys and maybe talk some more shit. Uh, hit me up throughout the week and see if there's any other topics we want to hit hit on or something like that. And we can make a show out Absolutely. of it. Yes. We okay. can do runner-ups. I mean, it's a whole show. Yeah. There's a lot of runner-ups to talk about. And, oh, and I absolutely. agree. I'd love yeah. to go into yeah. detail. 
Okay, so we'll give so, nobody else anything. That's yep. it. The top 22 is the top 22. We'll save any other awards that we have for, for the sequel and disappointments and runner-ups. Tons of stuff to talk about. I'm down with that. Awesome. All right. Cool. So we'll see everybody um, on part two. Merry it's Christmas. The, it's Happy in the new holidays. year. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays, guys. Yeah. All the best. Happy New Year. Much love. Yeah. Much love. So um, we'll see you soon. Watson, do you want to say something before you go? No. Okay. Oh, <laughs> gentlemen, don't put stuff in your dicks. <laughs> no, no, don't, ladies, don't talk about on. it either. Ladies, don't carry talk on. A, yeah, ladies, carry on. All right. <laughs> Much love. Okay, see you guys later. Thank you. Peace.